We are in. How's it going, everybody? You excited to be back? I'm excited to be back. Ah, uh, now the the Q and A was fun, but you know the the bread and butter of this series, the the whole reason I'm doing it is to watch the show. The folks are nice. Listen to them talk is great. But I want to watch some D&D. I don't want to watch a, a panel. <laughs> so I am I'm psyched to uh, to get back into it. All right, all right, all right. And I have I have a fun little uh, fun little graphic that I made for you guys. Is it that exciting? Uh, <laughs> you know how I do normally like a like a recap of the takeaway that I had at least from the last episode I did that and uh it was actually a fairly like I, I don't want to say like a complex take um but it was a big enough kind of take lift sort of deal where I wanted to uh make a visual aid um so without further ado I will get into that let's see also, brrr, announcement, or not announcement, but fun thing. Whoa, look at that. It's yellow. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, my, my editor, uh, Eden, made this for me. It looks sick. It's got the little megaphones on it. It's got the, my, this is my, like, yellow uh, branding color that I, that I like a lot. Um, so this is the new thing. Uh, you know, we might, might make some edits to it going forward, but I am really into it. Uh, and I hope that you guys like it as well. Um, but you can see on screen, not wasting any time. I'm going to jump straight in. Let's talk about episode five. Now, episode five was a while ago. Um, for those of you who are just joining or maybe don't remember that long ago, um, we watched episode five, I think like two weeks ago and episode five was probably the worst episode <laughs> of the first five. Um, it was like, it was pretty boring. They, they were just analyzing a lot. Um, and it ended up with them like doing a loop in the dungeon, essentially. Like they wound up back where they started. Um, which I said at the time, I was like, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, and I wanted to go into that a little bit deeper, not just say like, oh, that's not a bad thing and just leave you guys hanging. You guys know, I love to talk dungeon design and I love to talk about like what makes a good dungeon, what makes a bad dungeon. Uh, and I wanted to talk about the specific issues with the underdark dungeon that they're currently in and why it made episode five feel like such a fucking slog to get through. <laughs> so let's define our parameters first. You see, I have this handy dandy little graphic um, on the right. You can see that kind of the key. So a, uh, a dotted line is a difficult slash challenging path. A regular line is just a normal path. Uh, a dot is something interesting, and X is a obstacle. Now, you can kind of see I've, I've drawn out sort of the general dungeon that they're in. So there was the small camp where they originally fought the Darugar and the Intellect Devourer, and, and Grog got his fucking noggin uh, jumbled. Um, there's that, and then there's the Goblin Village that was totally abandoned. Uh, and then there is the kind of rope bridge with the chasm, over the chasm, to the war camp. Uh, and then from the war camp, they go down to a branching of paths. And then you can take this path all the way down to the Aboleth pool slash bottom of the chasm, which they had already been to at that point, because you can take this uh, challenging path, which I'm calling it a path. I mean, you can fall down the chasm. It's a path, right? And they do it. They they actively do it. Um, So let's talk about why this is bad. <laughs> so there is um I, I I like I like loops. 
I really like loops. I talked about loops a lot when they were um, doing the barracks encounter in the war camp. I was talking about how many different entrances and exits there were, how many looping paths there were. Love me a loop, right? But there is a difference between how good a loop is on the micro scale of like a battle map versus the macro scale of a dungeon. Now you can have in the micro, you can have little empty loops that, you know, where it's just like path, branch, and then they come back together, right? You, that's totally fine. You can have, you know, kind of this sort of configuration because you might be going back and forth. You might try to put some, like a wall between you and your enemy. Like this sort of configuration can work totally fine in a battle map. However, on the scale of a dungeon, it makes the players feel like their choices didn't matter. Because if they are really debating right here, like, oh, do we go left or do we go right? And then they kind of travel, 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 and realize that they both spit out at the same area, that, 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 that makes them feel like you might as well not have had a branching path. There might as well not have been a choice, right? You're, I mean, not necessarily taking away their agency, but you're making them feel like they wasted their time when they probably were debating, you know, which one was best over here. So loops on a dungeon, not great because, you know, people will analyze and then they'll feel like they've wasted their time. Now, what we have here is not necessarily a loop, right? It is, like, it, it is in the strictest of sense, right? Where you have kind of this point up here, and then you go from the war camp down to the Aboleth pool down there, or you go from the war camp through the chasm to the Aboleth pool slash bottom of the chasm down there, right? You, the, they're both clear paths with absolutely no points of interest in between. Now, I know on this side, there's the oozing counter. I do not count that as something interesting. That was a random encounter. We know it was random because it was chosen by chat. Um, <laughs> and, and it was not anything that gave them clues towards the narrative, towards the overall nature of the dungeon. Nothing. It slightly confirmed something that we already knew, which is that abominations were being created. But again, that has been confirmed to us like several times at this point. It, so this was just an obstacle. It was not something interesting. So from player perspective, there is no real difference between going this way versus going this way. The only difference is that one of them is shorter, <laughs> which essentially makes this a, uh, a shortcut. And shortcuts are dope, right? So you can either, you can think about the, the, uh, this dotted line in one of two ways. You can either think of it as a legitimate path, at which point this is a loop with no points of interest on either side of the loop, making it bad, or you can consider it like a shortcut where, oh, if they come up with some solution to a problem, they are able to shortcut the path. Now there's, two key things when it comes to a shortcut. Number one, the shortcut has to be challenging. There has to be something that you have to give up, some sort of maybe a puzzle, an enemy, an obstacle of some kind. There has to be some reason that you wouldn't just take the shortcut. And in their case, that reason doesn't exist. They have the flying carpet. They have someone that can cast fly. They have people that can cast feather falling. There is no reason that they can't take this shortcut. The only reason that they wouldn't take it is if they don't know it's the right way to go, which is okay, but that comes to the number two part of a shortcut is you need to know it's a shortcut. Shortcuts should be obvious that they are shortcuts once you realize like, like what's going on, right? There might be a hidden door that's a shortcut, and I'm not saying that like the hidden door has to be obvious, but it has to be obvious that you are running into a shortcut and that that is the right way to go if you can overcome the challenge. Um, oh, it sounds good, John. Yeah, yeah, feel free. Um, so, so that's, and that's sort of the issue here is that they don't know it's a shortcut. They don't realize that they just have to go down. So there, there's a couple of issues kind of going on here. It's either this is a legitimate path, which is how they treated it, and it's bad because there's no other interesting points, or it's a shortcut that's not clear it's a shortcut. So that's, that's, that's bad. 
And I will point out something else. If this is a shortcut, which is how I would classify it, then the entire dungeon is just a straight line. It is just a straight line with one shortcut. And to be clear, all that shortcut does is bypass this ooze encounter. There's no puzzle. There's no mystery. There are no choices. All this does is bypass that ooze encounter. Now, you might have heard me say that there's no choices, and I stand by that. But, uh uh-oh, was I wrong? We have this branching path over here. What's going on there? I thought I thought I just said that there are no choices. There weren't. <laughs> like, like, like let's let's be let's be clear. There there is nothing at this node that would have indicated to them that they should go up. And the two paths option that they had was one that curved slightly up and one that curved slightly down. So there's no real choice. They they were given nothing else to explore at this junction. There's just that. And there's a reason that I didn't put a dot here. I think that every junction should have a dot. There should be something interesting at every fork in the road, at every split. Now, that something interesting can be a lot of things. It can be something that can give you a clue as to which way you can go. It could be a plant from the enemy that is purposely trying to mislead you into which way you should go. There are, there are so many things that can be at force. It can be something totally unrelated. Like, it, but it has to be something interesting at a fork. To not make... Because the thing that we ran into in episode 5 was they got to the fork and there were dwarves that were, you know, knocking at the door behind them and they're like, what do we do? What do we do? And they were not capable of capturing information. They had to make a random choice. And... At every fork, you should put something interesting to either inform or purposely mislead their choice. Something, right? Or just give them something to do there, and then they pick randomly, right? But if you, if the only, sorry, there's a spider on the ceiling that I got distracted by. Um, it, It just, it kills the pace, murders the pace otherwise. Because if you get to a point where there is no real way for them to determine the, like, an, to make an informed decision, other than, like, a very, very, like, small, obvious criteria, like the tunnel sloping down versus up, they're going to sit there and stew and analyze, or they're just going to make a random choice, which is what Travis ended up doing. They were just sitting there, wasting time, until Travis Willingham, the fucking goat... <laughs> just decided I sprint off down the tunnel. He just made a choice because there was no way for them to get enough information to make an informed choice here. So this this entire area, this entire area, bad area, bad, 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 bad area. Not not good, not good at all. Um, which kind of, the fact that you have that bad area just exacerbates the problems with the shortcut. I will say, if this was a legitimate choice, if there was a legitimate fork here where there, you know, there was actually an unclear choice, then this graph suddenly looks way better. And, you know, maybe let's imagine, so there's, let's imagine there's some point of interest right here that maybe misleads them into going up. And then over here, there's another point of interest that tells them, haha, fuck you, you're wrong. Uh, but gives them two options, one this way and one down to a point of interest down here. Oh, suddenly this map is looking real nice, right? So you can you can have like this, you can have that. They don't even realize that this was, you know, a very clear and obvious shortcut, but there are lots of ways to go about it. And let's say here, maybe this was like a hidden door or something that there's no way they could have detected in the war camp, but once they get up here, this path is, like, fairly obvious. And now they have a new way to engage with the enemies that are still in the war camp, right? There's so many things here. And to be fair, I don't know that this sort of interesting option wasn't up the path. I don't know that. However, we were missing this key node right here to actually make this an interesting choice. They just had to pick randomly... So it didn't feel interesting at all, right? Let's look at the graph again with what 
with this with this totally gone, you get here from the war camp, and it's like, ah, oh, what the fuck do I do? I don't know. Uh, I did put some highlights here because I know that there is like the remnants of a war camp or anything, but they look through it and waste a bunch of time and there's literally nothing there. And then they do the use encounter. <laughs> so that's why I put even, I put it as a highlight because it's not an obstacle. It's not something interesting. It's just there. It's just set dressing, which is fine. Like ambiance and feel and tone are hyper important in storytelling. But do you see the lack of interest on this path? This is just long path versus short path. And that sucks if there's no way to determine which is which, which there wasn't. Like when they're up here, there's no way to determine that falling down the chasm is the short path and that this is the long path. No way to determine that. So all of that is to say i think that that is why the the design of this dungeon and the placement of the points of interest are why episode five felt like such a slog because they were going on this long arduous trek that maybe the long arduous trek is fine if say we don't go there we go here we go somewhere new and again, even look at that. Without adding a point of interest at this fork, these paths now make more sense. They are not an empty loop that you could just remove. One of the sides of the loop now has a point of interest on it, making it an interesting choice. Now, this way, if you go by this, there's the Aboleth pool that you have to deal with, and then you get to, you know, whatever the fuck's down here. If you go this way, you don't have to deal with this point of interest, but you have a random encounter, it's a longer walk, et cetera, et cetera. So now there's an actual choice. So the, these are, these are my, uh, this is my analysis of like why this felt boring. Because to be clear, I don't think it's a bad thing that in dun if in dungeons you can come back to where you started, right? Like let's even just take this, you know, fan this, uh, this, this fictional map that I came up with, if you were to go to the war camp, go all the way down here to the ooze encounter, come down here to whatever's down here, and then decide to go back up and you find yourself at the Ableth pool, that's actually interesting. You're like, oh, all of these connected. And you had interesting thing in between. As opposed to when they come back to the Ableth pool at the bottom, they just side to themselves because they're like, oh, that's literally where we started the session. We ran into nothing interesting in between this, like the beginning and the end. All we did was have a random encounter. That sucks. So the only thing that they need, the only thing to fix this is some point of interest over here that is actually narratively interesting that is not just kill thing, right? Even that random encounter could have been made more interesting if they say, I don't know, uh, found a small, like a, a container uh, after they do the whole ooze fight, they find a container with uh, the jelly sealed tight. So they've got this, this uh, not MacGuffin necessarily, but they have this interesting loot that like, you know, maybe they debate like, oh, do we sell it? Do we do science on it? Now Percy's thinking, Tiberius, maybe they're working together to, to science out what's going on. And now that you have that interesting thing that you gained on this path, when you pop out at the Aboleth pool, now there's a question of, do we go back up and back to the relative safety of this village to do the science on this canister and to figure it out and to, and to like take a second to chill, right? So the only thing you need is just to turn this from an X into a dot. You don't even need this. You don't need this. You don't need any of that. You just need to make it interesting. Richard, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> do not tell me about the fucking petties that they got from their shiny disease. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, Richard's joking, but that fucking hits my point right out of the park. It's like the only thing that they got from this was like a handful of gold. And I think maybe like a weapon, uh, but not even like an interesting weapon. So. That is my big rant takeaway from uh, from last episode. My my fun dungeon making. Uh, uh, I don't know graph. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and we will now, uh-oh, <gasps> reveal the next episode. I did so much prep, guys. I, I, I layered everything. It's feeling good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so now we are on, uh, that, that's my takeaway from episode five, longer than most of my takeaways, because what do you know? It was about dungeon design. Um, but <laughs> now we will, uh, we will get in to episode six, uh, breaching the ember hole. And I'm very excited for this because I've just talked about how much I love dungeons. I love battle map design. The design of a keep, the design of like a structure that is meant to be defensive is fascinating to me. And watching how Matt handles it, um, you know, if it's poorly or well, will be very, very interesting. Let's get into it. Uh, what is our, uh, I was. Also, Scanlan's back. Woo! Again, I, I said it last episode. I did not think I would miss Sam. I'm being I'm being a hundred percent with you guys right now. I did not think that I was going to be like, oh no, Sam Regal is gone. Cause to be honest, he kind of annoyed me at the table. I was like, eh. Like when he when he was gone, I was like, eh, maybe it'll be better. I kind of missed him. I kind of missed Sam Regal. Sam Paris, you shut your mouth. This doesn't concern you. Uh, <laughs> um, but but yeah, I missed him at the table. I, I definitely missed um, uh, Laura. Uh, all of these guys are, are great. I mean, it, honestly, if they were not all uh, entertaining to watch, I know that there's stuff with Orion. We're waiting until the 20s to, to discover that. Um, but right now, as I'm as I'm going through this, I've made all sorts of comments about how much I fucking hate that they have eight fucking people. But they make it work because every single one of those eight is a very entertaining specimen uh, that you really feel the absence of when they're gone. Because uh, again, I wasn't expecting it with with Scanlan, but I really did. Uh, scam man is a gem and his morale boost is noticeable effect when at the table, dude, I fully believe that, that if had Scanlan been there for episode five, like it might have been more interesting. Like I, I actually, uh, uh, out of all of them at the table, I think that, uh, Tiberius has interesting battle creativity. I think that Caleb has interesting magical creativity. Um, I think that the entire top row are fantastic role players. Um, Talos and Percy, I, I know that there's some some medication with stuff with him. He's very quiet, um, which is totally okay. When he has acted, I've I've liked him a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, Scanlan has so much creativity outside of the combat uh, that really like pushes things forward in a fantastic way. Uh, He's an RP narrative button pusher while Grog is the combat button pusher. Yeah, dude. For sure. Um, zero to 104. There's something that happens here for the first time. Oh, wait, what? Wait, what happened? Uh, zero to 104. Let's see. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Critical Role tonight. We have some interesting shit, adventurous Sorry points to go over. We're also coming off of... Uh, uh, International uh, Tabletop Day, which we had a great time, met a lot of the wonderful fans, one of which had created their own t-shirt of our group and inspired us to do the same. So you'll see a bunch of us wearing our fantastic full assortment of Critical Role Party member t-shirts tonight, uh, just for fun. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, let's go ahead and get this started as we all have a chance to warm up with uh, some of the character backgrounds and maybe a little surprise. So we'll be back here in a few minutes, guys. Oh, looky, looky. Woo. Very nice. They do the cosplay.
Can I have this on while I sleep? Don't say. <laughs> Eat a nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Uh, <laughs> I'll be I'll be doing all sorts of subliminal altering. <laughs> You're going to prioritize Jack's editing. Uh. <laughs> Who needs school? Who needs to finish your projects? Only Megaphone Man. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> context on what they're wearing and also something sort of funny that happens in the next episode. Do note there are a number of microphone issues. Hooray. That's fine. <laughs> Put together by uh, our fantastic overlord, Zach. Zach! Yeah! 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 Also, am I responding noticeably quicker to chats and or is um is, is the quality noticeably worse on stream? Like is there more like like uh like, is it like a lower quality or is there more like not not refracting um um artifacting like is there is there anything like substantially worse cuz I changed one of the normal settings. Yo, senior Chewy, what's up? Um yeah, to I changed some of the settings to make it a little bit quicker on the response end, but YouTube told me it would reduce the quality, and I'm not sure if you guys even noticed the difference, but you know, we'll see. The sound effects were done by the amazing Alex Neat, and the music you heard was okay. Okay, good to know, Sam. Um, you know, maybe I'll uh, I'll, I'll do this potentially as the as the default from now on, and um. Maybe, you know, if there's something where I'm reacting to, like, I don't know, a fucking art piece, I'll <laughs> I'll worry about the quality a little bit more. Uh, picture looks fine. You can check to see if you're getting uh, the highest picture quality. Yeah. I mean, it, it says my, st my, uh, my stream health is great. Like, it... All of everything on here looks good. And it says that Ultra Low doesn't support 4K, which I never, you know, would do 4K uh what up undead king uh but yeah okay okay we'll 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 keep it here for now we'll chill uh we'll see see what happens this composed by the amazingly talented jason charles miller yeah, so, jason. Uh, you guys you know, don't know jason you should look him up he's done stuff for the guild and many of other web shows also a fantastic musician on his own with his own stuff he was the lead singer of godhead he's just a good guy lead singer of godhead also a voice actor mm. like Look him up if you have any. He's good yeah. people. And he lent yeah. his talents to our intro. So thank you, Jason. Yeah, really appreciate that, buddy. Um, Thanks, Jason. All right. Also, uh, see, we had a great time at, at Tabletop Day. We got to meet some of our fans. Yeah. Got to take some pictures. Yes. And a bunch of cool folks. Some of us uh, got to go on the stream at certain points during the day. Yes. All around a good time. So those of you who got the chance to tune in, thank you so much. I actually met a fan who had created, I mentioned before, this awesome team. Oh, my God. The lab. The uh, roster. So we were all really inspired to go ahead and yeah. make some of our own. Shabang. Um, so you have the party showing off their, their, <laughs> their critical role. Positive. Yeah, I've started skipping the uh, the recaps, especially because, you know, I do like my, my kind of takeaway thing. And you guys, I, I know most of you have seen this already, so I uh, don't necessarily need the recap most of the time. Yeah. Uh, so, so, but I do appreciate the time. About doing. So this was, we'd like to give a shout out. What was that? No, you're good. No, you're good. Okay. Um, ah. So, yes, the person who made this, big shout out to at Ruz Gopti. Woo! Thank you yes. for doing this. Nice. So, a lot of people have been asking for shirts. I don't know if you guys would maybe be into that or not. Yeah, I'm into so it. I thought maybe I'm we'd wear it. these, see what you guys thought. You're into but it. But yeah, if you guys are into it. it, we thought about doing a limited run of these and making this the first of our fan designed t shirts. Uh, uh, and every once in a while, many. first of many. Yeah. That's Every awesome once idea. in a while, we'll have fans submit designs, you know, and then we'll pick That'd a winner. Cool. And each one will be a limited one. So if you guys will like this, let us know, and maybe we'll make it happen. I'm wearing one right now in my underpants, which we will be selling. <laughs> yeah. <next week. laughs> and there might be I'll a chance I, 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 I'm going to wear The first thing he says back, I'm sorry I ever defended you, Sam. I... <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> Mine next game. Mine next game. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I guess if people are into the idea. Like, let, let the chat know. Um, if people seem to be out, we'll start putting some of these more designs out and give some some shirt possibilities to you guys in the near future. Let us know in the chat, guys. Awesome. awesome. All right. So uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Oh, I, yeah. think, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just gave every, everyone in the party uh, rupees. Rupees. <laughs> Treasure. Treasure. Uh, these were sent to me by Tim West, who has a great uh, new company. Called yeah. Yeah. Instant regret.
instant regret of like, oh, I miss Scanlan so much. Makes an underwear joke. Come on. Come on, Sam. Fantasy Coin HQ. If you go to fantasycoinhq.com, he makes uh, Matt's holding up a dwarven coin at the moment. They make gems. They Dude, those are sick. Those remind me of um when I when I was playing in person, I have uh, I don't know if any of y'all play uh board games, but I had the like metal coins from um uh from Scythe, the the board game Scythe, and so I used to use those for my in-person campaigns. Uh my friends and I just started a campaign and made the most fun character ever. I want to show you his info one day. Hell yeah, Senor Chewy. Do it. Uh post um I don't know if I have it just, yeah, yeah, just uh, throw it in the React recommendations on Discord. And yeah, just treat that, like that does not have to be critical role only. Uh, if you want me to take a look at anything, a character, magic item, build, well, magic items have their own area. Um, but if y'all want me to look at anything on stream, just let me know. Um, if anyone who has made any of the magic items wants me to kind of do, uh, you know, I do like discussions and reactions in the discord uh offline but if you want me to do anything online i am super down to talk about character builds uh character like not just builds but like narrative ideas uh i love talking about that shit making characters and like and and like homebrew stuff is like my like peaceful happy time with dnd <laughs> Make yeah. uh, fantasy coins, nerd. Coins. Are we doing free ads now? For I people? know, right? This is just a thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, Thanks, check it out. Yeah. Or if you just hit, if you hit a really tall tuft of grass with a sword, these pop out of it. So you don't actually have to, <laughs> have to go to the guy. Yeah. Just mow your lawn. Yeah, they feel like they're like. If these were rupees, this is what it would feel like. Yeah. I kind of want to like throw some of these across the room. I want to trade. I want to get like a pouch. All right, let's play. Yes. Also, guys, as a note, we. We have available tonight for the uh, the person, people who managed to get ourselves to 2,150 subscribers tonight. We will send out another promo kit to one of you folks in the chat with another signed picture of our uh, Critical Role cast. Nice. So be sure to see if we can get the subscribers to Swag. as well. So keep an eye for that for the evening. So hopefully we can give out another one of those before the night is over. Because that would be awesome. Oh, yeah. So let's do this. Let's kick into the game proper, guys. Yes, let's do it. Let's see. Let me get some proper let music playing. Let me skip That's what I do. a little bit. Yeah, 22. Uh, what is our? Uh, I was I was just so out of it last time. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I was just have, so have we rested? Are we in need of no, some rest? We should, we should probably know. rest. Uh, what are yeah. we around? What's near us? Is this just a, a tunnel? Is there's there any sort of, of shelter? We're caves? by that lake with the um with the giant monster. We circled lake. all the way back. We ran oh, a circle shit. and went down to that place that you told us not to go in the first place. Yeah, that's where we ended up. Yeah. Uh, how was that for you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so essentially, there was. We're back in the camp. Uh, you're under the camp. You're, okay. you're where the giant, the giant chasm leads down into the waterfall. Seven. There's a the pool of water at the bottom where the Abolith we was in. We just barely survived the chat room, and now we Dude, need to that's so funny, them having to explain to this person uh, of like, oh, we're just back where we started. Well, what, what happened in between? Like, what did you guys do? Eh, not important. Honestly, not very impactful. <laughs> if there was even one interesting thing, one interesting note on the, on the long way for them to be like, oh, but we found this thing. No. They don't even mention the ooze fight because it doesn't fucking matter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys also just woke up about two, three hours ago. Oh, right. So, so we don't really. Want... I mean, oh, we could take hit points. Then you guys could take a short rest and use your hit dice to heal up. So. Oh, you didn't take And actually, hit. that might be a good little. Um, honestly, that is a good, small, like bite sized DM tip, bite sized DM lesson. Uh, because at the end of la uh, at the end of episode five, uh, someone mentioned how you know normally their traditional games would go for like eight uh, hours, maybe ten hours. Uh, so they would have these really normally really long games, so the pacing wasn't quite as much of an issue. And I agreed at the time, and I still do generally agree. However, I would say that if you're a DM, you should have an interesting thing every. Two and a half, three hours. Something interesting. Doesn't have to be anything crazy, but like a clue, a foreshadowing, something interesting. I think that that is a really good pace to aim for of like every two and a half, every three hours, because you can even cut through uh, some analysis paralysis because you could say like, okay, well, I have all these interesting locations laid out but the players just stood there talking in the town all day. 
And, and this can even apply to things like shopping sessions. One interesting thing, something that they overhear, something that they see, uh, a, a, a weird feeling that they feel, something goes missing, uh, they see a potential target for later. One interesting thing every two and a half or three hours. If they had had anything interesting that was worth telling Scanlan, I don't think episode five would have felt as bad as it did. They just needed something to be able to tell him. And I think that's good no matter how long your sessions are. Keeping that sort of pace is really good. And even if they're sitting there, analysis paralysis, they've got their blankets around their shoulders. They're not moving. You can do this no matter what. You can give them an environmental hazard, an environmental clue, environmental foreshadowing. Uh, the, the rumbling of the bullet could, be, could qualify as this. Just something. It's what I last battle. Thankfully, you stayed out of the fray. I'm okay. You're okay. Okay, great. That's so you're all I got. and out of the fray. Yeah. You I'll did use free. one of your dominating spells. Okay. It's it's the only I know you note. guys are going to give me stuff to write down. So the rest of you who need to heal up, you can use this time to take a short rest and use your hit dice to heal up on your own. So I'm ready. Who are we fighting next? Let's get on some ready. healing. Are we okay? Are we all good? Where's everybody at? In terms of. Um, I think on a. Well, I mean. It's on a personal level. Yeah, I'm trying to be like in life. And uh, as, as, we, sure as, get some, as, as we survey the area, what, what, what's, where are the how many tunnels are we looking at? What's, what's our options here? So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Encounter is, is not always, always combat. Um. And you could theoretically say that they did have quite a few encounters, right? So they had, like, the, the dwarves chasing him out. That's an encounter. This is where I, I will say part of my problem with Episode 5 and with the design of that dungeon is that I would not count the fork, the branching path, as an encounter because there was nothing for them to do. They had to make a quasi-random choice. And honestly, it might have felt even better if if Matt had kept up the pressure from behind them. So if he had narrated to Caleb, like, you feel the wall, like, being torn down stone by stone. You're holding it for now, but it's gonna, you know, go soon. Like, if they had had maybe more of a pressure around the choice, that might have felt okay. Um but even then, so I, I don't think that was an encounter. Then you have the oozes. And that's it? Like, I, I don't think that this would be solved by, you know, two more random uh, monster tables or, or you know, a random uh, uh, thing here or there. But li like I said, the, the one interesting thing, yeah, yeah, jam pack it full of just just full of stuff you don't need to put like a giant amount of weight and effort and emphasis like you probably have with the barracks fight or with the ember hold or with the you know city you're exactly right sam it can just be a funny merchant or a dream sequence a, a vision yeah like all of those things are are interesting and that's all you need you just need interesting <laughs> How many doors? He's back. Will you calm down? Let me pull up this visual aid for you. Yes, I can finally... Sh uh, the, the, the title and thumbnail are correct. I can finally shit on Matt for more than five minutes. <laughs> Every other time I've tried to, tried to criticize him or make fun of him, he always ends up turning it around on me and being good. I can do it. I'm sure he's gotten much better over the years, but still, I got it. <laughs> Uh, I feel that like the cave system is way too big, and not sure if Matt took that into account for the future, but I feel like uh, he realized a lot of size was wasted design-wise. Yeah. If you, if you have something at this scale, you should... I, I feel like there are kind of two roads. If you have this giant cave complex, it needs to feel either, like, monolithic or, like, claustrophobic i think that though like like when i whenever i'm thinking about like oh is this place boring is this location boring is this setting boring is this dungeon boring whatever i try to think of ways that i could turn it up i don't remember uh who was who i was talking about the uh the map with was it you sam it was you sam um we were we were talking about your map and i i thought that your 
Like, your map had good base design, and then you took the base design, and you're like, okay, what if I added obscure area? Like, like vision obfuscation. What if I added some saw blades here? What if I added a hot cauldron? And then I looked at that, and I said, oh, fuck it. Let's keep turning it up. Like, let's let's make, like, a weird water pendulum that cools down the cauldron that they have to deal with. Like, any time I'm like, is this good enough? Just turn it up. <laughs> is is often how I think. So it's like when you're looking at this dungeon and it's kind of in this weird middle ground of like it's big, but there's like not that much going on. It's kind of just a line. Just turn it up. Make an entire wall of like like a hive looking thing where, you know, you know you see all of these tunnels spider webbing off into the distance. Uh make an make a a large field of lava not just a couple of rivers we're talking something that would take you a while to fly over like make it monolithic or reel it in the opposite way make it feel like you're you're fucking snorkeling in like a cave with this much water at the front make the lava feel feel like like claustrophobic every single like former camp that they have has been overrun by some other environmental disaster uh the every which way you turn there are wild animals that are eyeing you suspiciously but aren't quite engaging like make it feel tight and tense uh yeah this dungeon's in a really weird middle ground of those two um on the other hand, Matt is a proponent of this is the world, I'm just the narrator. So sometimes there isn't a good reason for a cave to be long, it just is. How do you feel about that approach? Um, I agree. I agree with that core approach. The I think the big problem is that, is that in this case, the world is not interesting. <laughs> so this isn't necessarily an indictment of his DMing skills. This is maybe an indictment of world building skills uh, at, at in this particular area. I think the way that he has, uh, besides keeping a fire under their ass, I, I think it was kind of uh, weird how when they were in the barracks, he was just like letting them loot without any sort of environmental cues that the entire hostile camp outside was getting riled up. Like they felt like very safe in the barracks, which was kind of weird. Um, same thing after they escaped, like Kalis wall was going to go down eventually. And assumingly the Derugar is still after them. Um, so I, I don't think in terms of DMing last session, I don't think he did a very good job of keeping the heat on, keeping them on their toes in this hyper dangerous environment. Um, but then on the other side of it, that could have been mitigated if around every corner, around every stone in this world, there are interesting things going on. Um, and like you said, an interesting thing can be a funny merchant. It can be seeing a, a wild, uh, like a wildlife, like seeing a bullet uh, across the way that looks at them and doesn't engage them in combat and like burrows off, you know, and they can choose whether to follow it or not. It, it makes the uh, area feel less safe, like, there are so many things you can do that are interesting. Um, and there are things that you can improv that are interesting that aren't necessarily like, that don't have to be like pre-built. Cause I agree with, um, with that general statement of like, this is the world. I'm just the narrator. I love that. I am a, I would say I'm a world builder first DM second, honestly. Um, but I I think maybe that's why I'm even more critical of this is because like, you know that this is a world that is meant for D and D uh, you know, this is a world meant for telling stories in. we're not trying to do a simulation. We're not trying to like replicate reality here. Like reality is boring. Uh, this is a fantasy world meant for a fantasy game. It should be weird and wacky. And like, there should be like interesting things pretty often. And if there aren't any interesting things, there should be a time skip. So that, that's kind of the next thing is like, and he even kind of showed that, like the area between the mines and here, that was just one long straight shot. He could have filled that with random encounters and they could have done that in real time, you know, a two hour walk, whatever. Uh, but he did a time skip instead. So I, I think that there are ways to make boring areas skippable and to make not skippable things interesting, if that, if that kind of makes uh, noting this advice as door the dungeon. Uh, come on, baby, light the fire. Yeah, man. 
Light the fire. Light, light the fire under their ass, dude. A especially in a hostile place. The players should not feel safe in here. They're in the underdark. Like, they, they should not feel safe unless they go through great pains to feel so. Um, so, yeah, I, I really do think that he needed to light the fire a little bit more under them. So, this is the tunnel sequence you guys have traversed down into the main area where the goblin encampment was. Oh, wait, we're still, still on fast. Across the I just recognized, I was like, Matt's voice sounds kind of weird. Sorry about that. <laughs> ...chasm to where the Durgar war camp was. Uh, this is... I love this little drawn-out thing. You guys this are currently fantastic. over in this section, about to go deeper into this tunnel where a series of small magma trickles are pouring out of the... And I'll tell you why this is fantastic. I went on a, a big, long discussion during episode four of how I thought that uh, most of their analysis paralysis was from them imagining the world differently, which is a legitimate and very common challenge because the DM knows the world perfectly and he can never communicate it perfectly. Like, that's just... That will never happen. So it's how do you communicate it efficiently while keeping your players invested in the scene. And I think that this sort of drawing, this little map, is beautiful. I think it's fantastic. Because even me, I was picturing the Aboleth pool for some reason, like, halfway up on this, like, little outcropping that then had a pool and the Aboleth, and there was, like, more beneath it. I couldn't even tell you why. I, I, I don't know why I pictured it that way. Um, but I know that all of these people were, were arguing and, and spitting at each other about misconceptions in what was going on here. So I think that this tiny little map is perfect. I think that's all you need to get everyone on the same page. So we never went up to the war camp and threw it. You did. Oh, we did. Oh, we did. We nope. crashed down by the tunnel. We fled. We sealed up the way behind us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ran in. Got it. Temporarily sealed. Okay. To be close. So we should keep going. We should just keep going. Yeah. Well, magma. Follow I recommend. The magma. Don't we? I mean, we don't want to go up and through the camp again. That's no, no, no. We're nice. going into the cabin. So mm -hmm. we're going to backtrack the way we came to that fork in the road. Yes. Okay. No, we're, oh, we're going, going to, into down. the tunnel. Into Did you the see the, the visual yes. aid? Yes, we're yes. going down the no, lava no, no, tunnel. No, into the tunnel. I'll into just the follow. Tunnel. <laughs> Did you see the visual aid? I mean, there might be something to be gleaned from going back through the war camp. This, that that tunnel. tunnel. Oh, we we just came out of there. No, 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 no. We went no. through the war camp. You guys camp. came through here. Yes. You traveled across over the war here. camp. Also, quick aesthetic question. Um, also, even right now, them clarifying it, having the visual aid is immensely helpful. Uh, I mean, even like look at this. This would have been a 20 minute debate in episode four guaranteed of them just like not understanding what they're saying. Whereas here they can just go like, whoop, look at this. And they can solve it in a minute. Um, the, uh, the other thing I was going to ask, this is the aesthetic for the stream. Do you like the size of my camera? Do you like like my kind of background or should I like kind of blow up my camera a little bit so that it's a little bit bigger? My face is a little bit more in it. Just a, just an aesthetic general question for you guys. Um, would you design the umber hold or a similar structure as a section of the overall dungeon cave, or would you design it almost like a dungeon within a dungeon? I'm, uh, John, I, I should be bigger. Okay. Uh, here I can actually, I can just make that really quick. Um, I, Sam, I'm not, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I'm ruining it. Uh, okay. I will be bigger next time. Uh, I, I am not practiced enough to make these changes on the fly. Oh no. <laughs> I'll be bigger next time. Um, <laughs> um, but okay. When I designed the, uh, so I'm assuming the Umberhold is the Emberhold uh, or what, what they're going to right now, which is the next like big secure structure. Um, Generally, I would design it, it's 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 sort of it's sort of both. I would design most of it separately. Okay, but I but it, especially for um oh man, it really depends. Oh, I'm going back and forth. I'm going back and forth. There are some cases where I would design it separately. And then when I decide that it's going in here, when it's like going into the Underdark, then I would design um, a bunch of add-ons to essentially make it make sense within the Underdark. Uh, so I would design a lot of the entrances kind of last. 
uh, so that we uh, so that it kind of makes sense within the surrounding landscape. Um, <laughs> that is what I said, Richard. Um, or your head needs to be bigger in the window. Yeah, I'm gonna like this. <laughs> um, I guess I'll I can scoot forward a little bit, but yeah, I'll, I'll make it bigger next time. Um, so yeah, I would either design it. Uh, I would design like ninety percent of it, especially if it's like a big structure. Like I'm assuming this hold is. Um, I would design like 90% of it and then add in some things to kind of mesh it into the landscape, like the last 10%. Um, and that I would say is how I design most of my stuff. Now, if it's the, if, if he designed the entire complex, if he designed the Underdark with the like strict intention that the Emberhold would always be in here, like if it, if it is an inseparable part of it, I think you can design, I would actually kind of go backwards where I would design kind of the container that is holding it first. And then I would design the entrances and make that interesting with like the surrounding landscape, make it as interesting as possible. And then I would kind of work my way progressively inward uh, towards, okay, now we make the outer rooms interesting and now the inner rooms, and then we make some shortcuts between them. Um, so uh, a bit of both. Because I, I kind of picture this similar to, like, you know, a generic, like, wizard's tower. And so, like, I've done it before where, like, I just designed 90% of a wizard's tower. I didn't know if it would be in a swamp. I didn't know if it would be in a seaside village. I didn't know if it would be in a desert. And when I finally figured out where I was going to place it, maybe either through improv um, or like I realized it like the session before of like, okay, I think I want to use the wizard's tower next session. I'll then do that kind of final leg, that little final 10% to be like, okay, it's going to be in the seaside village. I'm going to make like, uh, like an underwater cave entrance that kind of goes up into it. Um, or maybe there are some sirens that you can see from like an outlook on the tower in the landscape over here, you know? So kind of mesh it, kind of massage it into the landscape. Um, so, uh, build the modular part, then integrate it. That makes sense. I feel like that approach, approach frees you to replace unused dungeon parts with, without... Uh, which great mental recycling? Oh, which is great. I'm sorry. There's like this weird emoticon that I can't get rid of, and I wish I could. Um, it allows me to go like, uh-oh... Oh, and now it's making me sign in. Ay, yeah, yeah. This was a terrible idea. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, never mind. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's it's good mental recycling. Uh, that's how I build a lot of my worlds. Is I will build ninety percent of a thing, but then leave that last ten for um for meshing it in and massaging it in. That's how I build almost all of my points of interest. Uh, and that's how I build the, uh, the tables that I make any sort of random tables, you know, I'm building 90% of it and then I'll improv the other 10%. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's, and the, <laughs> the hot glue phase, exactly, exactly. The hot glue phase, the kind of banging the dents out phase, uh, which yeah, it, it really, cause there's the really common newbie complaint of, I built this whole area and they didn't go to it. Uh, what do I do? And if you build something to sort of be location agnostic, or at least you build it to where you can strip away location details, it may, it frees you up to just use it later because you put mental effort into designing that, right? Like you want to use the thing that you made because it's good. If you're having to make a bunch of stuff that's never going to get used, it's going to be really hard to convince yourself to make it good, right? <laughs> so, like, you know, with this, where you're kind of almost planning out this recycling aspect, uh, you can feel safe and secure making it all really good, like putting 100% effort in, because you know you're going to use it eventually. Went back here yeah, and tunnel below. Okay. And pop this out right here. So uh, now we're going into this. Correct. Come on. Yeah, yeah, maps. Yeah, and and just, just to maps. make sure that my memory is on point, before <laughs> we uh, circled back around, we hit a fork in the road where we could have gone up and we could have gone down. Correct. No one wants yes. That's behind That's us. That's behind us. We're going, we're going well, down, down, down. Cheers. Down, down, huzzah. Cheers indeed. Huzzah. All right. Shall we? So, yes. With, we shall. 
He's, uh, is... Oh, also, a uh, quick shout out to friend of the channel. He is, um, oh, what's up, Vex? How you doing? Uh, welcome to the Discord. Uh, quick shout out to friend of the channel. If you're the type of person that likes having multiple streams up and, you know, going back and forth between them, uh, Nico Dicebrain just went live and is ranking every single magic item on how useful they would be IRL with uh, John Sand. Uh, both of them are very, very cool creators. So if you... If you like that sort of thing, having multiple things open at once, I would go check them out. Um, uh, Clarence? Oh no, Samuel! You don't want to keep distracting. I, you are. <laughs> I'm joking. I like, I like the distractions. I like talking. Uh, I think it'd be fun to build a structure, then trying to design as if the structure was upside down. Hmm, that would be fun. Yeah, I could, I could totally see that. Yeah, and I will say, a lot of times, you know. I, and I think that this isn't like a super unique thing to me. I think most people, most DMs, when they're building a dungeon or building a structure, they design the layout first and then they fill in the rooms and everything. Um, it would be very fun to like design a structure, flip the layout, and then like imagine everything on like the roof of every room. That would be really fun. With us still? Uh, Clarota is. Or are you saying that like you design it, flip it upside down, and then try to make it as real feeling as possible? So then it just has this weird, wacky layout that could also work. Um, what up, Megan Smith hands? Uh, oh yeah, this post is solely meant to be a distraction. Fuck you, Richard. <laughs> um, no, that's dope. Welcome, Megan Smith hands. Uh, very glad to have you. Glad to have you in the Discord, in the stream. We've got, uh, we're building up, like, a, a pretty consistent community of folks that watch. Um, I'm loving watching it and commenting on it, and I'm loving talking with all of you guys. So, uh, so welcome. I'm not gonna make, like, an audience name. I think that's weird. <laughs> the, the megaphone men is also too gendered, because there's lots of ladies in here. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know, but, but welcome to, to the crew. Welcome to the, to the gang. Uh, it's good to have you. Indeed with you. Um, Clorota took a large, uh, black iron Duragar bolt to the chest earlier and has mostly recovered, but still even more hunched than usual as far as people are. Uh, he's he been... also ate those brains. Uh, the brains oh, yeah. helped, helped him, him a little bit. Helped him keep <laughs> healthy, but he's right. still, still a little wounded, but he's taking his time to kind of rest up. He seems to be okay. Not as worse for wear as he was earlier. Okay. Um, the slight wheeze that's always kind of to him is still present. He's just always yeah. a little, it's a little, wheezy. A little, a little oh. rough. A little rough around the edges. As far as the look. Yeah, so I mean, like, quick, uh, quick player tip. Uh, this is this sort of situation of like Clarota being injured is a great way to flex some interpersonal group drama. Of uh, remember, Clarota's a fucking mind flayer. Like, the incident that they're just talking about is him sucking a living thing's brain out. <laughs> um, and I talked about it when that happened of, like, ooh, like, PC-centered morality. Um, but if, if, you're a, if you're a player in this situation, feel free to, like, outwardly express, like, eh, don't give a shit. Like, like Clorota's our ally for now, um, but, you know, I don't really, I don't really care that much if he, if he goes down. Just making that statement is great fodder for interpersonal drama and conflict amongst the party. Because uh, inevitably, someone who has a differing philosophical stance on it, their character at least, uh, might pipe up and, and say something about it. All right, so, as you guys begin to push down into this lower chasm, the, uh, the temperature of the air itself grows steadily warmer and warmer with a drier heat. Um, you find yourself, especially those of you with thick armor, um, oh, you find so the hot. sweat beads begin to trickle down the side of your face and begin to pool and gather in parts of your, your chest plate. Mike, um, if you'd like me to hold your armor, do you want to take it off for a little while? Just to sort of no, I'll keep it on just for safety. Let it hang out a little bit now? Do you even lift, bro? <laughs> just saying. You might feel more comfortable with a loose-fitting sort of clothes. Scan and stop being creepy. I'm not creepy, I'm just trying. Mine for very Oh, it's fine. This motherfucker. Scanlan, I tried, man. I was like, I can't wait until Scanman's back. And then, and then you come back and you start saying this shit. Sam, 
Uh, not Samuel Paris, Sam Regal. This is why I wasn't sad when you left, Sam. This is why. Get your act together. It's fine, Sam. Yeah, it's okay. I'll keep it on. Yes. I'll just have to use my a imagination. Yes. <laughs> that's, what that's what we'll call it for now. Yeah. Yeah. Onward. All right. Pressing further down, the air itself that once had kind of a hint of that sulfurous smell is now becoming stronger and stronger as you step deeper and deeper into this cavernous tunnel. Uh, it rests about 30 feet to 40 feet at width and about 25, 30 feet up, and it varies and comes to pinch tighter or, or wider at moments, but it continues at a steady downward climb in a continuous direction. Um, these small trickles, some of them pool and kind of gather into these small magma uh, kind of cups, if you will. More to more magma. I knew it was coming. Uh, I'm just wondering if it's liquid hot. That's minus 200 experience points. I feel a bit weaker now. Um, okay. So, uh, um, you get about... 20 or 30 minutes deeper into this tunnel before the sweltering heat gets noticeably warmer and as you crest a slight incline and decline over a small hill portion of this tunnel, you can see now a large portion of the rock has collapsed on the left side and a gargantuan pool of magma is pulling into the tunnel, essentially covering half of the tunnel you're traversing down. It can be walked on the side of safely at about two or three at shoulder width, but you only have about a 15 foot width period and the rest of it is just extremely bright, hot, molten rock. Does it hurt us to get near it? No, but it's uncomfortable. Okay. And it's something to be very aware of and to I watch your stuff. Great. You feel great. <laughs> I'd just like to point out we're nine adults playing Don't Touch the Hot Lava at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no Keyless, Keyless, you don't have any way of, you say it gets hotter than this. You don't have any way of getting some water out here or anything. Ooh, I do. And um, I pull out an empty bottle. <laughs> oh. Not helpful. Oh. Is Tiberius, it curious, um, I've seen yeah, that bottle a lot. What does it do? Oh, it, it will. Uh, I pull out two bottles. But this one, they're both empty. Also, everybody say it with me. They entered a new location, and Matt gave a ton of visual description. But what did he not talk about? What you hear and what you smell. The sulfur, the, 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 the hot dust. It almost feels like you're, you're entering into a desert. Uh, the, the more moist, moldy smells that you were smelling near the Aboleth pit fade into sharp, acidic tones. I mean, it writes itself. Come on. What do you smell? This one. That's the one thing I can always get mad on. If I'm ever feeling like I'm complimenting him too much, which I will do, <laughs> uh, I can always come back to fucking talk about what you smell. And not to keep pausing, sorry, uh, Tiberius. Um, uh, as a as a funny side note, one of my best friends uh, started DMing this year, and he was asking me for advice, and I talked to him about the smell thing. And uh, he, I, I don't remember what it's called. I don't remember what the condition is, but he can't smell. He doesn't have a sense of smell. Hasn't had it uh, since he was born. Um, and so he was like, that's going to be pretty tough for me. It smells warm in here. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, maybe for you, you get a pass on this one, sir. <laughs> this one is a water bottle. Oh. Oh, thank you. That clears that up. <laughs> <laughs> Also, I made the camera bigger. John, you were born without a sense of smell too. Man, everybody I know is is rocking the no smell route. I'm sorry, John. I'm sorry that that is my kind of cornerstone piece of advice <laughs> that I always bring up. Um, I mean, you know, I know that, that you and he still, like, you know, have a general sense of, like, what smells exist. So you can still do it to some degree, but it is definitely harder, I, I can imagine. <laughs> Does it make a lot of water? Oh, yes. Um, it, this, uh, if we ever need air, I think that's the uh, water one that you just pulled out. I take it out. 
I control a small gust. Mm -hmm. I love that, that wind caption of wind SFX. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh my. This, um, if we need water. It... Hell yeah, Megan. Congratulations on getting back into it. I am currently playing right now. I haven't DM'd in about a year, I think. Maybe a year and a half. It's been a while for me too. And I am, I'm also looking, looking at getting back on the, uh, getting back on the train of DMing. Uh, Cause I miss it. I miss it so much. Uh, I'm very excited to get back to it. Uh, but I'm glad that we can take notes. If you disagree with anything I say, feel free. I've had a lot, <laughs> a lot of the chatters in here disagree with me before. Um, and we and we talk it out and we have a good time and we normally are and are actually saying the same thing just in slightly different ways, which is why I like live streaming. You can really get through the nuance of a point. Um, but anyway, I do it and I do a small stream. Okay, so a little bit of water just to pour perpetually <laughs> and without seeming end. It's and like a the size stream. Of the bottom. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, and if you want to describe, I do a I mean, small, nice. a small, little squirt blasts on scanning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh, okay. <laughs> is Lovely. That, is that unlimited? Yeah. Well, of course it is. <laughs> Why would I carry a non magical item on me? That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, should okay. we try That's to cross to this little bit? That sounds cool. Oh, okay. Can I use really my tracking to see um, any of those um, do regard, to see um, if any of them have passed through the area, if there's a large group of them ahead of us? I can use my sure. tracking in my favorite terrain to um, see how many within six miles if there's a large group of them and stuff. Yes, you can. All right, go ahead and uh, go ahead and roll for the, your tracking check on that. First roll. Leave a survival. Oh, dun, dun, here dun. We go. First roll of the session. The Star Wars trailer is with well, advantage, well. I believe, because it is your favorite terrain. Oh, okay. What she get? Your favorite terrain. Okay, that's better. Uh, is that it? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. All right. Uh, take a moment. I mean, they are level nines. So. About thirty to forty feet, you kind of go through and inspect the way the train's been pushed and the dirt's been shoved aside, <laughs> tracking footprints and scuff marks in the rock and the walls nearby. Uh, is your favorite terrain the Underdark? I I believe is that is that the uh, is that the thing, dude? That's why I'm so we we had the Ranger talk I think in like episode one uh, of this series about how I feel about Rangers. Um, they either are like incredibly immensely useful, at least um, original Ranger, not revised Ranger. Um, they are either incredibly bonkers useful, or like half of their features just don't work. <laughs> it's 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 wild. Uh, um, it's not necessarily bad. Like if you're into that, it it can go all right. But you need to kind of talk between you and the DM as that player. About like, okay, like how are we gonna do this and like make sure that like sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not. Seeing if any of the flows have been interrupted recently, and you ascertain that there is actually a pretty continuous ascertain. patrol through here about once every four to eight hours up and down this tunnel. Uh, that can anywhere from five to ten or more Duragar. Sometimes mm -hmm. other larger creatures you find footprints that resemble maybe the ogres you mentioned earlier, um, possible troll footprints since you're not familiar with that entity. Oh um, shit, they actually learned something in episode five. Some of the walls have learned footprints. what looks like small localized <laughs> cave almost as if something had burrowed through at one time or another. Oh. Uh, dun, large, dun, dun. Very large creatures. So there's also things that exist what up, outside of the tunnel system. So as quickly as possible, we should get through this tunnel. Doing? Probably a good idea. Yes, as a note though, you said within six miles. Yes. Um, as you continue miles? tracking miles. down this tunnel. Again, bonkers useful or absolutely useless? No in between. Six miles? Jesus. Um, and it takes you a good three... Ah, does she? Hey, man. Look, I've never played a ranger. I don't have a lot of plans on it. I know some people love them. That is one of my issues with ranger, is that there is... You have this weird incentive to be like pushing the dm for like definitional te like technicalities uh, i think a lot more than some other classes but uh, that's you know uh, if i ever want to really debate ranger i'll have nico on he made a whole video about how much he likes them um they're level nine at this point right so i think she has two favored terrains forest and underdark aha uh -huh. that sounds right yeah yeah because they definitely are level nine um 
Yeah. Interesting. Three or four hours to finally reach a point where the tunnel begins to widen up. Uh, you assess that maybe... It's also, this is a, this is also sort of a function of there being uh, eight players. Having a, what is basically a homing beacon on, on a cre on any creature, you know, of a certain type within six miles is, it is very good with four players. Like, don't get me wrong. But they're normally, you know, it's an entire type. So there are normally creatures of that type that can pose a real danger to a party of four. Even when they get to be fairly powerful. A party of eight? <laughs> you start to get, le like, now she, she goes from less of, like, this, like, leader that is, like, you know, like, leading her ragtag group, and they have to, like, make decisions about this information that she's gleaning from her brain, and more like a fucking, like, like, heartbeat sensor from Rainbow Six Siege, where they're just, like, glancing around and, like, oh, I found them, everyone charge! <laughs> but that's a, honestly a lot of class features when you get this many people, because the amount of power that their group can wield is just ludicrous. Like, a group of, of eight level nines, I mean, you can take on some wild challenges. Uh, your favorite terrain is a forest. Well, there's a tree. <laughs> um, imagine rolling pulse into D and D brother. I'll, f I'll find a way. Don't you worry, Marcus. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Forest is a real, a real generic one. Ain't it of like, is this a taiga? Is this a, is this a, 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 a tropical forest is is the tropical forest or is it a rainforest is a rainforest a forest yeah we're in a swamp well there are a lot of trees in this swamp <laughs> three miles up there is a localized town or at least a a, a mm. population of duragar oh, amassed yeah. in a central place check out the okay. brain on brad so three to four miles up, you said, mm -hmm. from where we are at this point. Yeah, from where you begin. Oh. Um, so are we okay. stealthing? We yeah. should probably yeah. start yes, stealthing. Yes. At this I was point about yet. to say I'd like to move ahead of the group a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and start sneaking along. Let's do that. Go ahead and roll stealth. Uh, do I have advantage like my sister had for? Everybody. You do not. No. Everybody. All right. Should we well, all try to stealth. Yeah. Uh, Twenty-six. Uh, this should be a group stealth check. This group is. Group stealth. Yes. Twenty-six. Fail. Nineteen. 15. 7. 17. 7? Seven? 7. 20. 26. All right. Uh, <laughs> picking up on the shortcomings of a handful of members of your group, you do manage to maintain what you feel is a fairly stealthy advance deeper into this tunnel system. Um, about an hour and a half of perpetual travel as the tunnel slowly widens further and further with every uh, quarter mile or so. You eventually get to a point where the tunnel shoots open into a gargantuan cavern, a, a, a chamber nearly a mile and a half across from this visual point. Okay. It is extremely tall with a hundreds I like of it. very jagged uh, stalagmites hanging from the ceiling. Uh, uh, yes! Yes, Matt! <laughs> This is the sort of shit that I was talking about, like, in the random encounter. I was like, give them shit on the ceiling. Give them, uh, yes, stalagmites. Let's go. And rock formations that come, kind of rise and fall at different points of the topography. This entire yes. tunnel is built in the strange, large, natural downward curve that disappears out of sight about a mile ahead and to the left. Love but this. This huge tunnel is lit with what looks like maybe two to three dozen various uh, small lava falls that are pouring down the sides. Holy shit, did you guys just hear me describing like what I wanted this cave system to look like if it was going to be, you know, this big kind of monumental monolithic uh, sort of area, like really crank up the the extremes? Uh, ah, it's like he heard me through the... <laughs> through the thing. I was like, yeah, make it a huge thing that like takes a while to fly across. Oh man, this is great. This is great. I love this it. Cavern, this, this giant cavern. Cause there's so many opportunities for interesting things to be hidden in here that even if they don't find anything interesting, there's always the implication that there could be something interesting, right? Like there could be something hidden among the stalactites. There could be something hidden in one of the waterfalls. Like 
there are so many opportunities and it allows the DM. DM describes this big area. Maybe if you're a really improv heavy DM like I am, uh, maybe you don't even have something in your head for like what interesting things are going to be in here, but you're giving your players a ton of different paths, ton of different options uh, within this single area. And then they go and explore whatever they find interesting. So say they find the stalactites interesting. Now you can place, you can improv something interesting up there because they're interested in it. Um, it also allows you to have interesting things hidden behind skill checks uh, that you know, can be fairly tough. Like, so you can have like several hidden doors that are all behind fairly hard skill checks. Um, so that way it doesn't matter if they fail one, they're not like, you know, dead in the, wa the water. Now they have to go in a straight line. There are some other options, some other opportunities for them to maybe find something interesting. The structure. Um, you also see some small pockets of that Love red it. glowstone that the, uh, a lot of these warden tunnels tend to use as a light source. Um, you also, as you begin to step into this carefully, uh, you taking point on this, both the, the, the twins, you notice on the far end of this, this, this cavern, uh, there's, uh, let me see here. Well, first off, the entire landscape is rough and craggy with large black obsidian spikes just jutting out of the ground at various points, whether it be seismically created or otherwise. It's a very unwelcoming atmosphere. Uh, and that sulfurous smell is extremely strong. Even though you've gotten used Matt's listening to me. No, <laughs> you no, know, Matt. You're not supposed to do this. Look at that. He finally talked about a smell. He did it. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. I'm so happy. Uh! To it as far as you can to this travel. It's still a very pungent odor, and you find that it's gonna be very difficult for you to make up any other scent in this location right now. <laughs> See, and this is why I don't feel bad throwing shit at Matt. Is because half the time. He just takes my criticism and just solves it five minutes after I give it. <laughs> so I really don't feel bad throwing it out because I know he can handle it. He's that good. <laughs> and that horrible mixture of chemicals. It probably isn't very healthy to be breathing at the moment. Um, the, uh, what you see across the chamber, your eyes focus on a small cluster of buildings, it looks. Of a similar construct as the barracks that you saw at the war camp. Um, there's can probably surmise somewhere in the neighborhood of about 20 to 25 of these structures, all localized in this one area that is punctuated with, you can count about seven of these black obsidian spires that rise out at different points around, like watchtowers. Still natural? No, these are constructed. These are very smooth and have that kind of rigid dwarvish construction with a, a jagged edge to each one of the, the leveled lips of these towers. Um, the one that you can see closest to you, which is about a quarter mile off, you can just barely make out what looks like a couple of Duragar walking across one of the upper levels, and what looks like some sort of ballista and or <gasps> anti-personnel weapon God. that is This is where Kima's must be now. How do you know that? I mean... She had a vision! Oh, plus it's a really big thing. <laughs> That's true. These giant <laughs> bolt throwers really currently thing. reside on each one of these, and then in the center of this cluster of buildings, uh... Well, and see, and I don't know if this is what Matt is doing, but uh, with, during the episode that Pike came back, I think it was four, maybe? Um, during that one, and she, she describes her vision, and I was talking about how much I fucking love visions in D&D. I think visions are sick as hell, uh, because you can be super poetic and, then, uh, and, and deliver like vague clues that won't make sense until they see it. Right? Like this, to me, he's talking about these like jagged construction or constructed like obsidian things. And part of Pike's vision was like the field of broken glass. So these obsidian towers could be, you know, theoretically like glass shards sticking out on this field. And so that, that's the great thing about visions is you can play with them in the poetic language. Like, when we hear field of broken glass, we think about, like, you know, glass from bottles, you know? We think about small, broken things on, like, a grass field. That's at least what I envisioned. But then they get here, and they see these obsidian towers, and one of them makes the spark, makes the connection of, like, oh, this is the field of broken glass. Like, and it makes them feel cool. It allows for you to have foreshadowed this thing, and so you can take them in a direction, but there's also the chance for misinterpretation 
you might not have intended this to be the field of broken glass. And they'll find that out later when they get to the actual field. And so that, that it gives you a lot of room to play and the players a lot of room to play as well. You see standing a gargantuan ebony fortress. Oh, yeah, also that. Serrated stonework marks the top of each wall and more of these giant bolt throwers are mounted across the parapets. A massive magma fall descends from the rocky ceiling right above the stronghold onto the roof and is forked onto each side and then continues to flow down Badass. Uh, buttressing each side of the stronghold almost as a defense mechanism. Like they built it intentionally underneath this magma fall. Wow. Oh, oh. oh, and see, this is, okay. So a lot of times when I'm thinking about, fa this, is, this is DM advice. Uh, when I'm thinking about building, I, either doing world building, uh, dungeon building, whatever, whatever uh, we're calling it. I talked about a lot of times I build it more modular. So I'll build like 90% of a thing and then I put it somewhere. Um, and I think this is a great example of like, he could have built the Ember Hold and then been like, okay, I want to put it in this big cavern. Uh, there are all these lava falls. Oh, it would be really cool if like to mesh it into the environment, I place it there and then there's a big magma fall on top of it that then goes out to either side. Then you have to consider like, okay, if that's the case, like how do they keep the people inside safe? And then you have some like fallout from that. And so, like, maybe you say, like, okay, they have, like, this, like, magma shielding that's this extra strength hard rock that is very, very, very heavy. And so now that gives the players an opportunity to maybe destroy some supports for that ceiling and have the, you know, ceiling come crashing in with all of the magma. Alternatively, uh, maybe these walls are stronger than average to support and withstand the lava and the players can use that somehow. Uh, that these these walls are super duper duper strong. Um, you know, all of these are just examples of like fallout decisions from one choice. And then you just keep following that thread out of like, there's a magma fall, what else is wrong <laughs> with it? So I think a good example of this, if you've ever, um, or I mean, maybe not want to spoil it, but I think that Mistborn Era 1 has a really good example of this where you take the real world you make one small difference and then you just explore that difference to high heaven. You just say, okay, assuming that difference is the case, what are all of the fallout things? I've also heard Matt in an interview talk about how this is how he makes um, small towns. So you just, you say, okay, I want a, um, a town in this environment. What's in this environment? And you just choose like one thing of interest. So let's say that there's iron in this environment. Well, if there's iron, there's probably some sort of mining town. Well, if there's a mining town, there might be some sort of trade guild in order to manage the sales and the caravan that comes through. And there might be a separate group of workers uh, that maybe isn't unionized, but is sort of a unofficial gang uh, that can stop production whenever the trade guild gets too out of hand. And there would probably be an extra uh, governmental body to regulate all of the general goings on and the utilities of the town. Uh, not to mention an overseer's office from the land that they reside in. Like, you just make one decision and just think about, like, what would happen in this town if that one decision was made. Uh, and then you can get even deeper into, like, interpersonal conflicts. You can tell Romeo and Juliet type stories if there are different factions. I mean... All of this from the choice that there is iron here. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Uh, and, it, and it just boils out into a whole settlement. Um, so I think that that is kind of a just general advice on just world building in general, on make small decisions and then follow that thread out. It'll make the entire thing feel so much more cohesive. That's what the trap door is. What? That's a trap door? Yeah. That's a trap door. You have a under the magma? You missed a lot, Scan. Yes. I was oh, with you the whole time. Yes, but you were never paying attention. I was drunk. You got that new bit. You were staring at it a long time ago. Well, I, uh, uh, Vax known. creeps back to Pike and ushers her up to the front. Um, do you recall any other details from your vision, from your dreams? Uh, I've definitely been here in the vision. 
um, <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that much. Mm. Uh, all of this looks familiar. Thousand percent, uh, sure, for sure. Uh, and I think we're in the right place. Oh. Sweet. So, um, yeah, very good. you know, That's all depending important. on what else is, is around, what was the building again with the... It's a fortress. The, the, the giant fortress you see is it's called Emberhold. And it's that's not, what's been referred that's to as. It's not a temple. It is a fortress. It's not a temple. It's a okay. fortress. The this temple, is... where apparently Kavarn, as far as you know, exists, uh, is further Perfect. below in the uh, kind of fungal forest that surrounds this ancient city ruin that has been repurposed by the Illithids that Clarota okay. actually came from. Got oh, it. Yes, and we know here because um, the general that we mind melded Clarota re read his brain. Yeah. Oh, I was yeah. there. I know. Uh, <laughs> so, so I'm reiterating. Yeah, yeah. Yo, um, thank you for that. Yes. Um, Just making sure. If you had this so remember, Scanlan, that the oh, general scary. said that on the left side of the fortress oh, is the fortress. how we can get into the trap door. How we can door. get into the trap door. <laughs> right. Exactly. By the, by the exactly. smaller of two lovers. Smaller by the smaller of two lovers. Of two, what? Lovers? Lovers. All right, Sam, you're coming back. You're coming back around. I'm with it. <laughs> so what we're looking at is the fortress. You're looking yes. at Emberhold itself. Yeah, the we're center of the Duragar society. And from what uh, you've gleaned from two Big different Duragar that you've interrogated, supposedly where Lady Kima has been held. By King Murgold? By King Murgold. Murgold and uh, yes. Queen uh, King. Ulara. Yeah. Uh, All right, reiterating my my theory. I've I've had this theory for a while now. I think I first pitched it in like episode three, when we first learned about Kavarn. I think that Lady Kima is Kavarn. That the Duragar did some shit to her, made her into Kavarn, and or she was always Kavarn. I'm not quite sure. She then snuck down to uh, Yogsaloth, I think, or maybe that that might be a Lovecraftian great old one. I don't remember the the Mind Flayer City. She went down to the Mind Flayer City, snuck her way in there, charmed the Elder Brain, and is now controlling all of the uh, Mind Flayers via Elder Brain, uh, gaze with two minds, because she's a warlock. That's my Kavarn theory. Point. Can we Long see the two? Uh, thank you. The two <laughs> lava flows that uh, we were warned about. Uh, that is way too far away. That stronghold is probably a good mile and a half away from you so right now. There's a lot of cover as we as we go. There near is a lot of cover. Of all the... Yes, but there's a lot of it's a lot of open area with cover, so it's one okay. of those you're just gonna have to be Percy. careful as you move through. Yeah, it's pretty dark here, right? You, uh, yes, it's it very dark. The only reason you can weapon. see much is because of the light vision. Very Even long. at this radius, <laughs> things you can see nearby. Um, right now. You, a light source would be very helpful in making sure that you can see details and not fall into anything you don't want to. But it also makes you very visible to anything else out right. there. So between, you have to decide. Uh, between the lava and the red stones, the twins can see, correct? The dim light. You can see near, but like I said, Nothing things that are a mile away, right, 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 right. it's way too far away. The reason you can make out uh, this small city and Emberhold itself is because there are clusters of the red glowstone used within that city and the giant magma fall that currently envelops the sides of, of the stronghold make it very, very visible and, and easy to pick out against the rest of the cavern. So this is a whole little city down here. So we yes. should keep to the off, left yeah. and head down that direction. I'm actually going to go ahead and cast... Uh, pass without a trace. Okay. What's that do? It makes us really stealthy. Oh, cool. Yeah. Essentially, yes. as she finishes. The thing that saved our butts last time. Mm -hmm. You've seen this bots. before. As she finishes her incantation, you feel the darkness of the shadows around you begin to coalesce oh. and almost stick to you. And they have, oh, there's no substance for a moment. You almost find yourself repulsed by it until you realize that it's probably an advantageous circumstance. But you find yourself now much easier to slip into the surrounding shadows. They're nice shadows. And I'm doing my flower girl routine with the dust. <laughs> okay, so something that I want to bring up because I actually use this all the time. When I am not only when I'm DMing, when I'm playing, when I'm world building, I use this constantly. And when I'm DMing, I make sure that my players have a general idea of what I mean. It is a Wikipedia page called the Settlement hierarchy i heavily recommend if you are a dm uh to favorite this page and to share it with your players because this cuts through the fat 
of describing settlements so easy. And it allows you to use a single term to describe a ton of shit. So there are, now there are some problems with the concept of a settlement hierarchy, yada, yada, yada. It's okay. <laughs> I think, I think it is very, very useful uh, at my table and I've, I've only ever seen it be good uh, in a positive. So there are like extreme density, more than a billion residents. Uh, and it has like these kind of describes them a little bit, not really, doesn't really matter that much. Um, but when we talk about towns versus cities, these are big differences and describing them appropriately can be a really quick way to get your players to understand the scene in front of them. So the difference between a quarter million to 1 million residents versus like 10,000 to 100,000 obviously is huge. And I also like to give my players uh, examples of towns near us that actually, you know, meet these criteria. So when I'm talking about a town, I'll be like, it's a town. This is a nearby, like real world example of like what a town is. So I look up like a place with between 10,000 and 100,000 residents. And then when I talk about a city, I do the same thing. I'm like, okay, this is a city. This is a town. So that you have a real world analog for it. And you have a much better idea of what we're talking about now. Um, and then you get into, you know, kind of down here, there are minuscule densities of populations, um, more than 150 people. There's a hamlet that's like 30 to 50, uh, this, this sort of thing. Um, so yeah. And if you ever are going like above a million residents, you can then accurately use like metropolis, conurbation, megalopolis, like you can actually use all of these things and be like, oh yeah, this is a conurbation like the New York tri-state area or the Dallas-Fort Worth tri-state area or not tri-state, uh, but the, the Dallas-Fort Worth conurbation, right? Like you can actually give real world examples to give a context to this fictional situation that we're in. Um, and when I'm just world building, so not even when I'm running the game, I like to then look at it and I'm like, okay, like I think that this place should have maybe like, you know, 30,000 residents. So for 30,000 residents, like what do those have? Like, okay, clinics, pharmacy, banks, supermarket. So they have those sorts of things, but they become less available as size reduces. Uh, density may not be sufficient to support commercial areas like a shopping mall, which is great for me, for me to know. Uh, and you can even go further in and, and really try to understand what like, you know, medieval towns would have been like, uh, or you can look up like medieval settlement of 20,000 people, but I digress. This is, this is one of my personal DM tips that I don't think uh, a lot of people know about or use Uh Wikipedia page for settlement hierarchy. Love it. Traceless list just over here, over there. We don't really, <laughs> we don't really need. Well, and so if I was Matt, when they say like, "Oh, this is a whole little city in here," we just referenced the settlement hierarchy. That's like a lot of people: two hundred fifty thousand to a million, right? Quarter of a million to a million. That's a fuck ton of people. And so that implies a whole, like, a whole thing. Like, like a, a city would not be able to fit in a space that's a mile and a half wide, which they have established that this is without being immensely, like, tall, without them being super, like, built into the floors, the walls, the ground. Like, the, you know, this would be, these are kind of the natural fallouts of that if it truly is a city. Um, and if someone of... Uh, you know, one of them says like, oh, it's a city. You can be like, oh, it's, it's a town. It has about, you know, 30,000 people, um, you know, similar to X town near us where we're playing. So that, that is why I think it's relevant. And that's why I thought I thought about it is because like, I really doubt that this is actually a city. It's probably a town. You never know, Percy. Got a really he does it all the time. We have no idea how many times he says this. What's gonna, our that's fair. What's our angle here, gents? Are well, we, we just we need to get closer up. We need to find this trap door because it's suicide going in the front. Right, and Lady Kima is being held here. 
So there's an entrance to this trap door that possibly is on the outskirts of the city. Yes. Yes. So we need to find it. Yes. Yes, it's on the left. Well, let's go. Oh, it's on the left? Yes, so we're heading left and Let's do it. Yes. And the twins will creep it, continue. Yeah, you guys are all stealthy, so we'll keep. It's probably smart you're moving ahead. Okay. Get creepy. Go, go, go. I'll take point on the group that's following. All right. You guys take care of Trinket as I'm ahead of you. Come on, Trinket. Me and Trinket are telling jokes in the back of the room. Okay. Oh. Quietly. <laughs> Classic <laughs> Trinket. <laughs> All right. You guys Classic continue Trinket. staying off of the main path, and you can see there is about a 20-foot natural formation of, of kind of a walkway, or at least the, where most of the uh, patrols and any sort of uh, Durgar foot travel is localized. You can see where that sure. natural road has been created over time. You avoid that path and steer off to the left, kind of dodging between the various bits of terrain. It is a very rocky and uh, difficult terrain. Should you not be with your ranger, who is the Underdark, is your favorite terrain. Oh, I'll go back then. Should I? Or is it okay? Because we're all together. It's, it's okay because you guys are in okay. together. I'm going to say essentially you're just marking places where the terrain would be dangerous to watch your step and to be wary of any yes. locations that might be yeah. unsafe for load bearing, uh, anything like that. So, yeah, I saw that though. <laughs> you calling me low Barry? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's modest. <laughs> Grog, you did smash through the, the barracks roof two episodes ago. Let's not. <laughs> um, as you guys begin to curve around the left, uh, everyone roll perception check real fast. Oh, snap. It's perception oh, time. Oh, oh, shit. With our proficiency bonus. And I would, and, and we've talked about this with Matt's style. He does it a lot with stealth. He does it less often with perception. And I actually wish he did it more with perception of making like group stealth checks where you look at like, okay, you know, DC's 15 in my mind. How many of them beat 15? How many of them were less than 15? And if there are more that won than lost, the entire group sees whatever is hidden behind the perception check. If there are more lower than above, then the entire group does not see it. Uh, I think that that is my prefer. I think I, I've really liked how he's done that with stealth, and I think I would just apply that to any check that you're making the entire group to make. Uh, that way you don't have this like weird, especially with them, they have the earrings for nice, easy communication, which I like the earrings. But it means that there's no like dramatic irony. There's no loss of communication. They all know what everyone else knows. Uh, so... Out of eight of them, one of them is going to make the perception check and then communicate it to everyone else. Uh, only if you're proficient with, per with perception. I can't read the dice. Oh. Oh. It's either a six or a nine. Did no you, idea. There's a dot in the bottom. Oh, right at the bottom? Yeah. <laughs> it's a six. <laughs> <laughs> oh, scan the 16. Oh, scan 24. Nine. 19. 20. 25. All right. Both Percy and uh, and Vax simultaneously kind of put their arms out. Oh, their the only exception to this is uh, if people are surprised in combat, which I have a feeling that this might be about to be. Then you do it all separately because then you have some people that are surprised and some people that aren't, and I think that that's very interesting. Um, so, yeah. But that's, uh, that's like a weird, that's almost like, I would almost do like a wisdom saving throw for that. I'm not sure if I would do a skill check. Because I've talked about it before. Checks are for actions that the players make. Uh, saves are for actions being made against them. That is the like very quick and dirty way that I think of checks versus saves. Uh, so if they're trying to protect against being surprised, I would I would do like a wisdom save. Although I don't... That's my off-the-top ruling, off-the-top of the dome. I could actually be wrong about that. Um, but... I'm going to say I'm not, unless someone corrects me. <laughs> Get in the comments and correct me if I'm wrong. Everyone back as you instinctively... <laughs> you hear a slight distant clanking of metal and voices. Low kind of conversational voices. Too far people listen at this point. But you guys immediately stop everyone. And you can just see over maybe a good 70, 80 feet from your distance, heading up the path you guys have just begun to skirt around. A small, what looks like a, a, a roving patrol of Duragar. Probably the one. Oh, dude! I okay. I was kind of wrong. Kind of wasn't. It's a passive score. Totally didn't even think about it. Uh, yeah. For surprise, you're supposed to use the uh passive 
perception of the opposing side. Totally makes sense. I love passive scores and I criminally underutilize them. You should totally use passive scores more in your game. Uh, they reward people that invest within skills that like have expertise um, while also keeping the pace of combat up or the pace of everything up because then you don't have to spend time rolling. Uh, passive scores are fantastic. As I go up and down the tunnel. I can, I can ambush them. <gasps> ambush them? Yeah, why don't yeah, we, yeah. why don't we create a distraction and get rid of well, them? Well, okay, but I can, I can be really quiet. I can do, um, hide in plain sight now. So I could, um, How many are there? hide many myself are standing there. Yeah, no one's seen, you just can hear them. No one's gone to check. Oh, can I look? Yes, let's you look. Can. Okay, let's look. <laughs> let's you one. can. All right, so just, just the two of you, or? I how far? How far away are, are we? Are we from them, like in distance? Right now, you're guessing about 80 to 70 feet, but closing fast. Not closing directly on you because they're kind of doing a uh, slightly increased path. They're, they're taking the path that we're not on, right? Correct. So if we hide, they won't find us they won't potentially. Find us. And they can just pass. But I want to hear what they're saying. Okay. So all of you guys. Um. Okay. Yeah. We'll hide. I go ahead and I cast guidance on. On Vex. What is, is that a concentration spot? I'm yeah. Vex. He's don't, Vex. Don't break our, 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 our you look alike. It's understandable. I'm Vex. He's Vex. That will, that will definitely break your other spell. I'll put up your own back. Oh no. Uh, guidance is, I think, criminally underused, but also because it's kind of like bardic inspiration, where it's so useful so much of the time that you almost forget to hand it out. Because it's like you don't want to be hogging up spotlight at the table by constantly being like, I cast guidance on you. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, here's some guidance. Oh, no, here's some guidance for a 1d4, uh, which doesn't feel like a lot, but it definitely is. Um, yeah. Then don't keep well, good spell. Just but... just hey, guidance is concentration. <laughs> no, sorry. You don't have my guidance. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> no guidance. Here. Why don't we yeah. go just uh, up ahead and see? Just a little not. bit ahead and see what we can see. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the two of you kind of work up. Okay. As the rest of you are kind of holding back, the twins kind of slink between the various rock formations and strange jagged spires that are currently peppering this entire underground landscape. You get up to a point where you're maybe 10 feet from the road, and kind of with your backs against the rock, you can begin to see the roving band slowly move around. Um, band? You, uh, the, the band of dirge. Um, you count which one of them is the basis? Roughly twelve to fifteen. Oh, They're the yes. scariest. Armed with hammers, halberds. Um, both of you guys roll perception check right now. All right, let's be real right now. They're acting very scared. Group of nine PCs, or, or sorry, group of eight level nine PCs takes care of a band of fifteen Duragar kind of no problem, like maybe they get initiative fucked and like one of them goes down, but this is not like a real threat. Uh, it'll just like spend some of their resources. Um, I was always, can I get some guidance over here? Yeah, exactly, man. You just, <laughs> it, it's one of those things where it's just like so ever presently useful that it's almost more useful to like describe when you're not using it and just like kind of assume that you always are if you're able to. Perception. Perception check. Specifically with this one. Yeah. 26. 17. All right. You make out that one of them holds no weapons. Instead is uh, Oh, wait. No, I get advantage on perception because I'm in my favorite terrain. There you go. I already perceived it. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can also perceive, right, I suppose. I already perceived um, One of them, uh, one of the Duragar walking alongside is completely bald on top with this uh, extremely long, well uh, sculpted black goatee beard that streams down. Thick black, ro black and red trimmed robes. Uh, carries no weapon and looks extremely dangerous. Then he's super extremely um, warlike. However, as you're listening to the conversation, you specifically being able to uh, understand uh, Undercommon. Yes. Uh, what is he saying? You pick up bits and pieces as they begin to pass by. Kind of hold your breath, hoping nobody notices you. And so far, so good. They begin to walk slowly past the rock you guys are against. You overhear one of them say, oh, Keep your eyes peeled. Uh, that thing is still out there. Another one goes, slaps him and says, 
Horik said it ate a whole scouting party in seconds. Another one goes, ah, listening to Horik was your first mistake. Shut up and keep walking. Good no, foreshadowing, love it. At which point, the same kind of scared one before him says, uh, oh, I mean, if that one went crazy, I can't the other ones crack too. I don't know if I feel safe running alongside any one of that cavern's pits anymore at this rate. Uh, and by that point, they begin to slowly move past. And yeah, very nice foreshadowing. They continue up the path. You guys just traverse down, <gasps> up through the lava tunnels. Oh, oh shit. Good thing I was clearing our footprints. <laughs> it's actually a, it's a win for draw. <laughs> Is it? Did I do something good? <laughs> you guys have like bear tracks and a giant Goliath. <laughs> like <laughs> what? <laughs> what are they? Fried banana. Uh, fried banana. Fried bananas. Toss me one of those. <laughs> Is that from the chat? You're working. You don't have yeah. time to eat. Oh, thank, thank you, chat room. Thank you, chat room. Thank you so much. Why don't you guys, guys get me fried like bananas? <laughs> Next time, sushi. Sushi. Mm -hmm. Cut to last stream when I told you guys never to send me anything. <laughs> no matter how famous I am. Oh. Oh. This is your mystery guy. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my god, that's so good. Mm -hmm. So, the sound of the Durgar walking eventually fades and you feel pretty confident that you're safe to return to the rest of the party. Okay. So we walk back. No. So apparently, number one, big party. We don't want to fight them. If we don't have to. Secondly, there's some weirdo creature that's gotten loose and is very, very bad and it's killed multiple Durgar already. Me. So, wow. right. No that indication of what kind of a creature it was? No, but it might be the thing we already killed. It could have been the thing with the plate that showed up in the camp. I don't know. You will never know where I live. I... <laughs> If I can fucking help it, it is insane how many streamers, content creators, etc. leak. Like, I've, I've said I, I moved to Chicago, but Chicago's a big-ass fucking place. Uh, <laughs> and I could also be being vague. I could be mean, like, Chicago land. Y'all don't know. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. It's crazy. Your one job as a streamer is not to fucking leak. Like, don't leak your credit card. Don't leak your address. Just just don't leak. Just don't have it pulled up on your fucking monitor while you're live. It's insane. Uh I have I I am astonished. Um not to and and I and look, I don't want this to sound like like weird victim blaming if like something bad happens to them after they do leak. Um that's fucked up. And I know a lot of people like find them and dox them and that's a totally separate deal. Um uh, but there are also a lot of people that just like either purposefully or accidentally just leak their shit on stream and it's like come on guys that's your that's your fucking job <laughs> the thing with the plate thing the it's bullet. to press go live and not have your bullet. social on screen oh. it could have been that the first dog. Yeah. regardless we should be very careful traveling seen your sheet, you don't speak mm. we could use that to our advantage we could we could we could scare them off quite easily yeah. mm. okay. alright like yeah. right. I, I can make yeah. sure yeah yeah, Megan. I mean, I think that it's it's hard because I think swatting is kind of always there. It's just if people are talking about it or not. I know um, the uh, there there's a very you know big content creator that I followed that was talking about how he does not like to even talk about swatting and how he got swatted. So he's like, I've been swatted like twice as much as you guys know about um, because when they talk about it on stream it then essentially like gives the swatter what they want. Like it, 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 it like gives them the satisfaction of knowing that they've affected this streamer's life. So it's fucked up. It's so fucked. Um, yeah, I, it, it's, it's, it's really, really terrible. I mean, it gets people killed. People have, people have gotten shot during a swatting, um, because they just didn't realize what was going on and they opened up the door and the, and the cop shot them. Um, and this isn't like a, I don't know, this isn't like an anti, like, whatever. This is not, I don't think anyone is necessarily at fault except for the guy that fucking called in the fake bomb threat to SWAT the streamer. Like, uh, it's just, it's, it's terrible. It's, it's really, it's really horrible. Should we keep moving forward at a very stealthy sort of pace? Work, work up. Certainly. <laughs> at a stealthy pace. You guys push forward, keeping that wide kind of left curve, which adds 
a fair amount of time to your traveling. <laughs> I I don't even know, John. I think I was talking about how uh how chatters uh sent them the fried bananas and I was like, why don't you guys send me fried bananas? And I was like, JK, never send me anything, never figure out where I live. Uh <laughs> as you're being careful and moving at a very, very uh heavy circular arc around the Duragard city. But fried bananas. Hmm, I'm looking for good. doors and stuff as we go. I don't know why. Sure. <laughs> Looking for doors. Well, there's trap door somewhere, right? There are doors. That's in a, looking for that's doors. Good thing. That'll be the fortress, maybe. But Possibly. Yeah, right. Could be farther. No. But, uh, can we see, you know, the molten things that he was talking about? The water, the lava falls? Still mm. too far away. Still too far away. Uh, you guys, are, as you begin to make your way around, you're just starting to get to the point where you can see the front of the fortress. And you can see where the magma fall splits and just kind of coalesces around each side of the So it's almost like a moat? Like, like a blanket waterfall on each side. It does split mm. up at certain points. You can begin to start making out. Does, does the magma... Yeah, it does. does. the magma runoff lead to? Does it just pour out? Does it fill a moat? It's hard to tell from this distance, right. unfortunately. Mm. You have to get closer up to see. See, that's so much fun. I was talking about how, like, the little decision to, like, make there be a magma fall that splits around offers so many interesting possibilities. Like, if it starts to split in certain areas, uh, are some of those just blank do some of them look blank and maybe there's like a smuggling faction of the Duragar that smuggle things in and out of the ember hold is there a servant's exit like there are so many possibilities just with that one little decision that you can think through as the dm and give your players a wide variety of options with it um Next Tuesday, I'll be in, uh, I'll be busy. Got invited by a friend to try drinking and dragons event in Chicago. It's a three hour one shot where I pick a pre created character. Ooh, that sounds fun. That sounds very fun. I'm actually speaking of Chicago. I'm I've been looking at a uh, going to a bar that has uh, or not bar but like a game shop uh, like an LGS that has a consistent campaign, but then they also run some one shots. I it might be the same place. I don't know. Um, but I've been very interested in in playing some some in person D and D again. I've only played online for the past like six years. Uh, been very interested in doing maybe not like a big campaign, but some some in person one shots. There's something different. There's a there's a certain je ne sais quoi of <laughs> of doing it in person. Um, about an hour of travel around the oh, side. Wow. I'm so bored. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> that can be fixed, Leah. <laughs> but we will miss you. Uh, we will still be here on Tuesday, and and there's always the VOD, but we will miss you in chat, John. like that. You... Wow, Percy. <laughs> <laughs> it's at this point... Immediately catching. You know, I will also say, I think that was Scanlan that was shushing. Wow. Yeah. I actually noticed this. I noticed this in the first couple episodes. And then, um, and I, and I noticed the lack of it during episode five is that occasionally Sam will just be like, shh, to like the side conversations when they're talking over Matt about random shit. Um, I have, I've noticed this, which is like, it's not a necessary component of a group, but it it can be helpful to have a little bit of a shusher. Uh, not sure what stores here in Chicago offer it. My first guess would be Alley Cat Comics in Andersonville. Ooh, I'll check it out. I'll, I'll I'm I'm looking around for for some stuff, so I'll, I'll be I'll be around. Maybe we'll meet in person. <laughs> it's at this point, immediately catching your eye. Yes, Vex, uh, one of the nearby. Kind of city inspires is a different color than the rest. The rest are like a deep black kind of glass shiny color. This one is a dull kind of crimson. Mm. We should go towards that one. Wizards, magic. Because it's a different color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what was your first color? I'm still laughing at Percy. What? Just eat your banana. Black Twins obsidian. Will go check it out. This one's banana. red, red. crimson, ruddy. Anyway, the twins are gonna go have a peek. Okay. I'm coming with. Do oh. it. Scanlan comes with. Go ahead and roll stealth check. Oh Scanlan comes <laughs> with. Not my strong Don't suit. fuck it up. No, Scanlan, what'd you do? You dick. Did you? What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> you changed your mind. Wait, wait, I, I, I got, got adva advantage. Don't do I grab, I grab Scanlan and I, and, I, and I kiss him on the cheek and make him say. <gasps> oh! 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 What? 
<laughs> what? <laughs> Wait until you take one for the team. Well, that, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Look, Matt trying to process what the fuck is going on. I... I mean, look, decent effort by by Ashley Johnson, but you cannot you cannot make a call or a play based on a role when the DM hasn't even said the outcome yet. You <laughs> you do not get retconning powers. Farting into Persuasion? Uh, pers Ladies and gentlemen, this is a huge moment. Persuasion wow. against a critical fail? Can, oh, you, can you persuade a critical fail? Can you persuade okay. the DM? Wait, is it a fail? Okay. Fail. So, it was it a, a one? It was a one. It was a one. That was a one face. I will say, Pike, roll a perception check. <gasps> oh, gosh. Okay. D20. Come on, come on, D20. Trying to, yes. trying to give Scanlan an out here. Uh, that's half of the 14? No. No. Yes, 14. <laughs> <laughs> not Un Stop. Unfortunately, Back. you're not quite perceptive enough to notice Scanlan's not quite so quiet walking away as you're distracted by the surroundings and the circumstance locally. Um, you continue up with the twins, uh, absentmindedly <laughs> humming to yourself. Uh, <laughs> the twins being used to your humming, for some reason it doesn't connect. Um, <laughs> You make your way up to this spire, and about 15, 20 feet out, you notice the coloration is different because it is completely coated in what looks like dried blood of some kind. <gasps> oh! And immediately to the right of it, along the ground, <laughs> How nice. currently so your, your vision is obscured by another large kind of, kind of twisted stalagmite. Again, talk about how it smells. It smells rotten, rank, uh, ugh, just, like, just gross, you know, the smells, man. The smells. This is a perfect opportunity. Covered in blood? Come on. The stalactite. Um, but there appears to be an arm and a whole bunch more uh, dried blood across the ground. Stop. Just out of you. Can we stop? Can we stop? You can stop. Can stop. stop. You're an arm? All right. What? What? You're singing. I I'm was singing? I was singing? I didn't even know. It's a force of habit. I'm, I'm going to look. I'm going to see if I can see anything in the area that has done this recently. Is the arm attached to whatever? Let's make did an investigation it? check. Investigation check. Is the arm part of a dead? See, thing, okay. Oh, it? beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This is why I've said before that one of my like DM pet peeves is players asking to make a roll. Um, and in this case, he just said, and and Liam has been an offender of this before, uh, but he just said, I want to take a look around to see what did it. Could have easily assumed it was going to be perception. Maybe even insight. Probably not, but maybe. Uh, but instead, he just leaves the option, leaves the question to Matt, and Matt says investigation, which maybe Liam wouldn't have thought of if he had been the first one initiating. Um, so I'm just putting it out there, just reminding. I do also like it when DMs offer options, um, and you know, it maybe the additional information that they get changes based on the option that they select. That's also cool. But it's on the ground. Good for Lee. I'm pretty sure whatever it is. Seven. Can I check it out as well? Make, you I can also attempt to make an investigation. Well. Loot the arm. There you go. Wait, I'm doing advantage too, just in case. Okay, that one's better. You get advantage on No, I got it because I'm fucking in my favorite terrain. <laughs> 21. Is favorite terrain like all wisdom checks? Or is that, what? Okay. Uh, uh, the, the state of the blood that you see around seems to indicate that this has transpired over some time. Uh, you're guessing probably within a few days, if not a week, since this right. happened. I'm picking up one of the arms to bring back okay. the group. So as you walk up... It, okay. She's, she's taken some liberties there. It is when you make an intelligence or wisdom check related to your terrain. It's not just all the checks you make while in your terrain. And also, it's not advantage, it's your prof bonus is doubled? That's kind of interesting. I actually didn't know that. Uh, either way, not... Oh, wait, no, wait, that's favored. And then you have advantage on survival checks to track... Fa oh, my gosh. Uh, the base 5e ranger, get it out of here. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Up towards the arm to grab it, you have more of a view of what's happened. And what you see before you... <laughs> uh, are definitely remnants of some battle 
long past. Uh, they're against these rocky formations. There's dried, dried blood everywhere. No this, this terrible bloodbath, whatever this this event was, it was probably a horrible thing to to see. There are pieces of Duragar flung about, and I say pieces. I mean, you can't. The only reason you know Duragar there is because occasionally you see part of a head or part of a foot, and you recognize the ashy part skin the from the areas that aren't currently caked with its own gore. Um, mm-hmm. uh, from what you can tell, uh, because of your in- investigation check, um, I feel like the music is too the nice. The remains this needs are to be like torn apart by no blades. There's no cuts. There's no clean. Uh, Wounds, they're either pulled apart by force, like arms and limbs were wrenched from the body just out of sheer power, or there appears to be some sort of gnawings and chewing, like toothy fangs, sharp teeth have partially eaten portions of these bodies. This is the work okay. of a beaver. Yes, definitely. A web beaver. I think it's suicide. <laughs> Should we? I mean, based on based what? on oh. tracking and everything and insight, can I can we tell if that creature is anywhere nearby? I think it might be foul play, actually. From what you can tell, well, this was uh, happened in the past. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's happened there? quite some time ago. You're there. I'm right there, singing. Looking at the tracks, you can see Duragar feet. You can see other creatures that kind of resemble those hook horrors that you uh, you encountered earlier from the lava pool. However, there's a series of tracks that you haven't seen. Where there's there's very erratic. Footsteps that look human, uh, human size, but they seem to be placed randomly, like one foot here, one foot here, one foot here. <gasps> it's that um, big creature that it was like one of those things that the thing put together. And you like, see oh, what looks like yeah, yeah. strange strikes of the sand, like something had been dragged very quickly in a very localized spot, scattered all about. It's a human centipede. It's what just, is this? Very, it's like a gibbering mouther? Like, what are we talking A very strange about? pattern that you you can't really grasp it's, what had this creature would make it. And it's, it seems like it was here recently or a while ago? Um, from the best you can tell, the last time it was here was about two or three days ago to feast on more of the remains. Like human it, should human we footprints? Give, should we go human size? I'm interested. Size. I'm intrigued we sh- at we could what this try could to be. set a trap, or we could look and see if we can loot anything, or we can... Shiny disease. Do not loot. loot. Does it look like anything shiny loot. in the edge? Um, Don't any, anything shiny. Shiny disease. Stop it. You... <laughs> Matt has described the scene of a massacre, and you... Look, honestly, if you really wanted to see what had done this, and you want to set up an ambush, that's one thing. You should probably just run the other way. Uh, But you're going to go around and just start digging through... What? They don't even have pockets. They're ripped apart. There are parts of head. You can barely tell that these are Duragar. Yeah, and you find 12 GP. Exactly, Richard. Son of a Semblance of armor that belong to any of these individuals is in such tatters that it is unusable. Yeah. Um, do not say you find... You do manage to find no. some of the body parts, uh, a couple of blood soaked gold coins. Fuck person. you, okay. Matt Mercer. Um, <laughs> so one of them contains know. a handful of gems. Ooh. <laughs> gems. So, yes. Yeah, <gasps> so uh, until you get a chance to uh, <laughs> phrase, phrase, phrase them. Nope. No, I don't right. think we I want to tangle with this. I'm I'm we trying to... Okay, they're just, they're just got this, okay. This is what I mean by Matt does not keep the pressure on. He describes this. I describe. I diagnose you with Skyrim. Yeah. Uh, I di- I diagnose you with being able to pause while you're in your inventory. Apparently, um, because this is insane. This is like he describes this very threatening camp with these crazy mind flayers and all of these Duragar, and and then they get in and they have this intense battle. And then he stops the pacing in its tracks, kicks them right out of the scene in their minds so that they can look at their little pieces of paper with their little gems. Ridiculous. He, he, he gets this really fun chase scene of like all of the Duragar and they're going out of the camp and Clarota's injured and I think uh, one of them was downed. And then they get to the fork and they spend 10 minutes arguing about it and he doesn't talk about how any of them are still trying to get them. Uh, 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 you just spend all of this time describing this 
terrible, emotionally impactful scene of this, this blood and gore and horror. And also there's uh, 12 gold and some gems that you can get appraised later. Come on, dude. <laughs> Keep the pressure on. Like, yeah, you want to loot their bodies? You find pieces of their comrades in their pockets that have been accidentally placed there when they were flung around by the horror that did this. That could still be around, mind you. <laughs> like, dude, why do these Duragar 12 wheels of cheese are? Right. <laughs> uh, there is no war. Yeah, apparently. I mean, that was literally the uh, the group that walked by the band one of them was like, oh, I heard it like these like Kavarn pets were tearing apart other groups. And the guy was like, nah, you must have misheard. There is no war in bossing, say. Prove. Let's yeah, just keep I'm trucking. really bad at stealthing. We should Come go. on. <laughs> <laughs> we should leave. I can't also control singing to myself. Oh, we should right? go. Was I doing that? It's force of habit. I don't. <laughs> it's like breathing. Yeah, we're gonna go back to the group. I'm gonna bring yeah. my, the arm. I'll uh, take out the cascabel and pull a little. Uh, and you and you hear how casual they are now. They th the entire table was was silent and sick and like uh, like 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 feeling terrible about this situation. And now they're like, oh yeah, I guess we'll go back to the group. Oh, yeah, sure, whatever. Because they stopped the fucking scene in its tracks to look in their inventories. Terrible. Despicable. I'm bored too, Travis. Because they got shiny disease. Having been underground for what probably amounts now to about four or five days, that little taste of yellow on your lips is a very welcoming and very refreshing uh, sensation. Uh, oh, shit. delicious. Uh, okay. Oh no, I'm drunk. Just <laughs> 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 that was fast. <laughs> uh, when we get back Just to the group, oh, I'm going to toss the arm to Grog. Uh, you instinctively reach up and catch it. And you look down and see what looks like a Durgar arm that has been very heavily mangled. Oh, thanks for the head. That's a back. <laughs> 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 back uh, well, that was clever. No guys. negative anything. That was a good job. <laughs> <laughs> I considered it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First, um, that was a good joke. So there's some kind of um, centipede uh, human creepy creature. Yeah, at the crime scene of like a massacre. This wasn't like, oh, one Duragar body. This is like bodies ripped apart and flung around and some unhuman abomination did all of it. And there's like, hmm, crazy. Oh, I wonder what they have in their pockets. Uh, that's killed <laughs> Ridiculous. a lot of things and we should probably avoid <laughs> yeah. that at all costs. All right. I would agree with that. If we have to, we will, but... We Can we avoid that and still head left of the keep? Wait, we didn't, you haven't we seen didn't the make it into the, uh, into the, was there a structure that we could have That's entered? That's where we're, we're heading, we're heading towards that structure. Okay, okay. But I mean, where we just were, the magma Where you just were? No, there's just all these giant, like, rocky spires okay. just sitting out of the ground. Okay, coated in a dry They don't have doors in them. Like there were no doors. Oh, okay, guys. Okay. I'm looking for a door. Yeah. No yeah. doors. Yeah. It appears like there, there, there was some, into us. at one point in time, some very intense seismic activity in this area that created this cavern. Okay. And whatever is the source of a lot of this perpetually flowing molten rock. Um, so yeah, the, that's why the entire terrain here is so dangerous and, and uninviting is because of the sheer force that went into it, it, its creation. Okay. So we should just keep freaking being careful and keep going towards the very Okay, thing. let's go. Just keep trucking on. Pike, yeah. I, f I have this weird feeling like you wanted to make out with me. Is that, <laughs> is that something that happened well, in my dream? Well, you just, you know, you weren't paying attention. Really? And that makes I you want to make out with him? No, I think you were you were moving along to try to go stealth, and sometimes you should just stay put and see what happens. Well <laughs> <laughs> <No> said, Cleric. <laughs> that, was, that was the most adorable diss in his <laughs> <laughs> uh, Get invited. It's all right, Scanlan. We'll go pay for it later. <laughs> <laughs> A small hit to Scanlan's oh morale. <laughs> <laughs> the party marches on. Yeah. You lose an inspiration. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That is interesting. They just brought up uh, like you lose an inspiration die. They have not really utilized inspiration at all, which I'm sort of surprised by. I mean, maybe it's hard with this many players, um, but inspiration is something I really like using. Sometimes I'm better or worse at remembering it. 
Um, but inspiration, like rewarding people for good and consistent role playing um, by giving them, you know, advantage whenever you want it, I think is fantastic. I, I really, really love awarding inspiration. Twins, Twins okay. in front, here we go. Let's right. keep going. Twins in front, you guys continue to push forward. Um, for the sake of the length of this journey, I'm going to have the party go ahead and roll a communal stealth check once more. All right. Uh, I still have I still have passed without trace. Oh, for the love of God! Which gap is everyone a plus ten? Yep. Oh, really? Yes. Don't bang the guns together. Uh, and see, this is why. So there, there's like a whole concept of like um, the action economy, right? In in D and D, and so uh, this general concept means that the more combatants you have, even if the sides are technically balanced. Which by that I mean that generally one PC level is equivalent uh, to one fourth CR, right? So a a level nine is a two and one fourth CR, technically. Um, that's that's the general conversion rate. However, if you have equivalent CR, whichever side with more um, bodies will generally win, uh, and then that's because of a lot of reasons, but mainly the action economy. Um, there's another problem with like scaling power. The more combatants you have, the better AOE abilities become. Something like Pass Without Trace in a four-person party is very good. Do not get me wrong. It's very good. But it's not that much better. However, Pass Without Trace being able to apply this static bonus to seven other people, I mean eight total, just get just gets loony. It, it just gets loony with how beneficial that spell becomes. Uh, and that is why like massive parties can kind of fundamentally unbalance some things, and you need to keep that in mind when you're DMing, is that like even a five person party can like can be kind of weird and like combats that seem balanced turn out not to be. And when you start going six, seven, eight, you start getting into situations where like features that are not that bad at fourth at, at, in a four person party become ludicrously powerful, uh, in an eight person party. <laughs> um, so it's just, I'm not saying that you can't run with eight people, but these are things you have to keep in mind. Anything that can basically hit multiple people just like in an area and it's like a buff or it's a boon of some kind becomes exponentially more powerful the more people there are because you can start stacking those benefits. Uh, yeah, that happens too. 24. Because mm -hmm. you have eight different sources of different distinct features. Uh, so you're more likely to have these big area features, yada, yada. I'll stack 19. Up. We all have plus 10? And this yes. is plus 10. Yes. I rolled a one. Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> I quickly kissed failure. Percy. Percy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know. I thought it might help. Oh. <laughs> He's the tongue scan. Uh, Twenty. In this economy, I agree. I agree. Who can have action? And actually, with that <laughs> lovely segue, uh, it has been an hour. As anyone knows, I take bathroom breaks <laughs> when I reach the hour marks uh, in these. So I'm gonna go to the bathroom. As always, hydrate or dehydrate. Drink water. It's so fucking good for you. Uh, don't just drink soda all day like I used to. Uh, and I will see you guys in a sec. Still here? I don't think he's still here. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Oh my gosh, he's gone. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, um, well, uh, Jack Megaphone Man is gone. I am in charge of the stream now. He doesn't know I'm here. Oh, ooh. oh what do I say? What do I do? I don't even know. Um, <clears throat> uh, I, I did not think this through. Who's goofing? It's me. It's Dice Brain. It's Nico Dice Brain. You don't know me? 
You know me. <laughs> How are you guys liking Critical Role so far? Have you guys been enjoying it? The first few episodes are rough, aren't they, huh? I hope I hope you guys have been treating Jack well. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, you could probably skip the first few episodes of Critical Role, but I mean, you could learn from them. There's stuff you can learn from. I like the insights Jack has. Like, I didn't really think about how Matt just doesn't really put the uh, put the pressure on. The agency isn't really there with Matt Matt Mercer. Um, uh, who, who's your guy's favorite character in Vox Machina? We'll ask that question. Put in chat right now who your favorite Vox Machina character is. I know what mine is. I'll share it with you. Oh, is he coming back? I've already seen campaign one, two, three. Vex is great. Love Vex. Uh, Jester. Oh, a lot of people like the Laura Bailey characters. Laura Bailey. Laura Bailey's pretty consistent with her characters. I think I don't know he's coming back. No one told no one tell him that I was here, okay? No one narc on me. What? Hey. Oh hey, how's how's it going? Did you take a good piss? How was your piss? How was the 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 force, the stream? You're still muted on the stream. <laughs> Hearing your side of this. They're only me talking about your good piss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How was the pressure? The pressure? I mean Yeah, like I... the, the the PSI of the piss. <laughs> I mean, I try to get through it quick. I gotta come back, and give the people what they want, give people the content that they deserve. I was entertaining the chat um, while you were gone. <laughs> I appreciate it. You saw me leave, and you were like, "This is my opportunity." <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I thought. Uh, I had no, <laughs> I had no plan whatsoever. Oh my! You <laughs> just saw an opportunity, and I took it. <laughs> And I was I was linking out to your stream early. I was like, ooh, Nico. I told people to go to your stream. I didn't oh, intend to stream goodness. while you were streaming. Oh no, that's all good. All good. I was I was literally like, I know some people like to have like two streams up at the same time, and I was like, if you're one of those freaks. Well, those people are sociopaths, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, John is an elusive man, so I'd stream while he's available. That's true. That's fair. John Sand himself. John Sand the Sand Man. The Sand um, Man. And I like the insights you have about Matt D. Mercer, by the way. I feel like in the him not putting a lot of emphasis on them like being in a dungeon surrounded by enemies, that's a pretty good... Yeah. I didn't notice that on my first watch through. I think at oh, this yeah. point I was pretty zoned out while watching Critical Role. <laughs> I think I, I was hearing the episode, was not listening to it. <laughs> I could hear them talking. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I mean, especially, you know, if you were watching them like really quick back to back. I took a big break between five and six, and five yeah. was a five oh, was, yeah, a was a slog. slog. Um yeah. but now we're through five and we're we're here to six, and this one is going much, much faster, much um there's a lot there's a lot more points of interest. I think that was my big Mm -hmm. One of my big problems with episode five is there were so few points of interest <laughs> during yeah. it. It was just like more hallway. Uh... <laughs> I think it's. I just think it's crazy how like they, they had a crime scene, like a mat, like a <laughs> gruesome murder with body yeah. parts strewn about, <laughs> and it was like, what did they have on them? I'm gonna take a drink. <laughs> Can I can I loot the bodies? Yeah, man. At I'm least... gonna we we're, we're gonna have a flirty little back and forth surrounded by carcasses and blood. At least most of them weren't there. So like Grog was bored. You know he didn't know about the murder. <laughs> at least we can. We yeah. Can do that, but yeah, it's 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 crazy. Their their pace breaking is is really mm -hmm. tough. <laughs> okay, um, you enjoy the rest of the episode. I'm gonna go back to listening while playing Minecraft. Fair enough. Have fun with Minecraft. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> uh, Mr. Dice, Mr. Brain, Mr. Nico, everybody. Uh, 
Vox Machina are big time murder hoboish in early C1. Fair enough, man. I've made a whole statement on how I think that uh, D and D implicitly encourages murder hoboing uh, through the things that the system itself incentivizes. Um, and to really give like the TLDR of that is that the only um, there are only two uh, ways that are explicitly given to level up in D and D, which is milestone or XP, and if you do XP, it says that you can get XP from other things, but it doesn't give you any guidance on how much XP to give for challenges other than combat. You know, let's not even talk about the fact that one of the three core books is a book full of stat blocks for combat and pretty much nothing else, i.e. Monster Manual. Um, so that kind of takes care of the murdering part of murder hoboing. Uh, really encourages violence, and most of your class features are violence-oriented, uh, or combat-oriented, I should say. Um, and then the hoboing part, it's dungeons and dragons. Dungeons. We talk about dungeon design here uh, a lot. Like, the entire concept of a dungeon is that you clear it out, you take all the shit, and then you leave, and you pretty much never come back. Like, at least that's, like, kind of the base case, right? I mean, even if you look towards earlier editions, that used to literally be the thing, is you would get experience for how much treasure you brought out of the dungeon, and you would never go back to that dungeon, right? So that's the that's the hobo part, is you have to move around and find new and interesting uh, dungeons, and therefore, hoboing. If you compare that to something like, I don't know, uh, Blades in the Dark. I love talking about Bitty on this stream. You compare that to Bit D, uh, you have a fucking hideout. You have like a lair. You have uh, relationships with factions that are very important. Like the entire setting is meticulously documented in the core book with this very fleshed out city. Uh, you are not encouraged to hobo at all in Blades in the Dark. And guess what? Most people don't. <laughs> so, I mean, there there is something about, like, it's not just the player's fault that they murder hobo. There is something about... Dungeons and Dragons that really encourages that behavior, if you ask me. Uh, technically, VM have a base of operations, so not exactly hobos. The fact that we are six episodes, uh, what would that be? Three, six, 18 hours in, never heard of their base of operations. <laughs> oh, are you referring to... They were talking about like right before they went live. I think I heard this in the Q&A. That they have, they have like a keep with hirelings added and shit, hasn't come up. <laughs> and look, I'm all for long dungeon crawls, but this is still kind of the the vibe of D and D as a system. Like D and D as a system involves ranging out and going and finding new and interesting dungeons to clear and people to slaughter. I mean, that's that's really the, the core implications. Yes, you can get around that. You can have a dungeon that respawns loot. Uh, or you can run a campaign that is just within one city and create new and interesting dungeons and have dungeons, like, kind of spawn or be, like, you know, kind of naturally formed from the interactions of citizens. All of that's fine. You're essentially homebrewing all of that, right? Like, like this is, this is, these are not things that are given to you in the base system. The base system totally encourages hoboing. Um, and lots and lots of murder. Uh, Castle Grayskull TM. Oh, right, that's the one that's, like, behind them in the, uh, in the shot. I think it, it eventually comes in, like, over here or something. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, anyways... We will go back to it. Sorry for my for my D and D encourages murder hoboing rant, but I'm gonna hawk on that point of like you know that's just part of D and D, and if you want them to not murder hobo, you need to think about the game that you are presenting them, uh, and why they could be encouraged to not murder hobo. Three. Okay. <laughs> I think that murder hoboing in most cases, this is the blanket statement I'll make. I think in most cases, murder hoboing is due to the DM, not the players. That's my fucking hot take of the stream is that the vast majority of the time it is the DM's fault if the players are murder hoboing. Come at me in the comments. <laughs>
Bubble gum? <laughs> Three. <gasps> I have a habit. You have like plus ten? Oh, the I get two plus yes, ten. Yes, yes. Thirteen. All right, so there's three failures. <laughs> Thirty two. Okay, good. Uh, yeah. More than half of you guys succeeded. That uh, was the uh, A one is two two failures. So uh, one is two failures. A one is considered two failures oh for, for this challenge. Uh, All right. So pushing forward, now you you manage to stop Percy and 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 find out the root of this audience problem. Um, <laughs> pushing forward, you manage to make your way about a quarter mile on the outskirts of this. Uh, cluster of buildings curving far left. You're just managing to keep out of the city proper and move straight towards the very back wall of this cavern, which is buttressed against what this fortress is built against. So you're kind of. I will also add a a, a, a very uh, small asterisk. Murder hoboing isn't always bad. Like we're talking about how they're being a little murder hoboy. Um, like that's not that's not an explicitly like bad thing. It can work for certain campaigns. It can work for certain arcs. Like, if you are okay with how the players are playing, but some people would call them murder hobos, but everyone at the table is cool with it, fuck it, who cares? Murder and hobo, go for it. Circumventing the city to go straight to this fortress. Um, uh, as you're moving about a quarter mile from the stronghold, uh, Vex, you pick up a strange person standing maybe about 50, 60 feet ahead of you. Just a person? Just a person. Just chilling? Like. <coughs> Are they? Okay. Wait, you pick up. Oh, is he meaning like through her? Oh, through her like tracking mental radar, because I guess it's humanoids. That would make sense why she could sense out the Derugar. Um, interesting. Okay. Uh, Brantley Mulligan touches on this baked in nature of D and D in uh, an episode or in ep. God, why is this is this emoticon in the way? Uh, in ep one of D twenty fantasy high, it's great. Hell yeah! <laughs> I mean, fuck yeah! Uh, I actually think I remember that. Is it when uh, Lou's dad is is talking to his character to um, uh, was it Fabian? I watched the first half of Fantasy High, and I'm actually so sad that I did. I might still watch it on stream no matter what, because it's just a great fucking show. Uh, and maybe I'll, like, you know, I can finish it out on stream. Um, but I did watch the first half of it. Uh, and it's it's literally the most of any actual play I've ever watched, uh, because Brennan's sick as hell. Uh, and, and a lot of the characters are really, a lot of the players and the characters are really great. I would equate like Lou to Travis. I, I loved Lou. I love Travis. To me, they have like a similar energy. Uh, just, just love it. Um, no, it's a speech by, oh, by Eggfort. That's right. Yeah, he has the whole thing about how they'll party up and they'll go out and they'll find new and interesting people to murder. That's right. I remember John. Oh man, that's a that's a great show. <laughs> <laughs> can they see us? Is it the way they can see us? You take a moment, kind of keeping an eye out, and the person isn't moving. Oh, no. Just standing right there. So, there's a person standing right there. What? You, what? what? A person. He's just standing there. It's too Is dark to make like, any details, unfortunately. Nothing. He's just standing could there. Could be good, could be bad. We have no idea. Can, I, can I see him now that he's she's pointed him. him out to me? You, you can see it. Him him there is a, a, a humanoid standing on its own. He doesn't uh, seem to be moving, though. Maybe, maybe it's, it's a, a statue. Yeah, that's what I mean. A statue. Oh, I'm going to go check it out? What? No, <laughs> I can don't. Can you go invisible? Yes, I can go, go invisible. Go invisible and check it out. Uh, I polymorph and... Um, Morph and turn into a fly, and I buzz over to him. Nice. Oh yay! All Good right, job, no nuts. That is probably stealth. All right, than just so. I don't know if he's magic. Who's gonna know? It's all right. I've got magic too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you approach this individual and notice it is unmoving and is of a singular solid color. Uh, what looks to be uh, what is an illithid or mind flayer is currently locked in some sort of a reactionary position, but is completely turned to stone. Oh, no. oh Like a Medusa shit. type of a thing? Well, we, we faced like basilisks that. once, and they did this we to... Got, we got a lot of things that can do this, actually. Yes. We do yes. have basilisk eggs in the bag of holding. Yeah, we got eight of them. Okay, maybe we should crack one on the statue guy. I buzz back to the group. <laughs> maybe you should. <laughs> 
I what kind of oh, it's fuck coming. with Tiberius's ear a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and then I turn I turn back. Turn back. <laughs> what would you see? What was it? Oh, a crazy statue of a crazy elephant. Um, can, we, can we look I mean, at like, Clarota yeah, cl- and say, do you know anything about this? Clarota kind of thinks for a second and goes, as far as I've noticed, voice. Ooh, that's that's a cool Kavarn creation, like some sort of abomination basilisk. Because, you know, basilisk have all those, or basilisk, whatever. Basilisk, basilisk, I don't know. Anna, Anna. I say Anna, basilisk. Ah. Uh, but. You know, basilisk have all of those fucking legs, right? And so you have like a an abomination basilisk that instead of you know the normal maybe like three toed or whatever like normal basilisk legs and feet look like, it's like got stitched on fucking like humanoid legs, and they're all on at like weird and odd angles, and that's why the shit was so trippy. That could be it. These patrols do could be on to something. It's a creature that has a skeleton. Oh. It's generally used Never mind. as a threatening device or a guardian amongst the city. Oh, so the Dura Guard have bass have this. It's like they're pets. Uh, a trained beast. Why do you suppose they used to have done one of their own? I can only imagine maybe this transpired before the Union. Right. And it's left as a warning. So it's a Dorgar pet. Do we remember how to take care of basilisks? Like, do we not look at them? Is that how they don't? Don't look at them. Don't look them in the eye? Or don't yes, look at their face? A, it's a vision face. Yes. yes. I it's yes? Vision face. Okay. This could be a uh, nature check. Okay, this is a bit nitpicky. But we just had, like like three episodes ago, we just had an enemy you can't look at. <laughs> like we were just tossing around Umber Hulks, and now it's it's another one that we can't, I mean, it's not that bad. Like I said, it's a nitpick, but there are so many cool monsters, man. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> Double check, anyone who wishes to make uh, that. I'll do that. Me too. <laughs> 23, natural 20. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, never mind. He's got yeah. it. Good. Let me stop there. Yay. Go ahead and dunk on everybody. Natural 20. All right, so. So, yeah. Uh, essentially, it is a sight based circumstance. It's entirely visual. Uh, they have to make, uh, they have to catch your gaze, and then that is how they can turn you into stone. Otherwise, as long as you don't catch their gaze, you'll be fine. All right. All right. It's a good thing we've all been so watching dead. Look at them in the yes. eyes. <laughs> Very helpful. Yes. All right. Let's go. Poor basilisk. We're going. We're going on. Yeah. Yeah. Moving yeah. on. Okay. Let's yeah. keep going. As you guys push forward, uh, look, Clarota lags behind a little bit to inspect the statue and just kind of looks it over for a second. Did you know him? Dave. He takes a moment to look over and you can see his eyes kind of close slightly for a second. I we've met uh, not the kindest of my people on earth, nevertheless. Is kindness is kindness a thing that illithids value? That seems like praise. If I understand Illithid morality correctly, not being kind seems like a good thing. No? Maybe? Is Clarota just fucked in the head because he's been out of Illithid society for so long? I'm still convinced that they're going to go through all this Emberhold Duragar bullshit, and then they're going to get to the Mind Flayer city free Kavar, or you know free them from Kavarn and they're going to be like thanks also give us your brains and it's going to be like an escape sequence um i'm still fairly convinced cuz i do not think the other mind flayers are as like down to work with the lessers like <laughs> like clarota is and it's only because clarota himself was like an outcast from their society this pass i would like to maybe Release him from this stony prison. So you know how to do that? I know not, but it can be done, I 
have seen it. Didn't we do that? Mm. Yes. Didn't we have to do that? We, have a we no, sprinkled we some of its blood on your eyes, if I remember correctly. Yes. I didn't. I did discern. You did. You yes. Did. I was very. Yes, that's I was very sad. Use the blood of the creature. Yeah, yeah there is. There is essentially there is a, a liquid that can be distilled from the mass massive blood. Okay. Um, we don't have any more of that. Okay. Even that. Dragon, dragon blood for um, fucking days. Should we uh, move, move the statue off to a safe place on the side or anything? It's, it's, it's fine. Let's just keep going. It's, yeah. it's been there for a while. It's yeah. not giving anybody any indication. It's got bat poo on it. Let's keep going. Okay. Okay. As you guys press forward, about another 20 or so minutes, you now have a much better view of the left side of Emberhold mm -hmm. proper. And you can see the large magma fall that is pouring over the top of the fortress's second story Ooh. and completely encompasses that oh, side. It splits shit. and divides towards the center. The music. Uh, a larger fall towards the front of the fortress and a thinner one towards the very back. Yeah, let's go towards the All right, creeping, yeah. creeping back. Creepy, creepy, creepy towards the thin Creeps one. Creeps are creeping. Okay. We're stealth still? Or? Yeah, we're all stealth. stealth. Yeah, you guys are all stealth still. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're 26. Okay. We don't need to check it again. You didn't tell us to. Okay. Well, I said I wanted to go back in the ah. <laughs> so, so you move ahead, the rest of the group, head to the front of, of this screen, and you can see the smooth wall with molten rock pouring down the side. You can see where portions of the stone have kind of been uh, gradually worn and melted by just the, the contact, and then built upon with more and more uh, cooled rock. It's this very kind of weird, uh, clustered framing of cooled rock around this fall. Um, you see no doorway as the actual magma is pressing directly against the side of the stronghold. Sure, I want to see don't. if I can um, tell if anything. I know this all looks natural, but perhaps something is is fashioned to look such. I want to see if I can figure that out. Okay, go ahead and make an investigation. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. Eighteen. Eighteen. Best that you can find looking around. <laughs> You cannot see anything before you, any sort of mechanism, any sort of any button, any sort of lever or additional doorway. It's just a solid wall with the two magma flows. Right. Can I, I double back oh. to the underdog expert and bring Right, right, right. Can system. I come up and look and see if I can um, see person. any tracking, um, if there's any footprints around a certain area around see this? See if you can find a false door or something. Yeah. All right, go make an investigate check. Do it. Wait, is it, I thought it was behind. Nope. It's okay, no, 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 I get an advantage. It was a one. Shush. All right, that's not a one. Is it an <laughs> investigation? Yes. 22. Okay. Doesn't get advantage, by the way, but that's neither here nor there. Um, I, Yeah, I'm not I'm not talking a lot because I'm... I'm just... I'm, I'm so interested. I'm trying to hold back my, like, gut instincts about this because... I want to see how the entrance into this is slowly revealed uh, because that's that's part of the fun of dungeon exploration, especially when it comes to secret doors and such. Um, so I'm, I'm really, I'm really curious. So yeah, sorry if I'm not talking as much. <laughs> Looking at this uh, side of this fortress, you can see what amounts to a very, very slight raise in the smooth flow of the magma. It seems to pour down most of the stronghold and then just slightly bulge out. And then it pulls, and you can now have you better, better close so you can see where it runs off to. It continues into a stream following the edge of the giant cavern wall that's curving down and to the left into a far deeper uh, cavern. You can see the entire cavern almost like a giant U. Uh, it's, it's open and the entire thing kind of banks around it and goes deeper still. You guys have made it to the far back wall. Ah, the chicken has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Metaphorically. Metaphorically yeah. and... and actually. But yeah, uh, from what you can see, there is a slight raise beneath the magma. Okay. <clears throat> is it, does it look like it's safe to bring everybody up here, or does it seem like anything's around that can see us? Uh, Anything looking from above? Or? You glance up and you can see there are two Durgar perched up on the edge oh, of the first floor, right on the parapet, you can see there's all these jagged kind of obsidian stone, almost teeth sticking out of the very top edge of the wall. Um, and you see the patrols just walking, keeping an eye out. They have crossbows on their arms. A couple other just have javelins at the side. 
Thank you. And they're just doing slow patrols. Love it. We need to, uh, grab some double nice. to we need super, to super 007 super. sniper them out. Yeah. Oh my god, I wish I had chicken. <laughs> Not, I mean, just, just in general. Oh, that looks fucking good. Yeah. I can handle this, I think. You can? I think I can get us into that trap door. I, Do you have something I, I that think can pull right. it towards you? No, no, no. Can you redirect the magma flow around that bulge with your, uh, can't you move rocks? Or? I can. So you could create a, like a little lip for it to go around. I was thinking I could either that's not a bad idea, or I could. It's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking. Yeah, I was thinking like like a like a slanted like a diagonal wall of stone almost might be able to redirect. There's a lot of interesting things that can be that can be done here, and I'm ah again, again it's you know it's simple stuff like fucking adding the magma flow and then just following that thread um i am interested to see if they ever explain why this trap door is here right because when i was describing and 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 keep this in mind this is how i world build this is how i dungeon build um and i am am personally very fond of it uh is that everything should have a reason nothing should be there because it's a dungeon that Dungeons and Dragons players will be playing through. Um, that's just not how I, that's, that's not how I play. Uh, and there's actually, there's a very good, um, d a descriptor for this sort of phenomenon, uh, that's used a lot in literature, uh, especially, uh, in regards to, um, to, to mysteries, uh, talking about Watsonian and Doyleist reasoning. And uh, I think Watson probably strikes a lot of your noggins. Uh, that is Sherlock Holmes's partner. Uh, and Arthur Conan Doyle is the writer of the book, Sherlock Holmes. Um, so whenever things happen in Sherlock Holmes, there are Doyleist reasons. There are reasons that those things happen because the author, Arthur Conan Doyle, wanted them to happen. There are reasons that he wanted those events to occur for the plot. Now, they're also, for good plots and for good stories and narratives, there also have to be Watsonian reasons. There have to be reasons that Sherlock can turn to Watson when Watson's like, Sherlock, why did you do that? He, Sherlock has to be able to turn to Watson and say, Watson, X, Y, and Z is why I did that. And it has to make sense. Um, the door is there because chat in my live stream voted for it, which is why the fucking voting for monsters is terrible. Um, or it's either terrible or just involves so much extra work, which sucks. Um, but hey, you're Richard, you're getting, you're, you're hitting it. Uh, it's like, I'm, I'm very, so like, I know the Doyleist reason, right? I know the authorial reason that this, trapdoor exists behind the lava flow right it's there because it's a cool secret entrance that they will then have to use resources to access that's the doyleist reason but what could the watsonian reason be like uh, if if there are two duragar that are on the inside and they see this trap door and one duragar says to the other hey man why is that trap door there what the fuck is the other one gonna say? It leads out into lava. Duragar don't have like special lava protection. Like, uh, I don't know. I'm I'm very I'm very interested as to the Watsonian reasoning for this. Um, and when I talked about how I build my dungeons, all of it is like Watsonian at its core. Of like, I add this feature. And then I look at that feature's effects on the world and change the world as I think Watsonially it would be changed because of the addition that I made with this like brand new feature. It's like, okay, this brand new feature because of the inhabitants of the world would have X, Y, and Z effects. Um, so it's all like a Watsonian base. And that's how I especially build dungeons. Uh, and then occasionally you need certain things, right? You need like maybe an artifact or, or like a quest item or an NPC. You, you 
Doyleist, like like the Doyleist reasoning is like that NPC needs to be in the castle. So that is like the you just adding them in, and then you spread out with the Watsonian reasoning of like, okay, because they're there, this is happening and that's happening, and you know if they're here and not there, then these other Fallout features occur. Um, so I really encourage you when you're thinking about your dungeons and your landscapes to really think through like in world why the fuck is there a trap door there. You, the, you, the really common complaint with Skyrim is that every single fucking dungeon has a weird hidden door mechanism to the final chamber that like, why is it there? It's a straight line. And then there's a trap door out to the exit. Why? There's no Watsonian reason. There are only Doyleist reasons in that they don't want the protagonist to have to backtrack all the way out. That's it. <laughs> Teamwork. Uh, or I could, or I was thinking I could cool off the magma mm. and like we could break it. Oh yeah, maybe you can but move then it away and then cool it. That sounds kind of noisy. Well. First, we got to take care of the guys on the on the roof. Yeah, are are they back with us? Are they still stealthing in front? Are we? Uh, they're still stealthing in front, and they've. Oh. You guys, you came back to the group. Yeah, yeah, I guess we came back to the group and told them about what's going on. Okay, we can. Me and Pike can take out the guys on the on the roof. Oh yeah. really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, but he's got sneak attack. Yeah, but yeah, I, I'm thinking that the two hundred feet up. But we could bird out and drop. Me. Yeah, if Keyleth can bird up, or you can go up on a flying conference. I can take Pike, and we can do it. Alright, are oh they not? God. Are they not able to be shot out? Just can you not? I can, them? I can try to arrow them out too. Get a hit or two, but the I'm chance that she could take them both out at once. Maybe you should go up and I'll arrow one. And you... Won't you let the? I'm just afraid if you go up there that you're gonna alarm yourself to other people. Sounds good, John. Have fun. Is the, is the lava flow making making noise? Uh, very, very subtle, like pops and hisses, but other than that, it's pretty quiet. It's not like the, not the roaring sound of the water. No, no, it's a slow, gradual pour. Does anybody have a mute spell of some kind? Mute, as in, I mean, can silence, that phrase, silence noise or a person? As in silence noise. Wait. No. I not mean I have. Okay, wait. David Norris? Thank you, David Norris. Thank you, David Norris. David! David. 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 Chicken is delicious. I love chicken. Dave the elephant sent it. Thank you, Dave. I'm just going to not let you see me eat it. <laughs> um. Oh my god, her, her mouth opens up and tentacles come out. And <laughs> stuff it in. It's really scary. A spike comes <clears throat> out, grabs the brain. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so wait, what are we doing? That's a good question. What are you doing? Um. God, do I need to fast forward? <laughs> we got to take out the fuckers on, this, right. on that roof. Go. Go. Do you want to try to shoot them out, or do you want me to take Pike and fuck their shit up? I that. mean, if you can fling them <laughs> off the roof, that'd be That's awesome. That's what we're going to do. Okay, can we, can do we see anyone else? We're going to fling them off like, of the roof. Can I see Durga from any other... Uh, yep, pressure's on. Perch. <laughs> uh, from your yeah. current from positioning, current you're position. up against the wall? No. No, you're right. right. You can, I mean, you can back away and form, take a more of a case on if you want. And then I can just <laughs> pick one up with my <laughs> eagle talent. So, like, in the lava they go. This seems dangerous and reckless. It but does seem very dangerous and reckless. Do it. I don't think it brings attention. Who gives a shit? I'm not even mind We'll just have to be fast. We really that. Uh, dude, oh my god, look at that. Travis is like, what if it brings attention? Who gives a shit? And then looks at his watch. That's a fucking action man right there. Yeah, Trace up, I'm going with are. you guys. Going, uh, it's been yeah. over an hour, we've killed nothing. Uh, we've killed the the <laughs> yeah, let's fucking go! <laughs> well, so far, only the two of them have really approached the stronghold. You guys have stayed back behind. Oh, fam, I already <laughs> so you can all try, in theory, if you all manage to still pass them. Wait, what? Uh, Here's my plan. Okay. I'll take Pike up there. We knock those fuckers yeah, off yeah. super easy. Yep. <laughs> Grog yes. runs out and brains them the second they hit the ground. I approve of this plan. They'll fall in the lava. Yeah, they'll fall in a lava pit. Just shove Maybe. them off the side. Maybe. I don't know where they're going to fall. Well, just okay, do well, it. Okay, miss the lava pit. We've got Grog. Yeah, I'm just saying right now. Just be ready to let us know if, um, I'm going know. to be reading this book. <laughs> um, well, Eagle form. He's yeah. crap. I'm, I'm, I'm hanging by Keyleth oh in God, case so shit stupid. goes south and then we're growing oh, up, right? Jump on my back. What you got? Girl. What you got, Pike? Yeah, girl. Give me the help? flying carpet. Just this is also, this is part of the issue with having so many fucking people is that analysis paralysis, shiny disease, all of these things that break the pace of the game just become exponentially more difficult to deal with. 
because one person gets analysis paralysis, then another person wants to chime in with their plan. Another person wants to say what they're doing because they're not involved in the plan, but their character has to be accounted for. This person is like, well, maybe I could be an eagle and help out. And they're like, ah, oh, no, that'd be too much. And then they debate about how much it would be. And then this person says, all right, hey, let's just go. Oh, wait, we haven't killed anything in two, 10 minutes. Let's just do it. Like, you get too many voices, too many cooks in the kitchen. Um, I've, I've sometimes said that I don't think you need like traditional five man band, uh, roles in a D and D group in an eight person D and D group. You need a leader that is going to make a decision and like assign roles and like things just happen. You, you just need it because <laughs> otherwise you just get this jumbled blah, 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 blah. <laughs> cue the Wilhelm scream. Yeah. I can get you up there. What can you do when we're up there? Something I've been wanting Travis Williams. Yeah. Oh my god. Well, this is fascinating. We're doing it. Now, what do you say for to get the magic on me? Um, Please, can I uh, have the I'm, I'm going to just look at the uh, the guards' uh, pattern of movement. Are they staying in position? Are they walking around? Are they talking to <laughs> each other at all? Um, Who cares? Action man, just do it. <laughs> No, it's not that bad of a question, but I mean, at this point, he already asked, and I guess they're in a different position, but, oi, 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 like, just go. I mean, at this point, fucking Orion could have just walked up to the wall and telekinesis them off, right? Like, <laughs> let's just, let's get it going. <laughs> Grog smash. As you watch, take a moment, still from, from the far back position. Watch the two up there kind of come together. They chat for a second, then a third one appears, and, comes, oh, and one of them rotates out the balls for the one that just arrived. Okay. okay. They, they both kind of sit there, keeping an eye. One of them are they close, close to the each ball. other? Well, they're about twenty feet from each other, along the uh, top of the parapet. You said twenty feet. Twenty feet. Three, yeah. two. Oh, 20 uh, feet, you say? No, no, uh, one came to swap out. What an interesting range! Oh my gosh. May I just say you? I have been known to climb a few things in my time if you need an extra. All right, let's do it. I'll see. Are you coming to fight? Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a coming up there to kill some, some things. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say, you know, referring to, like, the five-man band roles of, like, you know, leader action. I call Travis the action man all the time, um, also known as the strong man. Um, it... it this is a great example of like the leader makes a decision, you make a plan, and then like this can happen where you just have people sitting around and be like, "Oh, are you? So what are you doing while the plan goes? On? Oh, what what about what about you? Fuck it, who cares? Like like we can establish what they did or did not do later, and it actually gives them more flexibility to respond if things go poorly if they don't lock themselves into an action beforehand. So you just get the plan. And then the action person says, all right, go. Woo. And then we then we go off and we forget about the other people. Honestly. I'm being I'm being fully real right now. And then, like I said, this gives a great opportunity. If something goes wrong, you can now use the people that you didn't assign specific tasks and be like, hey guys, things are going wrong. What were you doing during this? It's not necessarily a retcon, like you're not going to change anything that happened in the past, but this gives them creative freedom to set themselves up into a spot where they can potentially overcome the obstacle or the thing that went wrong during the plan, during the action phase. So leader determines plan, action person executes plan, anyone left over, stay the fuck back. You don't need to tell everyone what you're doing. You don't need to tell them that you're reading a book. You don't need to just come along just because, like, we do the plan and the other people sit in reserve. <laughs> At least, that's my recommendation. Always, always keep in mind everything I say is confident because it's fun to talk confidently, um, but... It always has the asterisk. It always has the little side piece of like what works at your table. If people are having fun, who am I to judge? I mean, you're... I'm a guy on the internet. I'm a streamer. <laughs> That's who I, I have, am to judge. I have a problem. I'm a worth decider. The oh ocean God, has changed stupid. you. Stupid. Okay, uh, they're they're standing twenty feet oh, apart. Yeah. 
I'm gonna wash this off. Radius. Now yeah, we, me, and you get ready to shoot. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. In the case. range or radius? So wait, who's all going? Uh, see, uh, I don't know. See, this is what I'm saying. Not everyone needs to chip in because now that he's chipping in. Now, uh, fucking Caleb is like, whoa, wait, 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 who's going? Because we've all been talking about what we're doing, and now I've forgotten what the original plan even was. Just talk about the original plan. Just focus. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> uh, no, Just range is how far away from you they are, and the radius Ow. is the point. No, I mean, a range of a spell is so how far from me. Are they then you're yes. going to bring them Got up it. if you can. Are they carpeting we're good. Up? How are no, you going up? Fly on me? <laughs> Scanlan, yeah, how, are you, how are you going up? Eagle? Carpet? No. Eagle. What? Climb that I shit, can, aren't I you? can get there. I what? can get there. Like that. We're good. Beautiful. <laughs> do it, Tom Cruise. All right. Cruise. All right. You ready? Possible. Do you know what you're gonna do up there? Not really, but let's just wing it. I'm gonna try to knock them both off in one. Let's in just one go. Blow, but you if I miss, off you off. gotta take okay. one. Yeah, you got All right. Board. I can okay. take one if you can take one. Okay. All right. Morning star. Oh my god. Grog, right. you ready to kill? Yeah. Be really quiet while you're fighting. Try to take him out before they hit. I kind of wanna. Sure, but. I can't believe little people. Oh, you know why? Because I need someone with me and I can only take her because that's the only other one who will fit through the dimension door with me. Go! The uh, dimension door? Yes, we're going to go through a dimension door. Why will no one else fit through the dimension door? The dimension door is not small, right? Why is that? I can take one person of my height or smaller. Is that a requirement of dimension door? Holy shit, I've used this spell. I... I did not realize that was a requirement. All right. So, I will take so the you reach over, <laughs> hold on to Pike gently, give her a little wink. Oh my gosh. And suddenly... We're going to try to appear between the two of them. Exactly between the two of them. Okay. <laughs> so, you feel the sudden rush of air and it, the surrounding man. atmosphere of you goes from that uncomfortable warmth. Weird. That is weird. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. Uh... I think he just likes Pike and is a good liar. Well, definitely. Like, yeah, let, let's be real. It doesn't, he would just lie about Dimension Door's size requirements. That is crazy, though. That's, I have not, dude, this is why when I homebrew shit, I try to make it as compact as possible, because sometimes my eyes just skip over <laughs> words. You know, I see this one thing of, like, you can teleport yourself, you arrive in the spot desired, and I just go, whoop, uh, just, just ignore the rest. <laughs> Uh, to a sudden freezing cold as your vision goes black and all you can see is Scanlan looking at you with this heightened grin as he's muttering these arcane incantations under his breath. An instant later, you guys are both standing at the top of the wall with both of the Duragar, one kind of facing away, one looking really surprised. Exactly, Dice Brand. Exactly. Is the fact that you guys both appeared there. You have a surprise round. What are you doing? I cast Thunder Wave and blast out from, from where I'm standing between Look. them 15 feet in either direction. Okay. So they're so. both 10 feet and 10. That is uh, thunder damage, my man. I, okay. 10 feet away from me. Okay. What's your what's your save? Uh, uh, that is knocking them away with a concussive sound blast. I was literally like, oh, man, maybe they won't have time to sound the alarm. You sounded the alarm, my man. It's still dope. It's a dope attack and, and a cool plan, but <laughs> silly, 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 silly. Uh, um, also, surprise round, TM. Uh, surprise is a condition in 5e, TM. Uh, <laughs> lol. Uh, the Underdark arc in C1 is a chore, uh, but watching it this way with the DM pausing makes points. The rewatch for me is so much more enjoyable. Thanks, John. I... I, I, yeah, I, uh, I definitely, it makes it more enjoyable for me. Like, I'll tell you, if I had tried to watch this on my own from the beginning, I have big completionist syndrome, so I never would have started in, like, the middle of C2 or, like, later in C1. Um, I, I've literally, uh, it's, uh, this is an embarrassing nerd thing that I'm sort of embarrassed, but only embarrassed in that ironic way where you're actually kind of proud of it. Um, the latest challenge that I did in Skyrim that I completed, I want to say in 2020, uh, sometime before the pandemic, uh, was I collected every single book in Skyrim in game and put them all in my house. Uh, I have, I have big completionist syndrome, so I, I never would have started halfway through. Uh, and I think if I would have started at the beginning here, I would not have made it this far. Uh, so yeah, being able to like watch it with you guys, talk about it, interact with chat, it's... It's so my preferred way to watch it. So I'm really glad that you guys get the same kind of enjoyment out of it. 
Um, yeah. Uh, Scanlan has dropped so many high level slots. Polymorph to scout Dimension Door now. Thunder Wave. Yeah. He's just sort of burning through him, ain't he? I mean, f fuck it, dude. When you have eight people and some of them are combat machines like the Assassin and the Berserker, who cares? Waste the spell slots. You have seven other party members. Like, it probably doesn't fucking matter if, if we're being real. You can just cantrip the entire combat and still be fine. Uh, <laughs> Scanlan and his cool sounding spells. Agreed. Uh, I did the same thing. I'd been using Toll the Dead for like five levels before I realized it made a bell sound. <laughs> yeah, man. Some some shit's like that, ain't it? <laughs> but, a, but a quiet thunder wave, right? Really All right. Quiet Not a quiet thunder wave. Right. Literally oh, impossible so, to be a quiet uh, thunder wave. It's, so, th thunder wave. We can get up real fast just to make sure that sure. this is... I like this, this play. Thunder makes a noise, This right? is a triumph. <laughs> Shit. Making a note here, huge success. success. <laughs> oh, no. Here we go. I don't think it's. I don't think it's. It's hard to overstate my satisfaction. I mean, my general. Okay, look. Thunder is literally like sound damage. It is sound waves. I. I cannot like. There is no part of me that can rule that this is not a loud ass noise. If it is a sound, if it is a wave in the air that is capable of knocking people off their feet, it makes a loud fucking noise. Like, I guess maybe you don't need that much in order to knock. I don't know, man. I would have to have a fucking physics major argue this against me because I ain't no physics boy. But, <laughs> oh, Oh, also in the spell's description, the spell emits a thunderous boom audible out to 300 feet. Wow, we're total fake geeks. <laughs> well, there you go. Such Such fake geeks. <laughs> oh no, oh, well, it's a wave of thunderous force. <laughs> right. But it doesn't say sound. It says sound. Thunder. I would say thunderous force. It isn't a thunderclap, but it will make some noise. Okay, fine. So keep that in mind. So. <laughs> Bro, bro, literally speaking of like, oh man, too much text didn't read, like on Dimension Door. Yeah, thunderous wave of force. Let's just read to the second paragraph. The spell emits a thunderous boom audible to 300 feet. Uh, I cast noise that only dogs can hear. Yeah. Yeah, it must be. But <laughs> that's why I always worry about my magic items. I always put like, you know, the, the important shit up front. Uh, or sometimes just the flavor bullshit up front um, so that, you know, they can know to skip it. Because, um, <laughs> like, the longer you make anything, the less likely people are to understand all of it. Play up and cast pass so as, as you guys appear, you release Pike, you bring your arms up and slam your arms kind of in a downward motion. As you do, there is a dull flash of light and a a burst sound that emanates from you. I say, oh, ooh, light. Both of the Duragar, <laughs> the one who sees you, who's bringing up his crossbow to fire, gets impacted and- I mean, it's still a dope fucking play. Let's not confuse shit. That's so sick, but- <laughs> Blown off the side of the wall. The one facing away gets blown up towards, slams into the side of the wall, right at the edge, and then topples over the side. Will Both screen? plummeting over. Oh! The brief little helm screen. You're standing there, you watch oh. this happen. I didn't have to do anything, Scanlan! Make out with me. <laughs> <laughs> we're alone. No, it's super bitch. romantic. I just killed two fucking big girls. Come on. No. It's now or never, baby. <laughs> 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 well, let's just yes. wait till we're out of danger. It's real romantic. But that was really <laughs> hot. It was really hot, right? It Come was. On. Just a little something, but something. Let's just. So sexy. As let's this just... is happening. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> both of the Durgar come plumbing off the side of the wall. I feel like this is a relationship that I'm I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt on because Scanlan's given me like not taking no for an answer vibes, which is creepy, but I'm going to have to assume that they've had a more distinct relationship that I just have not, you know, grasped because Pike was gone for two episodes and then Scanlan was gone for an episode after that. So I've only seen like an episode and a half with them together. Uh, so I have to uh, hope and assume that this was kind of a pre-existing uh, reciprocated relationship. Because right now it's feeling very one-sided in kind of a weird way.
Um, I swear I didn't know about the Wilhelm ahead of time. <laughs> Richard, I don't know if I believe you. I do believe you. <laughs> One uh, managed to kind of loosely break his fall, but the full 25-foot oh, uh, fall yeah, takes... I rage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, there is one that lands uh, just to the side of the magma pool that's forming. He took some damage from the fall and is like... <clears throat> trying to get back up. He fell hard on one arm. The other one that's far further that's away from the magma, out. the one that saw you, managed to... Reduce its damage a little bit because it was aware that at least you were there. Um, looks like it took some damage, not too much. It's maybe 10 feet from you. Um, <laughs> as he's trying to get back up, he looks up and sees you charging towards him, Grog, raging. Go ahead and make your two attacks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nineteen hits. <laughs> and nineteen again. <laughs> Both hit. Go ahead and roll damage. And both me and the B99 riders and Sam eventually backed away from that creepy toxic vibes. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, it's it's hard because it's not real life. These are both fictional characters, so they don't have to deal with like real fictional weird feelings. Yeah, like right, like Pike can like like Ashley, Ashley and Sam are just friends, and like you know they like like each other, and so it's you know, not like, you know, platonically, like they, they, they enjoy each other. And so like, even if the character does something weird, like there's not like a weird barrier between Ashley and Sam. So it's much easier for Ashley to play off and just like ignore like any like creeped out feelings that Pike would have. Like she can just kind of discard those for like the throwaway joke that Sam's making. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I don't know. It's it's one of those things where, uh, again, it, it kind of it, it's it's a big like uh, it's hard to know people's like real relationship and like the real vibes at the table. And this is where again, I am so interested to see the uh, Orion Tiberius drama that comes in the twenties, um, because I have a feeling that. It is something like it is something to do with his behavior that is almost like this. And and maybe people dismissed it in equal parts the way that they're dismissing like Sam's like behavior here. Uh, and then it turns out that like the vibes weren't as good at the table as people thought. So it's always hard to tell. It's hard to tell from an outside perspective, like what's good vibes and what's not vibes when you're making maybe, you know, edgier or maybe not even edgier, but just like maybe like not really thinking through the jokes. I don't know. Get some door yeah. 17. Okay. Uh, 19. So as he gets up, he goes back for his Warhammer before he has a chance to, you cleave off one arm <gasps> and send the ax right into the center of his torso, oh, silencing yeah. him in an instant. He slightly spreads the wound <clears throat> with this gurgling sound. And you just have to kind of like kick him off the edge of your yeah, head. Yeah, I tilt him towards the pillar to spray the pillar with his gore. I'm like, I can make one too. <laughs> I run across to the other one, thorn whip him from across the lava pool. Okay, you have to jump over the lava to do that. Because he's on the side you guys are on. Oh. Uh, well then, is there anyone on that, the other side? Is he already dying or no? Oh, wait, he's, he's on the, the same lava? side. He's on the same side as you. He's hurt. We run up he's and kick him in the lava. Up. Yeah, he's in the process of standing up. We yeah. just run and kick him in the lava. Yeah, I just run and push. Okay. All right. All right. So I use pushing attack. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, they're joking. Push is a legitimate attack in D and D five E that never gets fucking used. <laughs> all right. So this is great. I love it. I love seeing it. So you go. Go, go ahead and roll athletics. This is the meanest thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Remember, you killed that kid one time. Oh, thanks for bringing that up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's some dark shit. That's some dark shit. Okay. That's some dark shit. Okay. It's a long no. story. Oh, oh my god. Remember to kill that kid one time. Two and a half years in, and Keith okay. has just learned our names. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have your name written down. I'm Vex, okay? What? No, 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 that is not true. No. Uh, so as the, as the the, the terrible blood spray occurs across the, uh, the the nearby pillar on Grog's side, the other Durgar is getting up with his crossbow, trying to get it ready. You rush forward. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead and roll athletics. 
come on. As oh, she does no. this, I notice everything, and this I sit down that kid? and turn to the next chapter in my book. Okay. We had it coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is quite a good read. Uh, could be worse. Uh, 14. Uh, that's okay. You rolled a one. Oh, yes! So, as the Duragar is getting up, he goes, Ugh! you just run up and poof, and he falls back into the back. And he goes, ah! and starts giving a horrible, painful scream oh, no, as he's essentially, awesome. like, flailing in the magma, melting. Someone shoot him in the mouth. I say, shh, shh, shh. And I, I do the, um, I, I wind down to, like, push him under the lava. Okay, so, so, as oh, he's screaming, you're, you're, <laughs> you push, your wind wall shoves him further into the magma as he's screaming, pooling the magma around him as the rock cracks oh around him into black rock. His face still visible over the surface going, and this like horrible, almost Han and Carbonite type look at the top of the magma pool. You could just one up to Grog. Magma's awesome. As fresh, as fresh magma now begins to pool over the cool, covering his face, you step away. Um, Kiss on the body. I never knew. I never knew you were an artist. However, <laughs> the, the subtle sound of the thunder wave oh, and no. then the horrible oh, screams of pain. Jesus. You can hear footsteps coming towards the wall edge where both you and Pike are currently on. They're gonna think it's another it like abomination murder session. Jesus. Is, is there like a door or something? Not from your current position. No, you're just you're just like on a, a, a five foot ledge of, of the second of story. The fortress. Yeah. I saw it. For one terrible, torturous kill every campaign. Not a standalone tower. This is part of a large. This is on the wall. How far of a jump down is it? It's about 25 feet. What? Am I too excited about it? Should we jump down? Turn yourself into a guard. Make it seem like everything's okay. You got us down. Unless you want to stay and fight. You got 20 seconds. Wait, what's happening? Turn into a door guard. Turn into a door guard. Kaka. Act like you're a door guard. Say everything's okay. Get out of here. Look her. Okay, we're gonna dimension door out. Okay. <laughs> so you grab her, <laughs> back down to the bottom. Alright. Cast that shit. They reappear in the bottom. <gasps> um um oh, Are you done? I'm trying to heal. Okay, okay, okay. I, I cast uh um uh, uh wall stone, but like right over top of where I see that lip, but I don't I don't wanna bring it out far, just like half seas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just the, stop the magma? Just, Just the tip. tip. Just the tip. Just the tip. Alright, so, so as you guys like hear the bottom. Flow, there's, smart. Here's the wall. I wanted to go. You guys okay. hear footprints. Okay, so this is actually a great time for me to talk about this. Uh, this is something that I will frequently do um, for spellcasters. If they want to modify their spell in some way. I love it when Matt reminds them of the physics of what they try. Hell yeah. Oh, I didn't realize the metagaming pigeons uh, made such an early a pigeons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, look, I'm not as I'm not as against metagame as uh, some DMs might be, but uh, I'm more against analysis paralysis, which metagaming can often lead to. Um, but if I am if a player asks me to modify a spell in some way that that like by the book makes the spell weaker. I will often let them do it uh, on a successful Arcana check. And if they fail to check, then the spell just goes off unmodified, which can sometimes be like very un you know very unintended consequences if they were trying to modify it in a super specific way. Um, so like with Kayla saying like, oh, I only want the Wall of Stone to go at halfway. That's not something you can do by the, you know, by the book. Uh, it's just the wall is six inches thick and is composed of 10, 10 foot by 10 foot. Uh, each panel must be contiguous, uh, or you can create 10 by 20 that are only three inches thick. Um, so maybe she's saying that she wants to do the 10 by 10. I'm not sure um, if that's what she's saying, but all in all, uh, I... It must be merged with solid. Yeah, I'm just I'm reading this to make sure I I am confirming it right. But yeah, either way, whether it's allowed by the spell or not, if it's something that like in my opinion makes the spell weaker, I'll totally let them do it, pending an Arcana check, uh, which I think is a really fun use of the Arcana skill because I think that Arcana is kind of one of those skills that gets a little left in the wayside. It's kind of a dump skill. Um, sort of on the same level as like religion, <laughs> a couple of the int skills. I mean, it's a dump stat, so the int skills might as well be dumped too. <laughs> uh, along the wall, they don't seem to have seen you yet. At which point, there's this 
the sound of shifting rock, a giant stone wall juts out the side of the fortress, right where the uh, lava pool was pouring over the side. As it does, the lava bin pull, pulls on top of the wall and is kind of offset, leaving a small gap where you guys can try and squeeze through. You can see right underneath where it was, there is a stone doorway. It does, oh, not, appear to, it does not appear to have a handle or anything. It's just a stone door. <gasps> Why? Get in. Tiberius, fly up there, quick. Quick. What? Stop eating chicken and fly up that door. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Can he bring us away? Chicken? <laughs> <laughs> um. What's going on? <laughs> There's a magic doorway up there. There's no. I don't see any handles yeah, on the ground. It's, it's, it's right underneath the lava. It's, it's, yeah, it's, oh, it's on the ground. Yeah. Basically, oh. she she moved the she put the stone wall out. It's right there. We can walk up to it and take a look. Mm. Brother, okay, if Orion was, like, super tuned in and this was Tiberius talking and, like, not knowing what's going on, that's very funny character acting. Love it. I don't get the sense that that was what was going on. I feel like it was Orion not, not knowing what was going on, and that's super duper annoying. Yeah, one, one of those things where it really depends on if it's on purpose or not. Um... Do you use Arcana checks for allowing a PC to know what level spell is being cast to counter it? Ooh. I agree Arcana doesn't come up a lot, and that is one way to try and involve it. Um, I have not used it for that, because no PC has ever asked me to use it for that. <laughs> um, That's cool. No, I like that. I like that. Honestly, uh... <laughs> And this is this is one of those, like, I think someone asked a question the other day that I was like, man, none of my parties have ever tried to do that. Um, I've never had a PC take Counterspell. I know it's incredibly powerful. They know it's incredibly powerful. None of them have ever taken it. They're, they're big, like, Sam Regal Scanlan energy of, like, they pick the spells that sound cool. Um, <laughs> and, like, Counterspell sounds, sounds super lame because it kind of is um but if you do have a counter speller i think that's a totally legitimate use of arcana um uh i defer to they are casting a spell so they have to guess what it is and what level yeah i think i think that's totally fair i think i think you can um and i think that arcana is a very uh is a very good option for that. If they don't want to use Arcana, I would maybe offer them even the option of like Arcana to get exact uh, insight to get in the ballpark is is maybe what I would do. Uh, that way you offer like an option for people that aren't Arcana efficient or proficient. Uh, yeah, none of taking Counterspell. It's, yeah. Uh, and I've only ever had a single Paladin and he was only a paladin for like two sessions because that was like a like a like a small arc, not a one shot, but like a, like a mini arc. Um, I just that they just have not been interested. It's it's weird. I agree. Also, never had a warlock take agonizing blast. And as a warlock main, I've played a warlock in five different games. Um, some of them campaigns, some of them one shots. I've only ever taken agonizing blast once. We're just like big, like cool and fun table. And like, honestly, I think we all have negative biases against powerful shit. I know I do. Like when I pick up a new video game, like HOTS or something, I immediately go to look for what hero or champion or whatever is on like, not the very bottom tier, but like one above the bottom tier and sounds really fun. That's just like what I'm attracted to. I don't, I don't, it's a disease. I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> uh, my warlock is obsessed with the push invocation. Yes. My very first warlock I ever made had ascendant step to uh, levitate up. And then he had the push and pull uh, invocations on Eldritch Blast. So he would just float above the battlefield and like push and pull enemies and other combatants uh, to make them easier or harder targets. Uh, so much fucking fun. Um, yeah, paladins are the coolest class that nobody plays and why. Ooh, Angus. Ooh, hot take of the day. I think paladins are kind of lame. I'm sorry. I like, I like, okay. I think the idea of their design is cool, but I don't like it in practice. 
Cause like the the like general point of the design, right, is is smite. It's you are smite and you are spellcaster. And smite is cool because it gives you like a really powerful combat option um, to use your spell slots on. And so your spell slots become not just a res resource for spell casting, but they become a resource for damage dealing, kind of like key or rage, right? So I, that's a cool, flexible option um, that I like a lot. I think my, my big problem with it that I've seen in practice, uh, either I, I've played in a campaign with a paladin, I played in a very long campaign with a paladin, and then I DM'd the, the one paladin, and what I find most often happens is about 90% of the time they save their spell slots for smite. And that's it. So they might as well just not have spell slots. They might as well just have key and just be able to cast smite uh, with it. So then they end up being like a monk with passive auras. Um... But you are also support ores and non-spell slot healing as tank. That's cool as heck. Yeah. I think that that is, that is a viable thing to find cool. I, I do not fault you for, for finding that cool. Um, the auras to me... I think this is, this is my main problem with Paladin. Is that it simplifies down into this incredibly um, almost simplistic class where you have auras that are good and don't change and are not flexible at all. You, and then you have smite, which on its face is flexible, but in practice, 90% of the time is not flexible at all. You just do a bunch of damage. And um, you might recognize the warlock player in me coming out, but <laughs> I'm a big fan of a lot of options within my class, uh, which is why, like, one of the only barbarian subclasses that appeals to me is uh, is totem warrior. Like, like, you know, this is where we talk about, like, classes that I like to play and that I think a lot of my friends are like me. Um, it is, like, like, paladin is powerful. Paladin, to some people, is cool. It's just, like, none of the things I find appealing. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there's there's that. Um, oh, and also you have healing, but I have complicated feelings about healing in D&D in general, because I'm a support main in most video games, and I find support to be um, weird in D&D. And I, there's been so much ink spilled on why healing is is wonky in D&D that I won't go too much into it. Um, but uh, So I think that sort of almost lessens the healing for me. Um, but... Let me read through the... I, I've gotten backed up on chat messages now. My cheeky paladin relies more on the damage reflection subclass ability he has in the counterspell to shut down my main threats. That's fair. Uh, I don't want to have to use all my slots just for one thing. Yeah, that's sort of... Yeah, I kind of hate the rigidity and snobbiness of the paladin. I don't know if I would go that far. I think that's how a lot of people play paladin is the snobbiness. Uh, but that might be I've never seen a one-class paladin player that didn't grind my gears. I think that's fair. I think a lot of people, I think it's an unfortunate class that attracts snobs rather than like snobbery being built into the class, if that makes sense. Like if you want to play the lawful stupid or if you want to play like the, the good guy prick, um, Paladin kind of feels the most right for that even though like the actual paladin class doesn't force you into that a lot of the paladin oaths are dope like i love the flavor of a lot of them oath of glory so sick oath of the ancients awesome oath of the watchers very very cool um uh, oath of the open sea very nice like there are so many very cool paladin oaths that i like the flavor of and i do like flavor being enforced within my classes this is maybe another hot take that i have um when i play warlock and when i dm warlocks i make their pact patron a part of the character i make my pact patron part of my character um because i don't believe that a warlock should be able to play their class without strings attached that's the fucking point uh <laughs> so like i love flavor being enforced within your class um I also believe in like like enforcing druid flavor um, that is like 
you know, not super prevalent, but it's there. Um, so, you know, it's, I understand why that sort of rigidity and, and, um, and, and power is very nice. Like I, I totally get it. It's just, um, it, it's not for me. And that's why I won't even really call it a hot take. Cause it's totally an opinion thing. Um, of just like, not my, not my kind of class. Um, so anyhow. Oh, yeah, that was good. I'm going to do an arcana check. Can push it. Do I have advantage? Uh, no. No. All right, Kronk take a look. It? He's doing an arcana check. Take a look. Uh, Krog, kill it. <laughs> uh, 22. Punch the door. 22? Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, as you guys are inspecting this, in the time that you've taken to do this, hmm. both the Duragar up on the top are, have seen you, hmm. uh, never, seen uh, what's she's... happening, and are both taking shots at you. Oh, shit. No! I, was, I was waiting for that anyway, so okay. I'm, I'm going to. He was waiting. So, as they appear on the top, uh, you guys who have your arrows, uh, arrow and gun at the ready, both take a shot and then they get a retribution shot. Keyleth, what? let's go up. Go up? Up to them, quick. Let me see how they fare. <laughs> That's Alright, so the door seconds. is not magical. 65, 65. It is a mechanism of some kind. I rolled a 65. Holy shit, you're a deity! I'm amazing! <laughs> <laughs> um, Max. Yeah. 25. Pay attention. 25. The door is mechanical. Person. It is uh, not magical. You get two attacks each. That is how we two. open it. Orion, do not fucking say to me to pay attention. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, no magic. Um, I hit uh, a 23. Look, I am I am trying my damnedest. I know something happens. I am putting that out of my mind. That's annoying as shit. Come on. You literally just said the words like, uh, what's going on? And then someone starts side chatting, which admittedly they should not do, but come on. Um, good thing the thunder was quiet. <laughs> the guns should help the stealth mission. <laughs> Dude, I think stealth missions are impossible with eight people. I'll just say it. You, you, you could have two stealthy people in the party. You cannot have eight. <laughs> Wait, three hits. Go ahead and roll. Seven. It's just not gonna happen. <laughs> uh, roll damage. Eighteen roll, is roll, the second. Roll one. Both attacks, just to... eighteen is the second. Hits as well. Yeah, I, 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 my both attacks, I have to reload to my second attack. So. Oh right. Oh, is this with your with the bad? Oh, I got the big gun out. Got the bad news out. Yeah. Okay, then yeah. Okay, so you fire and then reload. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and roll damage. Okay, I'm using my uh, fire bow. Okay, so use the fire bow string. As you knock your first arrow, <laughs> oh burst into flames as it leaves your fingers. Oh. Oh. Seven damage. Peace out, Girl Scout. See you later, John. Uh. Sick. I'm. I'm. I'm psyched uh, to see what happens later. Because I mean, we're we're ramping up to something very fun uh inside of the ember hold i'm assuming uh so i'm pumped to see it but i'll see you seven damage okay i'm so <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry oh got me right uh, in the ear. 20 damage okay. on the first attack okay and one first and two rolls 13 on the second okay so uh as both are going out with their with their crossbows uh ready to go first one the bad news <laughs> with a cacophonous echoing gunshot that within this cavern definitely carries some sound to it. Um, and some, to some degree, surprise may be a little harder to find going forward. Oh. Um, we, that was already, they were yeah. ready to type, start shooting at us. Yes. Uh, however, the, the shot <laughs> hits the guy in the shoulder, knocks him off balance for a second. Not enough of a wound to prevent his next action. You, however, place one arrow <laughs> into the other guy's shoulder, uh, getting, because drop the crossbow, as he goes to reach for his other weapon, the other one just right at the bottom of his throat, out the back of his head, yeah. and just drops below the wall. Awesome. Uh, the other one does get a crossbow shot off at you, Percy. Uh, that is a 23 versus armor class. Uh, that uh, hits. You take nine points of piercing damage. Okay. As the bolt just streaks you across the front of your torso, uh, passes through, thankfully, but you do feel there's a wound. It's slowly turning warmer beneath your armor. Can I shoot at the other one? Uh, well, that's been the round. Now, uh, you guys have been inspecting the door. The door is not magical. There's some sort of contraption that opens it from the inside. All right, I'm getting my picks out and seeing if I can figure out somehow a way to do this. Go ahead and uh, make a check with your uh, people. Okay. It could be a... It could still be an escape hatch where, like, it's a stone door, right? There's a mechanism that opens it from the inside. Maybe the door opens like that? And so, like, the door is designed to block the flow of lava so that people can escape. 
maybe. I'm gonna call that a maybe on the on the on the uh, on the uh, Watsonian reasoning chart. We'll see. Good. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Ooh. So you take a second, you but can find I that the uh, the contraption that holds the store in place definitely is on the other side. It's a series of winches <laughs> and the chain pool. Uh, Trash chute? Yeah, yeah. They have, like, a grate below that that catches any of the lava. So, like, they open it from a distance and just, like, huck the trash through. <laughs> Dude, I mean, look. I will say, trash dumps, latrine chutes, whatever, are fantastic things to include in your battle maps. Fantastic. Every time I include a bathroom, the players lose their minds. They're like, it has a bathroom. Like, it's always like a grin and a smile when they when they see that this fucking castle has a shitter. Uh, <laughs> uh, or, you know, the castle grounds has, has, a, uh, has an outhouse or a latrine of some sort. Um, they, they fucking love it. So I, I, I think that including it in ways like this, super fun. You find that there's one slight gap where you manage to hook one of the chains, pull And it can be great uh, character moments because you can provide a shortcut that is through, you know, the sewer latrine type deal. Uh, and so, like, it's this, it's not a physical challenge, it's not a skill challenge, it is a, like, character, like, willpower challenge. And it's a very fun opportunity for roleplay uh, if you do include those sorts of shortcuts out ever so slightly and you know with a strong yank from a strong person you could probably pull it out from the outside so there's a part that if i ask her i'll go over to pull oh i'll do it i'll do it yeah me me and pike are on this okay so groggy reach over you grab the chain and pike grabs onto the back of you and both of you pull give it a good heap ho go ahead make a strength check with advantage uh, 23? 23. As you pull, you hear the grinding of this chain against the stone, and you can see the actual door begin to rise upward this way. Ah, you can see now what this door It's a DeLorean! Is. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> when it opens up, it What's moves that? the magma out of the way. That's as construct is used as an exit. It's what I mentioned before. It's, it's supposed to be an exit uh, for the royal individuals of the cool. stronghold. It only opens up partway, however, because bom, the stone bom. wall currently blocks the rest of its movement. Bom, 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 bom. Uh, okay, cool. There we go. Matt Mercer, let's shake hands. You did it. I am convinced that that is a legitimate reason for that uh, secret entrance to be there. Hooray! We got there, team. However, you can still move through it. Um, we can't leave this door guard behind, though. we got to take mm -hmm. him out. Yes, there was one door guard still there. Uh, wow. so that's been all of your guys' actions for bringing back Pike you haven't gone yet. Okay. Um, uh, Kill if you've gone. Yeah, so the only one left to take action is... Tiberius uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he, yeah, he, was, he checked the doorway. Uh, checking out the door. Oh, right. Where's he at? Uh, he's up on the top of the wall, about 25 feet from here. Could I you. create a, a, uh, I want to create a spiritual weapon, like a poisonous lasso, <laughs> and like, and then like put him down into the lava? Oh. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so. A lariat of truth? <laughs> so. <laughs> well, right. So, using your spiritual weapon, you, you take a moment, you grasp your, uh, your, your Saren Ray uh, holy symbol around your neck, and as you pull your hand away from the symbol, you see this, this kind of glowing uh, celestial rope extends out of nowhere. Yeah. You begin to spin your fingers, and it, on its own, it begins to swirl and swirl. You then throw your hand forward and on its own cascades upward towards the edge of the wall. Go ahead and roll an attack roll. An attack roll, okay. Yeah. Which is, uh... You know, I'm looking at spiritual weapon because I'm like, okay, how generous is Matt being? He's not... It's weird. He's being a mix of, like, generous and also not. Because, like, spiritual weapon can take whatever form you choose and it can make an attack i mean my assumption with spiritual weapon would be that it does not gain any of the traits of the weapon it's just like a skin but if the player's coming up with something cool like that fuck yeah who cares like <laughs> uh, a spiritual poisonous last i was curious about the poison aspect i was like what what why is it poisonous <laughs> 
Oh, uh, God powered lads, so let's go Wonder Woman. Fuck yeah. Why didn't she just fly them to Kavarn in her? Uh, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, spiritual weapon can't, from what I can see, like, if I was really, like, rules lawyering this raw, I don't think she can do what she's asking. But I think it's fair. If you're nervous about the power of it as a DM, I think it's fair to throw an Arcana check on there um for the for the grapple um maybe allow her to trade the grapple for the uh for the push pull for the damage i don't know there's there's some interesting room to play because it definitely can take whatever form you choose so like making a lasso so totally viable um yeah 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 if they're down to forego the damage for sure angus yeah yeah that's interesting that's fun spell modifiers the attack part. Wow. Ten. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> that ain't no good. Total of ten? Uh, I think so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What'd you roll? I rolled uh, uh, a two and then I had a uh, plus eight. Okay. So, uh, the, uh, <laughs> that ain't no good. The, the Celestial Lasso. Um, <sighs> it's a good idea, though. Which, 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 which is it? You don't get the feeling poison was something you could really muster based on your your deity's central good. I was just talent. kidding. I was just getting a little crazy with ideas. <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. Um, however, as as it heads over the wall, you see it does not find purchase on the Duragar. Instead, it finds purchase on part of the wall. Yeah, fuck. Um, Poisoning the wall, effectively. <laughs> yes, it's that not wall poison property. Effectively, uh, so. that would have been cool. That would've been cool. Unfortunate, bad roll. Uh, okay, that brings you to the top of the round, round order. Um, I believe at the top we have... Uh, Mr. Me? Yes, Mr. Me. Okay. <laughs> uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh. Uh, I'll do... Um, <clears throat> we're still trying to get that fucker up, up uh -huh. yes, yes, he's on the roof, run right? Tell people. I got almost nothing. So, uh, I'll just do... Um, uh, uh, I, 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 can I can I can I summon an unseen servant to push him? <laughs> oh, bro, it's just a Duragar. Just fucking shoot it. He's already been shot by the bad news. Just just tickle him. He's he's about to die. You don't have to pull him off. Yeah, Come that's on. a good idea. Yeah. Okay, we can yeah. give it a shot. <laughs> roll high. Uh, roll, I, roll roll high. High. So, I, I don't so, have any ranged weapons. Natural 20. So you, 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 you conjure and- How tall is the wall? I mean, obviously the bad news has like really long range. Is the wall like, well, like 80 feet? I don't know how long Vicious Mockery is. I thought Vicious Mockery was like a 120. Might be a 60. He might not have any. Any options? Teen servant, mark, mark off your spell use. I look at it and I go, oh, Monty's cousin. Uh, you see a, a slight shimmer of, of ethereal energy behind the Duragar. It's going to attempt to shove him. It isn't, unfortunately, on its own extremely strong. It's mainly meant as an aid. However, it is possible. Go ahead and make an athletics check. Athletic? Not, your, not your athletics. Just make a d20 roll. Oh, just roll. a normal athletics. Twenty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a five, so. <laughs> what's your, what's your athletics? We're really rolling you hear well a, tonight. You hear a guys. ting <laughs> sound as the... Uh, Again, doing fun shit with spells, I would have made that arcana, but athletics is fine. Um, the Durgar's armor is given a hefty slap, but <laughs> no apparent force is placed upon his a body. Hefty slap. <laughs> Thank you, Jarvis. <laughs> <laughs> but is he confused? Uh, <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> but not enough to not be loading his crossbow for a second shot. Uh, not enough to give uh, him a status. <laughs> good, good thinking on We're that a point. A party of seven people, just like ah, Mate. you, <laughs> you. Cat in a tree. Yeah. <sighs> How do we deal with this? All right. As my, so. I, and I'm gonna just uh, give a little inspiration to Vax. Yeah. That's Laura. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's inverted. Right. That's what so, I always. So D8 inspiration died to you as <laughs> hums a little tune under his breath. Nice. Um, you're up. Oh, I, I attack him. All right. Pew pew. Pew pew. This is good. Love me a pew pew. Is that one? Damn it! What, what is wrong with us? So what are we doing? My first doing? attack is a serious fail. My second attack, though, is a 25. That hits. That's okay. good. Okay. All right. So the first one, you pull back. And as you pull back, the actual arrow snaps. You, know, you almost like, shot me! Oh, that hurt my arm so bad. Yeah, you're going to have a little rash there probably tomorrow. Yeah. Great. Yep. Eight. Eight damage. All right. So your second arrow manages to find uh, its mark, 
as it sticks pretty close to where the first arrow hit, uh, um, or where, where, where oh, yeah. he was shot from the bad news. Uh, the door guard kind of shrugs it off angrily and aims his crossbow from once with Percy. Now on to you. <laughs> it's getting its shot at you. Uh, that is a 17 versus armor class? Yep. Nope. Yep. Yep. All right. Yep. Um, so you manage to just dodge out of the way. You hear it whiz past your ear. Uh, that brings us to, let's see, let's go to Percy. Take one more shot at him. Redemption Percy. Come on, Come on Kill Percy. this guy. Get it. Uh, this last is longer than most of the one fight. Yeah. <laughs> Seven level nine NPC, or PCs just staring at a single Duragar on a... On, on, on one crossbow boy. <laughs> Can't figure it out. Uh, 18. 18 hits. Shows you how effective palisades are, man. This is <laughs> this is why we built fucking castles. Is these magical fucking deity slayers are being held off by a fucking shooty guy. <laughs> and... A fucking teenager that has a has that thang on him. Like, come on. Come on, die. Come on, Bertha. Right in the belly button. Oh, that's that's nice. That's pretty. That's uh. 19, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Twenty-five points of damage. Thank you. Okay, so with the second, Finally. you you pull out one of your your custom made. Uh, nasty looking bullets, load it back into the bad news, you pull it back, aim up and fire. And once again, you guys are seeing this weapon up close again. With each fire, it takes all of his physical body to not be blown off his That's feet with each time it fire. A plume of white and kind of uh, ash-like smoke comes shooting out the side of the weapon. Uh, you all, the nearby, you almost have to close your ears instinctually from the loudness of the shot. He's really However, the trying to make at the top the of the wall, you cool. see what where his head once was just <laughs> across the wall behind it. <laughs> Love bad news. Let's move quickly. Let's get in yeah, the door. I think they I heard us. I, I, think go they us. I go in the door. What kind of a bullet? Dude, don't even get me started on on fucking Matt not having people fucking retreat, dude. Oh man, hopping to the night shift. Have a good one. Yeah, see you, Sam. Have a good one. Um, yeah, man. I mean, this is just like the Duragar general that watched Vax one shot. Uh, a mind flayer and then like they're in the middle of combating the bullet and he totally has the option to just to just pop out of the tent and go and gather the 20 other duragar that are in the camp but he he fights till the better end i come on come on uh, yeah we all go into all right, so all of you have made your way. He definitely, yeah, he definitely didn't go and just run and get reinforcements. Into totally. the doorway of... Can Trink it fit? I think it can fit. Trink it can fit with you, yes. It's just strong. barely. It's like... It's just like barely. barely. It's wrong, uh... can fit, Trink it. Yeah. It's the one you don't suit. Indeed. Oh, no, we can't see it. <laughs> all righty, so... And guys, nice. make it's your way. Are we crafting? Whoa. Tiny, wow. Whoa! Tiny little room. We are all very, very crammed in Into to get tiny anywhere. Tiny room. Feels, feels like an intermission room. Yes. Essentially. Oh. Yes. An intermission room? Your, your, your A bathroom break room? Yes. Oh, we can all relieve ourselves <laughs> in this room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. break it this there, time. You guys all slowly push into this, uh, this storage room. It's very musty. It hasn't been seen in use in quite a while. Um, in fact, you can see a little bit of mold is growing on the side of one of the barrels Ooh, in the corner. Dink. There is a doorway <laughs> that is closed on the opposite side of this wall, and from what you can see, there is a stairway that curves upward to the second floor. Uh, guys, I'm sensing a lot of purple and brown construction paper here. <laughs> <laughs> I am as well, Scanlon. That's your favorite terrain, right? Uh, it is. <laughs> 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 I think as you guys just entered the stronghold, we'll take this as an intermission break. All so, right. uh, taking about 10, 10, a little over 10 minutes. And fuck you, we have the power of hindsight. We have the power of video on demand. We don't take breaks, except for when we will in a little bit. <laughs> All right, so the party had just managed to uh, not oh. quite so stealthily pry their way into the hidden entrance to the outside of the Duragar stronghold of Emberhold. Uh, they found themselves cramped into a very, very <laughs> tiny, uh, essentially, a storage room it's with nice. a stairway leading up and a closed doorway leading further into the stronghold. So, 
What is your preference? I think we should go through the door instead of going up. I agree. Because any prisoners are probably going to be I've kept at a low the level. Can we quiet the door? Yeah, everyone's inside. Okay, so I gave my whole uh, explanation of why I thought that the cave system up to this point was bad. And one of the things that I mentioned was uh, loops being okay and even really nice in battle maps, uh, but not on dungeon maps or world maps or settlement maps, et cetera, et cetera. Well, actually, settlement maps, they're fine, but mostly dungeon maps. Um, and another thing that I talked about that was bad on dungeon maps uh, is forks without anything interesting or without any indication of what the two sides do like positively or negatively um i talked about how that i thought was was also bad and i'll say two things regarding that when it comes to battle maps rather than dungeon maps in a battle map like this uh number one i think that forks can be okay because players can move around individually and they are moving around a much much smaller space so backtracking feels fine and they, if they do discover that they're in a loop or that they've gone the wrong way, it's very easy for them to get back uh, in a like relatively okay amount of time. Um, secondly, in this specific case, this isn't even as like uninteresting of a fork as the other one was from episode five. The other one from episode five was literally just like two tunnels, pick one. And then Caleb had the very good idea to use fucking, I think it was, it wasn't beast speech. It was um like beast sense, I think, uh, to grab a bat and like try to fly up one of them to see what's up. And she got that like one of them sloped upwards slightly. I mean, Matt gave her fucking nothing. Uh, and so they kind of had to make the choice randomly. Even this stairs up versus door forward. You are now presenting a path with a potential, uh, with like, hidden visibility, potential noise, a potential obstacle blocker. There's the level difference that Vex immediately identifies and actually gives some intuition to her choice of like, oh, I want to choose this path on the fork because if there are prisoners, they would be kept lower. I don't want to go upward because of that reason. So this is already a much, much more interesting fork to place in front of your players. If we were to go back to the episode five fork in the tunnels, make one of the tunnels, I don't know, have blood splatter going down it. Have one of the tunnels be uh, much more obviously pointing upward or make them hear sounds from one of the tunnels. Like none of these things have to tell them like good tunnel, bad tunnel. They just have to be a difference so that it is not two identical blank doors that they are picking at random. Yeah, and we very stealthily try to open uh, it. Oh, oh check the traps! Top, top, top. Yes, uh, I'm going And I will, and, and again, bringing this back to the dungeon map versus the battle map, it's much, much harder to make a fork that doesn't have any information about it on a battle map. On a dungeon map, scale gets distorted, so, like, you could pick one path, and then it, like, loops around and does all sorts of weird, crazy shit, so you're going a totally different direction. And that's, like, very normal on the scale of a dungeon map. Whereas on a battle map, you understand the physical space. So even if you are literally presented with two blank doors, their positioning in the space tells you... It tells you a lot. It actually gives you information that you can use to make an informed choice. So it's kind of almost impossible to have the issues that Matt's uh, cave complex has. It's actually kind of very difficult to have those issues on a battle map. So you kind of, like, all of that advice and all of those things I was talking about earlier today, I kind of wouldn't be worried about them if you're making a battle map. Because the natural configuration of a battle map versus a dungeon map lend itself to not experiencing those issues. And in fact, doing those things of just like putting more doors, like putting looping paths, those can actually greatly benefit a battle map. Whereas they greatly hinder a dungeon map and make it super boring. So, there you go. To uh, sniff the door a bit. Before All right. uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's 20. Like 20? Alright. 
Just beautiful. Best you can tell, the uh, the door itself is locked, but is not trapped. Okay, well, click, click, click. Okay. okay, thieves tools out. Oh, that's an easy 30. So 30. 30. 30. Jesus. Which is good because it's a very, very intricate lock. Mm-hmm. There is a specific key, a single key that is designed for this lock that you gather is probably held by uh, King Murgle himself. Whoa. Whoa. King Murgle? Murgle. 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 And his queen, Durarara. Queen. Yeah, or something. It's uh, Ermagerd. Queen Ermagerd. Ulara is her name. Queen Ulara. Uhara. Yes. Uhara. 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 <laughs> no. Kumar. I don't know. What is okay. her name? Seriously. It's Ulara. 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 <laughs> Wait, Jirad and Ashnaga? Arms wide. Ulara. I'm picking a lot. I'm picking a lot. All right. Quiet. However, you do manage to find with a series of intricate, strangely constructed dwarven tumblers in the inside that each have a very strange rigid structure. <laughs> Hey. Please do that every time you pick a lock. <laughs> um, you manage to get the right sequence, and then with a slight <coughs> clicking sound, the door opens slightly on the inside, yes. leading into uh, from what you can easy. see <laughs> is a hallway. Yeah. Expertise the further down, drug, brother. It's about there. Where's the door? Where's the door? Did the, I just pick the door that you picked? If you wanted to walk through, yes, is right there. It's naturally there. Okay. All right. So that other stuff is upstairs. Mm-hmm. All, all, all this is on the floor you're on. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So what's going on here? Okay, is I'm going to take uh, six or seven quiet steps forward, mm-hmm. stealthily. Six or mm-hmm. seven steps. That's uh, mm-hmm. 19 stealth. All right. Um, as he does this, I'm going to pull out my... I-, I will also say I'm a big fan of when it comes to battle maps, uh, letting players move their own minis. And if something were to interrupt the movement or the action that they are attempting, I will rewind their action to the point that that happened and just forget about whatever happened after that and then let them react. Uh, But I'm a big fan of letting them move their own minis, tell me what they're doing during uh, battle map crawls. Um, Because I, I think that it helps, number one, I think it helps keep pacing up. Um, and I also think that it helps communication between me and them uh, on like what they're doing, where they're doing it, how they're doing it, so that I don't accidentally reveal something just because I didn't understand what they were saying. Um, maybe you could maximize. Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm sorry. I uh, I minimized it when we were. Uh, I minimized it when I was looking for the chat comment. And stone. Good call, Pouch. Richard. That's okay. And let it. Again. All right, cool. We're all trapped in that room together. Yeah. Right? You are. Perfect. I fart. Drunk. <laughs> 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 Press the hesitation, and I <laughs> made quick wind gust and okay. just circulated around the room. <laughs> yeah, I blew it away. Do you know what? I can blow it right up your nose, Max. <laughs> I'm all ghosty to you. This I'm 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 throw up in my mouth just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just just a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Take a very quiet peek around the corner. All right, I'm, a, I'm having a peeky poo. Yes. Yes. All right. A little peeky poo. Uh, as you peek through, you can get a general idea of what looks to be mm. some sort of a, 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 an empty storage room. Yes. Uh, a lot of materials have been moved out of it. It looks like uh, there are remnants of stone uh, things that were used for construction that once were in this room that have been pulled out to build things, possibly moved as part of the war camps to start building some of the siege weapons okay. that you saw above. Do I hear anything? Mm, not currently. Go ahead and roll a perception check. Yes. Gosh. Oh, yeah. that's good, that's good. That's pretty good. 27. Listening, you hear <laughs> footsteps above. You hear uh, very, very faintly through the stonework about you know 20 feet above you, <laughs> some footsteps moving above. Apparently, there is some level of alert uh, on yeah. the second floor. Hmm. We should move fast. Yes, Percy, I wonder why. We start why. getting out of the room. So <coughs> I'm looking outside. I, I, I go back to the door and just be like... Yeah. Alright, so I want to go further... For no doorway as of yet, correct? No doorway. If I go They're going to start coming down this the freaking stairs in this room. The hallway comes to an end. Mm. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 
All right, well, then I'm going to peek into this door here. Here? It's open door. No, what's by right by the figure? This is one you just looked into that had this empty room. That oh, thank you, thank you. All right, so then down the one hall. Down the one hall, okay. Yeah. Look past here, there is a stairway that descends downward. Down. Looking down. Help me. Looking down this hallway, you see what resembles. Uh, well, there's a door to your left that's closed currently, mm-hmm. and it splits off into two directions, right and left. All right, I don't even tell anyone. I just start to slink down the steps. Okay. They go down. Yes. Oh, jeez, Louise. How is he going okay. to represent multiple levels? Uh, Very interesting. Put the crow in there. Um, you continue down the stairway, and as you slowly move around, you can see down towards the bottom a very, very faint bit of reddish glowstone light, mm-hmm. um, and a hallway that splits right and left. Right so he just only has this one level, or the downstairs is very, very small. I'm always very interested in how people represent multi-level structures, because it, it's a very distinct challenge within uh, tabletop role-playing games, because... You're on a tabletop. A lot of times you're, you know, representing these structures in two dimensions. So how do you uh, bridge that gap, bridge that challenge? It's always very interesting. You know, there's there's the common like, oh, just like have 3D material. But if you want like big sprawling dungeons, that becomes unfeasible a lot of the time. Um, so I'm interested it seems like maybe this ember hold place is like mostly one level and then there's like small upper and bottoms and those are just going to be theater of the mind i don't know uh i go to the right we're gonna see okay <coughs> well, just go we're as getting you, bored as you look past the right you guys are all waiting in the room you just storm I get out. no i get Start out banging no. your weapons no, together no i come out because okay. you're taking too long <laughs> I, I, I i i saunter about okay <laughs> i'll head on out there uh, i go where pike goes we're just losing all the t- Bro, there's eight level nine and NP- like PCs. They can kind of just saunter about. Like, attention span. Is that what's going on? We're just like wandering off. Or no, no, no. I stay. We stay in the area, but I, I wanted to check on my brother because I feel like he's taking a while. All right. Um, I was just gonna check the door. As you move and, and kind of glance over, you can see there are two Duragar station on each side of the split hallways. Yes. One is a, there's a closed doorway to your right. Yes. And to the left, there's an open doorway that leads into a room. And that's when I went to the right? Uh, well, as soon as you went into the, where the division was, you turned to look to the right, and there's a the Duragar right. there and a Duragar on the left. Okay, I'm going to turn my chin over to the left and see what I see down there. There's a second Duragar that is currently sitting uh, in armor, weapon to its side, just kind of occasionally glancing, and you can hear every now and then sounds like a, a, a moan or like a, a slight whispering gurgle, and the door will lean in. I should open there! <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go kill this guy. Um, you don't want to tell us as I notice one. him going up, I'm gonna. Hey, Vax, what are you doing? <clears throat> I'm killing someone. Hold, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, Vax is going to go kill something. Uh, I'm going to sneak up on this door guard. Can okay, I make a stealth check? Yeah. I mean, this shouldn't even be difficult. Uh, 19? 19? All right. Ah, that's a little sketchy. It's not, not too oh, bad, though. No, look at this. Oh, interesting. Oh, there is a bottom just piece. Like a magician, you just whip it out. That's nah. what I'm doing. Oh God. Trying at least. There we go. An extra hit. Mr. Wizard can do it. You point out. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's that book. It's the book. Oh, it is the book, isn't it? Stupid book. Stupid. Book. <laughs> this is why you need. The number one thing I would tell DMs, like new DMs, if they're like, what do I need for my setup? What do I need for my fucking DM screen? Like, what sort of equipment do I need? Honestly, the best and biggest thing you need to play D&D is just space. A bunch of fucking table space. You can get by with everything else being, like, cheap and hapdash and, like, thrown together. But the, like... The more space you have, the more comfortable everything is. I used to, uh, I I used to put shit on on the couch, on the coffee table, on 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 everything. Uh, people would sit on the floor so that I could use chairs. Like, <laughs> I would expand the play space however I could. All right, so. <laughs> 
as you've made if you got the money just buy one of those really big uh like folding white tables you know what, what i'm talking about like the ones that like fold in half like in the middle buy one of those if you if you're a new dm and you got the cash and you're playing in person obviously um those are those are nice angel away here Max, you look to the right, there's the door of our head left, it's shouting into this room here. Do something! Missed entirely you fucking else. do something, He's please. right there on the side. Oh, there's yeah. one over there, there's one Jesus. over there. Jesus. Uh, there's two. Oh, shit. Um, Dude, this is what I'm saying. Is like, you know, with what Vax was envisioning and what I was envisioning as audience was not at all what Matt put out there. So, you know, when you have battle maps, use them, but even when you don't, when it comes to like stealth missions, I think it is almost necessary to do some sort of visual markings for stealth missions, just so you understand like sight lines, because it can really impact like what you understand of the situation versus what the DM understands. Mm -hmm. But we all come slamming down in here. Yeah. You're uh, uh, so I sneak back up, okay. and I uh, put a hand on my sister's shoulder and I give her a little come along motion. Vax, and tell you can else. take him. I think you don't. You need some. Ground? And I mouth Kima mm. at everybody, and then pull, as you're doing this, you hear footsteps across the way, echoing through the hallway. What sounds like a number of other foot patters heading through the halls <gasps> towards the front of the stronghold. I'm, I'm just the pulling Vex down. Oh, the okay. Front the front. Not where we're at. Right? Front. So Vex and Vex both disappear mm -hmm. off to the side, down a, down a hall. By the way, love that. I I love hearing things that are threats, but that are not directly threatening. If that makes any sense. Love it. Perfect. Uh, they did did a similar thing with the uh, boulette, where you know they feel the rumbling, they know that there's something going on, but they don't know what it is, and it's not immediately in their noggins. Uh, but it helps keep them on edge. It helps keep the entire thing tense. They don't know what's going on. There's an air of intrigue, mystery. Helps them be thinking about the game rather than fucking off onto their phones. Because if they understand the entire situation, especially when you have eight fucking players, if they understand the entire situation, every time that they're not actively talking, they are going to be, if not on their real phone, on their mental phone. Like, they're... They're off. Uh, unless you're a, a goat at describing during battle maps, which I bet you are not. Uh, <laughs> and so having this like occasional threat uh, of like, now the people that aren't actively doing things, like Vex and, or, you know, Vex and Vax are off doing their thing. Now the people that aren't actively are thinking to themselves, they're like, what, what could they be running towards? Could it be connected to the wall? Could it be connected to this, that, the other? Like, they are now thinking about the game and not other things during not their turn. Helps, and it also helps keep some law and order because when, uh, when people aren't thinking about the game, they tend to side chat more, get distracted, not pay attention. So, Play. recommendation. I, uh, before they leave, I just kind of like tap their shoulders and meditate and, and grant them guidance. Okay, you have one of them guidance because it's them. concentration. Uh, Vex. Okay. That's me. Yes. Not Did you mean to give it to him? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right. Bravo. So, who gets, who gets guidance? The man one. <laughs> Vax. Vax. So I pull uh, oh, a poison man. blade out and I pull uh, the keen dagger out. Alright. Okay. Please, Fuck you, Richard. I almost took you seriously for a second. I was almost about to tell you rewind the fight. <laughs> ah! Take the Exactly. King dagger. So the one on the left is by the door, the one that muttered through the doorway, right? The one right here. Yeah. Yes. Alright, so I give a little whoop. Toss in my hand and throw it right at his neck. That's all you need to know. At the same Sink time, attack. I reach out and go. Pfft. Well, and then the other one, the poison it's one, not gonna help. towards the other. <laughs> okay, and it's you are. And I was gonna shoot at the other one. Okay, so, so I mean, you only four. This right here. Guy. One of them. <laughs> that is uh, seven, seventeen for me. Seventeen hits. Twenty-seven. 
27, all right. And then on the other guy, or should I just go ahead and attack? Uh, go ahead and go ahead and, and, and attack both. Okay, 17, so that's... Uh, and 25 from the second. So both You're both right. arrowed at the guy on the right. Stuvo, one on each. Each. <laughs> you both. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. That that's oh that's a very cool image of like they go they back to back dip out each like shoot and throw and then they turn around shoot and throw. <laughs> that's very fun. So damage on the one on the left, which is sneak attack because he does not know you're there. Plus he's doing like eighty damage. So uh, forty six with the uh, keen dagger on the guard at the door. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> That's why it was really useful. So the guy on, on the left, as he's leaning back, he's getting angry with whoever's in that room. I'm sorry, because that would be a crit, right? Am I? Because uh, he's surprised, so you would have advantage, you have advantage, and he hasn't gone in combat yet, so it's a crit. Right? Room, as he turns back to take his post again. <laughs> Probably doesn't matter. <laughs> Let's and his be gurgles, real. slumps to the ground. As he's slumping, an arrow goes. It's like a punctuation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, then, and then the poison dagger goes. Funk. Well, I didn't roll to hit him. And are you using the poison effect on him? Yes. I'm 15 here. on the and other guy. That yeah, is uh, 19. Okay, that hits. Go ahead and and, uh, no, and d this doesn't get sneak attack because no. I've already used that. Yes. Yeah, so, so okay. So I made some noise hitting the first guy. Uh, seven plus the poison. Okay. So, what's the poison damage? The poison is a DC 15. Okay, he does not make his save, even though he's a okay. Durgar. I go running back up since wait, I've already shot my arrows. Wait, one thing real fast. And I figure you've got this. <laughs> Matt's like, wait, that doesn't make sense. How did he not make his save? He could just clear this whole place. Nine points of poison uh, on him. Okay. So, <laughs> an arrow shoof, into his chest just as the poison blade makes contact. Uh, you can see him <clears throat> kind of double over for a second, but uh, the hardy Duragar, once dwarf in form, seems to shrug off a lot of the poison's impact. Oh shit, he still is waiting. still dribbling a very heavy amount of deep crimson from his mouth, but it's still like, <clears throat> looks over and sees you both in the hallway and goes to reach for his warhammer. And Thanks. turn around towards the door behind him. Can I do another arrow at him? Uh, <laughs> Can we roll for initiative at this point? At this point, you guys roll for initiative to see who goes first. Uh, I turn to Pike and say, What the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> I mean, if we want a rules lawyer this real quick, if you don't care about, like, okay. I'll give the, I'll, I'll give, like, the, the asterisk to this answer first. Um, if you think that that went fine, I agree with you. It went fine. Not technically how it goes in 5e. How it goes in 5e is they declare their attacks, then everyone rolls initiative, then you determined that both of them are surprised. Have the surprised condition, not a surprised round. And then you go through the initiative tracker, person by person. And that does matter because, say the Duragar both rolled crazy high initiative, uh, and then they go and then it's Vex and Vax, even though they were surprised and couldn't take any actions, now that they have their turn has passed, they are no longer surprised and can theoretically take reactions. So that is a small but, you know, potentially impactful difference. I don't think for this scene it would have mattered at all. Um, but if we're going, like, real, like, raw rules lawyery type thing... Uh, they should have already rolled initiative. But this book scanning is incredible. I'm sure it is. It's all about like, uh, uh, ice, ice. I read nonfiction. I'm gonna head down there. I'm gonna head down there. Oh, careful, clanky. All right. Oh. Uh, so the rest of you, who are heading down there. So many prisoners. I follow Pike down there. I'm going okay. too. All right, yeah. everyone else. Everybody fucking come down. Self checks. Are we going self -checks down? checks, everyone. And yeah. all right, so so you guys both beat them in our initiative. So I'll roll attacks. Both of you just roll roll the dice. Just roll the dice. Just roll the dice. 19. Yes. 28. 38? Oh, no. Am I, am I going to be mad, sad, happy, ecstatic? Oh, boy. I love having a, I, I love having no context under other than like a list of episode numbers. I know there's like something that happens in the mid 20s. Now there's something on 38. There's something on like 71. I just have like this mental list of episode numbers that I know that some shit happens on. 
<laughs> the handle on my arm. Okay. armor. We don't need to roll damage. He has like two hit points left. <laughs> you guys oh. pepper him with additional arrows and daggers. Like the poor guy's like, uh, I'm gonna. Some <laughs> <laughs> and he just goes down in this, this horrible gun gun. sense of overkill. His body just <laughs> slumps up against the door God, and is currently like, <laughs> like actually <laughs> leaning against the wooden door that he was guarding. I say on my earring, I think we found the prison cells. Get down here. We're coming. I'm assuming. Oh, I will say. So we we talked in episode, I think it was three, maybe? Could have even been earlier. Could have been like episode two. Uh, we talked about fudging. And if I ever fudged for like interesting dramatic effect. Um, oh, goodness, I'm tired. It's 27. Ooh, interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, if I ever like fudge for dramatic effect either way, I will say, and and you know, I'm a I, I'm a known and accepted fudger within my players. I do not do it often, and my kind of motto is if you can tell that I'm fudging, I'm doing it wrong. Um and and my players are all good with it. We've had a lot of conversations about it. Um and and I shouldn't I won't say arguments even, like just talked about it. Um and if I am in this situation as Matt and the Duragar has like two health left, I'll be real. I'm probably letting them kill it on the first attack. Like I'm probably just sideswiping that extra two health away because it's so much cooler if they come in brother and sister combat duo go boom, boom. And like, boom, boom, boom. Um, I'm, I'm probably letting them, I'm probably letting them get away with it. Now, to be fair, I think there's a totally valid argument that I should not fudge there because there's the potential for the Duragar to beat them on initiative uh, and therefore sound the alarm and it's uh, a big panic. Like, that's that's a very clear and present threat. But also, they're level 9 NPCs and this is a random Duragar that's probably, like, what, half CR? Like... They'd have to roll pretty fucking bad as a ranger and a rogue to lose on an initiative roll to this fucking chump. So I don't know. That's that's where that's where I come from. Um, not saying if it's right or wrong, but that that is kind of the the road I take. There is I try to elevate the drama in acceptable ways and to acceptable degrees, um, rather than maybe keeping every single health point dead on. 38 has a huge reveal, but quite different than 27, 28. Oh, the list builds. <laughs> the list just keeps stacking up in my brain. Both dead. Let's start looting the bodies. All right, so self-checks. 16. Shiny disease. 12. 12. Lady Kima is potentially in the door right next to you, and you would rather loot for 10 gold. 19. <laughs> All right, go to when Lady Kima. I'm pretty sure is worth like 25k, but no, let's let's take more time during the dungeon crawl. Uh, let, let's let's waste some time not getting Lady Kima and, and get this few extra gold and potentially not even finish the whole thing because we wasted that time. Ah, I don't even think Lady Kima's in there. I'm just I'm just saying. Uh, 2728 is probably the biggest improvement in quality in any series. Sheesh, Angus. Really throwing it out there. Make it ex make it be excited. All right, all right. Team! Woo! <laughs> down with bastards. That. Yes! <laughs> now, that was with disadvantage? Oh my god. Yes. I have to roll again? Yes. Because Why? you're in heavy plate armor. Yeah. <gasps> no! You got this. You got Do this. it. It's okay. It's okay. Come, come, come on, sweetie. Come on, sweetie. No whammies. Ash. <laughs> That's not as bad. That's still not bad. Plus, I rolled an eight. Okay. Plus what? Plus what's your? Plus next? nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 you guys <laughs> all. Hey man, that's what you get for having good AC. Fuck good AC people. <laughs> Yeah, rush down myself. the stairs, <laughs> the clanking of the plate armor as you're going down. The rest of you like kind of wince <laughs> as you notice it, but you make down anyway. Uh, oh my god! I'm actually gonna go ahead and throw guidance on Pike now. <laughs> what does Little late. What does guidance do? Guidance um, it gives you a, a, a plus on your ability checks. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh. It great. gives you a windy four uh, uh, plus to your. They already knew we were okay. here. Okay. Now they, they really know we're here. All right. Now they know you're So the rest of you have made it down. Uh, <laughs> Surprise. You're in this hallway. There are two dead Duragar on the ground with a closed door and an open door. Well, let's I go stand. look in the open door. 
All right. Stealthily. As you glance over into the open door, you can see what appears to be a series cells. of dungeon cells, cells held underneath the stronghold. Uh, Lady Kima. Within these, you can see there are a number of dwarven captives that are in very, very, very poor health. <gasps> About them. Oh, that are currently lying to get them away. Lying are, down are any of them Lady Kima? Because if not, they're about to die. No, the <laughs> regular dwarves. I go, I go inspect them and, and see uh, okay. what's going on. I'll go in with Tiberius. Okay. Uh, you guys enter the. Uh, and as you look around, there are just a series of largely decomposed bodies in a few of these cells. I think people have just been left to die. Oh, no. um, one, there are these kind of strange. Deep underground rat like creatures that are kind of feeding on one of them. Mm. Um, one of the dwarves is just wheezing in pain. Ugh, you can see like his stomach is a little descended. Um, the other one is either unconscious, asleep, or dead. You can't tell. Can I, can I do like a, a yeah. mass cure? You can if you'd them? like. Okay, I'll do that. And you can unlock. Yes, I was about to say I'm going to go start inspecting the other door. I'll, I'll go with him. Oh, I was going to say unlock can the prison cells. Yeah. yeah, can you unlock the prison oh, cells? Oh, sorry. Yeah. We go. Can we go in? Uh, and talk you, to them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, what? All right. So you go through. It's fairly simple over time for you to unlock the cells if you'd like for the two that are in there. Um, the, there is a difference between heal, healing magic and nutrition. Um, you make them feel physically better for the moment, but their physical form itself is failing. They like food. They, just a thought. They need Shouldn't food, they need food air, rest. they need we let prisoners out to be out of here well. soon. They're both on the Put them in on the, the edge of death. I go to I go to I go to, I go to, I go to the Sorry, room. I've been I've been like zoned out. I I was I I know what's happening, but I was watching there's like drama happening in the chat. And I know that we've already talked about how at some point they eventually take away the chat because there are some sketchy slash questionable things being said. And it caught my eye because I saw like message deleted, message deleted, message deleted. It's probably the right move. Um, you know, for React content like this where I am directly interacting with you guys, that's the whole fucking point. Uh, I can directly engage if there's anything weird in the chat, um, which there hasn't been because you guys are cool. Um, but... You know, for them, they're putting on a show. They cannot directly engage with this, so I think it's good that they eventually take that out. <laughs> I take out the you bottle know, of I was water. water. And I, and I'll, I'll, anyways, I'm gonna try not to look at okay. it anymore. Sure you guys hear heavy footsteps Refocus. coming from the stairway. You guys just okay. descended from. I go uh, stand right next oh, to the stairway. In the, in the cells. In the, in the cells. cells. In the cells. Uh, I pull my sister and we flank the. I push her into flanking positions oh, at the God. door. Wait. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, where where, where are they coming from? Not the stairs. The stairs. Yeah. From where we yeah. entered. Point blank. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Oh. Ten more. So what are you guys doing? Um, I jump in the cells and I pull a dead, decomposing corpse over top of me. Wow. Ew. All right. Helix. Wow. All kinds of nasty this. I find a corner of a cell and slow down a lot more guns. Okay. <laughs> I should make sure all the doors are shut, not locked. All right. All right. All the doors are shut. Uh, Pike, anything you're doing? I'm just, you know, preparing. <laughs> just kicking it. All right. Just kicking Do we need to move out of the I'm way of the stairs? Vax is scooching Scanlan out of the way to take that position right there. Put the bear in the back cell. Yeah, but, Scanlan, but where are you? Him. There's voices. There's voices coming from the stairs. Yeah, someone's coming. But there's a bear in the stairs. Well, Trinket's coming down. I, say, Trinket, like, okay. I call Trinket. Trinket. Trinket's just talking. He's having a whole conversation. He barely hears you from way over the side. Moving into this room. Uh, Kuros just steps back along the side of the stairs and kind of out of view. A few moments pass and the footsteps slowly trail off. I leave oh, and yeah. turn around. Oh, God, again, it's like Matt heard all of my criticisms of him at the beginning of this video with me talking about how he does not keep the fire under their ass. Like, it literally, I don't think this is what happened. I think he kind of had this, like, not necessarily pre planned, but it's just like things are just happening and he's just narrating it, right? Um, but that, that really felt like, like, someone said, oh, let's, like, loot the bodies. And then, like, as they go to start doing that, he narrates, like, oh, there's a threat. Like that, you have to like pay attention to now, um, which is great for keeping the fire. Even if that threat wanders off, 
now they're now they're tense. They're they're on edge. They don't feel like they can spend a ton of time here. They have to figure out their next move. Pushes the action forward, keeps the pacing up. Fantastic. I know. What's in the other door? Uh. God damn it. All right. The other door is currently locked, from what you can tell. One moment. Uh, it is now not locked, I think. <laughs> 25. Okay. Fucking, I, I, man. Okay, Liam. Ah. Uh. I've talked about my pet peeve of fucking players just rolling shit and then expecting the DM to... Ah, uh, yeah. I uh, yeah. Um, you push the door open and you Especially see... Especially when the players say the outcome of the roll. Most of the time, they're not like, wow, that worked. Uh, most of the time, like, nope, didn't didn't work. Didn't, didn't succeed. It, that particularly annoys me because I a lot of times do gradients of failure and success. Uh, so if someone doesn't tell me the value of their role, I don't know how much they failed. Um, so then I have to like ask them like, hey, no, 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 like what was the number? Because you might not have failed as bad as you think you did. The, um, immediately, the fast moving heft of some large blade towards your head. Ooh, yeah. Ooh snap! Mm. Uh, no, it's a trap. That, traps, 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 traps. That is Dead a sign. 24 versus armor class. Okay, that hits. That hits. Alrighty. Oh. I thought you were good. Uh, I'm gonna use uncanny dodge. Okay. What would have been 20 points of slashing damage is reduced to 10. So you take 10 damage as the the axe hits, hits you and embeds itself in the wooden door, pulls back. Now what you see is a Duragar wearing like this nasty looking black leather tunic with a hood pulled back with a giant uh, gnarled, uh, like hefted uh, great axe. The word escaped me on that one. Um, has yeah. a bunch of scars on its face. Yeah. It's kind of grinning as it pulls the axe out of the doorway. Right, I spit on the ground and yank my belt off and throw it And I neck. yell, hold. Okay. Uh, as you hold? throw the belt. Yeah. yeah. Tell him to stop. His oh, neck. right, because this belt's a snake. Ducks Dude, out. I was literally like, what? Are you trying to, like, drop trow in front of this guy? What's going on? The way. Yeah. There we go. I guess it's, in, I guess, roll intimidation if you just see an enemy that just hit you with an axe and you just drop your pants in front of him. I'd give you intimidation. The way, the, as the snake kind of forms itself, it goes ahead and makes an attack. Go ahead and roll the snake attack against him. Simo. Uh, snake attack 12 plus, I don't know what, 12. I'm in the snake. Is my attack is attack, snake attack. Uh, did you roll 12 on that? Yeah. Okay, that will not hit, unfortunately. Right. As he just kind of slaps it off himself and it kind of <laughs> cascades off to the side of the room. Is he gonna sell? Um, it, is it basically a straight himself. line from him to the back? At, at which point he kicks the door closed again. <laughs> Can I, uh, in my rage, bull yes. rush through the yes. door and yes. smash yes. him? Now we're rolling initiative, guys. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As this is going on, I immediately cast some stone skin on myself. Okay. Do. What I like is that there are eight of us in one of them. So far. So we don't know what else is. But he's. Got he's got in a room big, by himself. I can see the square, it's very small. It's possible. We can turn yeah, him into the room. He's seen a brief bit of the room. Um, Alright, so uh, 25 to 20. I will also say so we talked about this a little bit. Uh, during the chase sequence out of the Durigar camp, about like how many actions do you allow people to make? And Orion is the fucking worst about this, about like uh, getting into a situation where you should certainly be able to take zero to maybe one action and like trying to take multiple. Um, like even right here, hey everybody, roll initiative. And Orion's like, whoa, before that, stone skin. It's like, brother, that's not how calling to roll initiative works. Um, uh, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, when when roll initiative is called, everyone picks up a D20 and we are in initiative from then on. Uh, if you wanted to cast stone skin, you should have had it on this whole time. Cause like that's, that's part of like prepping for combat. And that's part of the resource allocation part of D and D about like potentially burning your resources, having to keep concentration up. So you can't cast other spells. Like that's why stone skin is not OP is because it takes an action and you can't just do it or you have to take your first turn to do it. So, I mean, 
it's weird. I almost feel like hesitant about criticizing Orion because I know that something's up, but that's just a really good lesson case in like, Hey, like you, you cannot just because you can get a word in does not mean that your character can take an action. 26. 20. I know several people in the chat are having to just clamp their lips shut. I know there's probably so much that, like, Richard wants to say. And he's just, like, fucking gripping down, trying not to say it. Um, he gets pretty creative with meta magics, too. Interesting. All right. Uh, 20 to 15. 18. 19. 19. I can't tell if that's sarcastic or not, Angus. Um, we'll see. Either way. <laughs> All right. 15 to 10. 14. 14. 10 to 5. 7. 5 to 1. Hooray, Four. Sam! <laughs> New initiative. All right, Percy, you're up first. For the 9v1 against a dude with an axe. <laughs> All right. What's um, up, the playback speed? You are way back in this cell, and you hear like a slam of broken wood and another slam of a door closing. Okay, I'm gonna run to the hall. All right. Uh, make that better. Try to move through this cluster of people here. Reminder uh, for anyone new: uh, I normally up the playback speed during combat because combat with nine people takes a fucking while. Plus, they have Clorota, uh, so it's really, you know, it, it's it's ten people overall. Uh, there are captions. Let me know if you want me to slow it down. Um, 24. 24, you leap over, kind of vaulting off of uh, a okay. land, oh, you move into yes. this hallway, and that's the extent of your movement. Okay, I'm going to try and take a, sh a shot and blow the lock. Okay, with the bad news or with your... Oh, no, the bad news is away. Okay. just with the hand up. Okay. So, shooting at the lock of the door. Okay, go for it. Um, Jesus H. Uh, 19, that's uh, 20, uh, 30. Okay, go ahead and roll damage. Uh, 9 points of damage. 9 points of damage, okay. Uh, as the door stands back and you kind of prepare yourself to try and get it open, you hear the familiar of one of Percy's hard bullets as the actual handle of the door poof, gets blown off and there's a small hole in the wooden door now where its handle once was. Uh, the door kind of swings open a little bit loosely due to the impact. That ends uh, your turn. That's it. That Back to you up. Okay, so all I'm going to do is grab the hole of the door and yank it open and yell, your turn, Grog. Okay. Oh, that's, that's fine. <laughs> um, as you pull it open, <laughs> the dwarf backs up over what you can see now, and this room is completely covered in a series of really nasty hooked instruments. As uh, I said. Hot iron. You can see large <laughs> pincers. You can see various blades. Oh, it's like a torture chamber? It's a torture oh chamber. Oh, no, John. Um, oh, the Toys R Us. Uh, great. So you, you, you see, gently as he backs away, there is uh, someone on this kind of rack-like table, and uh, the, the dwarf backs up with his axe, kind of getting ready. I use my bonus action to say, you are so fucked, dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that brings us to Tiberius. Oh. <clears throat> Ooh, I like where this is going, Rex. Wait, I go over there first, okay. and then I say that. Acrobatics uh, <laughs> check. Acrobatics what? You gotta jump over people. Move through people. The area is congested. Small spaces, man. Come on, come on. Got the downside of the party. 22. 22. You managed to move through, push the bear out of I will say that I'm fairly permissive with people talking in between or around initiative of being like, like shouting things at each other, telling things to other players. I'm pretty permissive with that. I don't really care. Wait, move through. Get out of the way. <laughs> yeah. right, you managed to make your way. The bear is surprising. It smells really nice. All right, Rex, what do you want to do? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, follow suit as I see what the uh, is doing. I'm going to cast home person on the dwarf. You don't have visual on the dwarf currently. What? That's back, absurd! Back, as you run through the hallway, but <laughs> you don't know there's a dwarf there. You rush out the hallway after hearing all this commotion. You look in and there's an open door into a room that's currently vacant. You don't have enough movement to get close enough, unfortunately. Uh, I, I, encourage, I encourage violence. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to receive some action? Dude, I'm going to go. Destroy them. Look at the mountain. I'm going to kind of do it. That's the best line of the night. <laughs> <laughs> You are uh, currently in a cell with a dead body draped over you. Oh. It's <laughs> cozy down here. Okay. So it's a dead body. I hear what's going on. I... We're rumbling it up. Yeah. I... I morph into minxy form. And as I morph into minxy form, I take the dead body that's on top of me and just pick it up with my mouth. Okay. Uh... <laughs> In your mouth, the body stirs. It wasn't quite dead. Oh, 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 I wanted a dead one. Like, like, like well, you wanted a dead one, it is now. Oh! Okay, well, that's fine. That's fine. He's dead. the worst person. I tried so hard, guys. I tried so hard. It's hard. <laughs> still the fucking worst. So, you now have, you have a, a, a dead, gaunt dwarf hanging from his mouth. What do you want to do? Oh, my God. Um, keep chewing. Give it to us. Oh, go ahead. Do something else. This is not gaming. Quote, I wanted a dead one.
I tried. 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 It's a very, very tight quarters for you. You're like, oh, uh, as a uh, smell less good as a tricky dust. It's not me, it's a dead body. Uh, I, um, <laughs> and I, I look at the dwarf. You can't see him from your vantage point. He's actually back like, out of the site. Uh -huh. No? We can't see him. Can't you don't know there's a dwarf there. You just have some sort of motion going on. You were on the corner. Another example of like. I, uh, uh, of like, if she had just watched Orion's turn, she would have like very obviously known that she would not be able to see the dwarf from there. Like, fucking players, just pay attention. Just you don't even. I look, I'm not even that picky of a DM. I don't need you to know what you're gonna do on your turn. I don't need you to have like the next five turns planned out in advance. I just need it to be when we come to your turn that you just know what's happening so that I don't need to recap shit for you and that the other players don't have to recap shit for you. That's that's the worst. Um, happens all the time. It is not unique to this group at all. Uh, but talk about my list of pet peeves. Ah. I look at Grog and I foam at mouth a little bit with the corpse and I encourage violence. I encourage violence. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Next just knowing, uh, well, let's make this nice and easy. I smack Grog on the ass and say, go get it. <laughs> All right. Grog, it's your turn. <laughs> 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 yeah, oh, no, no, you do get inspiration dice for this whole setup. <laughs> Travis is like, holy shit, I'm finally getting to do something this session. I've been doing fucking fuck all. I killed the one dwarf guy that fell off the the fucking ballast or not ballast palisade. Uh, which, to be fair, it's not been a combat heavy session. Sometimes Grog gets more screen time. It's all a balance, especially when you have eight. But still, <laughs> one shot. Okay, so, <laughs> so you run in. You said the room's full of shiny pointy things on the wall. Yes. Right? I would like to bull rush the dwarf up and against the wall and try and spear him with all the sharp shit on the wall. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh... <laughs> Oh, that's nasty. Okay then. Uh, so for for the <laughs> Travis sped up action. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and make a, an athletics check. Uh, twenty-four. Yeah, against his seven. Uh, <laughs> you rush in and with your attack, your first attack, you grab him, lift him, and you can see there's a series of giant meat hooks hanging from the back of the wall. And you just lift him up and shoot, shove him down onto the hook, just protrude from his chest. Oh, like, oh, 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 oh perfect. Yes. Come back another attack. Uh, you do. Oh, Excellent. Does, uh, twelve points of damage, and he is currently he is currently okay. restrained by the hook through his chest. Oh, perfect. Oh. With my second attack, as he's screaming out, I reach inside, grab his lower jaw, and pull him straight down. Okay, make an attack roll. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> oh, Max is using his free hand to cover his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and roll damage on this. Oh, uh, for flavor, you're attacking. Yes, for flavor, roll well, Why not? You're pulling yeah, his jaw. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Um, so after you throw him onto the hook, his axe clatters to the ground, and he reaches up with his hands to grab you. And it looks like he's pulling back to try and bring. Okay. Okay. Dragon Ball. Ju <laughs> Krog just rolled a Dragon Ball. Wait. DBD. I was thinking DBZ. What the fuck is a DBD? Uh oh. I don't know that one. Uh, but I was about to say. Okay. What Matt is doing is similar to how I feel about fudging. Where, like, like uh, it's debatable whether Travis can do this series of events. Uh, Dead by Daylight? Ah, it is very much a Dead by Daylight kill. That's fair. Um... But, like, it's it's questionable rules-wise whether he can do this. Like, there's maybe some combination of push, depending on how far away the hook was. The hook is... Is the hook the improvised weapon? Is it a trap? I, it's a little sketchy, right? And then, like, him, like, pulling on the jaw is definitely... Like, it, it's, it's an improvised attack. It's like a one, unless he has Tavern Brawler, in which case it's a 1d4. Definitely not a 1d12, but it's really cool, and he's gonna kill him anyway, so let him have the d12, who fucking cares? Like, <laughs> that's sort of where I get to, is especially, like, when it's on the order of, like, oh, a 1 versus a d12, or a d4 versus a d12, and, like, 1 is cool and fast and, like, not extraordinarily powerful, and they're already in an overwhelmingly advantageous position. Why the fuck not? Yeah, you rip off his jaw.
<laughs> in for a headbutt, this kind of angry look of burning rage in his white eyes. This, this, this fucked up Duragar with scars in his face. As he reaches up towards you, you take your giant hand and jam it into his maw with this horrible <laughs> sound as you put all of your muscle into it, glaring him in the face with a terrible grin, you <laughs> and yank the jaw from the bottom of his head. Uh, a spatter of blood across the front of his head and his tongue dangling. And he gets this horrible, oh, this, this gurgling scream as all the blood begins to pour up into his throat. Uh, with that, you just, you, you clutching the jaw with one hand, you begin to pummel him in the face. Oh, yes. With his jaw, as you watch him, his head slowly cave in. Um, until eventually he's no longer moving and you can throw the jaw around. Yeah. Coding right. I think Rogum, I think you destroyed him. Good job, Rogum, that's your best one yet! <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> this is also a good example of why I do not scale enemies specifically to player levels. Because sometimes it is really fun to let PCs just absolutely stomp the shit out of lower leveled enemies. Like, he is a CR9 barbarian going up against what is at most a CR1. He is at least double its CR. At least. That, that is being, like, very, very generous. Uh, and so sometimes it's fun to just let them stomp and feel powerful and feel badass. And, and so that's why, like, you know, in a lot of uh, campaigns that I played in early, that I even ran early, it's like every single fight had to be balanced. Every single fight does not have to be balanced. Like, you just place enemies where they are. You place strong ones. You place weak ones. And the players engage with it how they will. <laughs> As you've entered the room now, you've hey, wait, is he dead? Oh, yes. <laughs> He's very dead. We make cheese of him. <laughs> uh, lies there limply on the wall, kind of twitching every few seconds. Uh, Grog still in a rage. You look over to the other individual. You can see now, strapped to this uh, this wooden frame, is a smallish humanoid uh, female, currently chained and being pulled on a rack. You can see a bunch of scars and wounds, blood on each one of them. I'm running into I know how to disable the rack. Uh, you you can probably figure it out with a, with a tinker. Uh, is it oh, wait, can I run home healer? We need pike in hand. I'll go. I'm going to run this chains holding her on. All right, slow down. I'm going to undo it. Okay. Wait, just go ahead and make a check. It's gotta be her. Uh, what, what, what do I add? Proficiency bonus? Proficiency bonus. Okay, really quick, before the big reveal, before, is this lady Kima? Kima? Kira? Kima. Um, I didn't take my two-hour break, mostly because they had a pretty long break, so I figured I needed to stay on for a little bit while. Um, but before we get into kind of the last 30 minutes, which will probably be, you know, narrative wrap-up, uh, I'm gonna go pee really quick one more time. So, I will be right back. Gotta be standing for this reveal. Gotta be standing. Let's make it happen. Ladies and gentle worms, we're back. We're bold. We are going. Um, 12. 12, okay. <laughs> you take a moment and you manage to find where the- What up, SSH? Evening, sorry I couldn't watch this earlier. I'm going back to watch it in 2X, but I won't be caught up. That's probably true. Uh. Sounds good. Hey, no problem, SSH. You guys come and go as you please. I'm here. I'm entertaining you like 
you do not do not show up early just to, to to see me like i love having you guys i so appreciate it but i will be uh i will be fine either way i'm chilling um but i do i do love to see you guys so i will see you in the vod which this machine is where you can go ahead and release the tension and eventually the chains go a little more slack and <sighs> the halfling woman takes a deep breath and just kind of looks about the room a second. It looks like there's a bit of haze, but in through the haze there is just this this constant, this constant anger. Oh. And you, she looks up and goes, So? Are you going to let me go? Come on, release these chains! Wait, wait. Who who she is? She is? <laughs> can we, um... Can we insight and make sure that it's really who you we can indeed? Yeah, perception. Per, uh, this is into the check. Great, I don't what get any. Uh, <laughs> anybody okay. else want to roll Pike, for roll insight? Well. Pike just insight? The twins, it. Oh boy. Scanlan, come up here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, huh. 15, 15? Oh, oh, she's not I, in her I, right I, mind. I, I in the, I'm gonna take a else. take a peek it's at her. Very small. Richard, listen. I could still be right. This might not be Lady Kiba. We'll see. <laughs> what am I rolling for? Oh. Inside, see if she's in 18. 18. New theory! New theory! If this is Lady Kima, or is if that even is her real name, <laughs> if this is Lady Kima, they get, they're looking for Kavarn. They're going through lieutenants. They're going to... Yug Saloth, whatever, the Mind Flayer City. They get up to the Elder Brain. The Elder Brain is like, whoa, I'm under Kavarn's spell. And then they're like, Elder Brain, where's Kavarn? And they're like, what? Uh, do you not know? Have you not already known? Kavarn has been with you all along! And then it is Lady Kima, and she's like, Mom, come on! And then they fight. <laughs> better? Okay. That's my new theory. Kavarn is on the rack. It's all fake. She has her last warlock invocation. She has fucking, uh, 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 not Misty Visions. Fuck. Uh, like Mask of Many Faces. And so she can disguise self. Add all of these, like, rack scars. It's all bullshit. Did we even know if that axe was clean of blood or not? We don't. It's all a ruse. Okay. I mean, at this point, it's it's pretty apparent that whatever this woman is, she's been here a while and has been subjected to many, many horrible things and still has that spark of a life to her, mainly out of vengeance, anger, and, and pain. But she does not seem to be overtly aggressive or trying to deceive you, just trying to get out of these fucking chains. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna check on her. Easy for a level a 20 check? warlock to, to pass see if that. There's like any kind of... Hold on. Any, kind of, any kind of magical impurity is entering. Best you can tell, there's none. I'm pulling out my uh, lockpicks and I'm going to start working on her. I'm going to I'm going to heal her with a little bit of a song. And you know oh, my yeah. lockpick snaps, so just totally. Like, Tink. Yeah. Great. How far? How hurt? If, is I, she? if I may. Oh, please. She's pretty rough. She looks <laughs> like like as, as you look up. Uh, she she's not clothed. Uh, her body is just a Cheers. spray of scars and gashes and, and, and rake marks and she's been tortured to an extent you hadn't seen a person and to have to still be like like i don't trust it i don't trust he's literally talking about how it's so crazy that she is so vital and like vibrant and oh it must be her strength of character fuck that who has strength of character in this economy no fucking way, this shit's Kavarn. Tensing her muscles against the chains and looking at you with this, this tensity. If this is indeed Lady Kima, you now see why she's made the reputation she has. Okay. Grog, the, uh, the local so mechanism I, I step on this forward is and jam. I, and I, I, can, and I, I pull out eat. my flute and I, I sing, uh... I mean, fair enough, Angus. That's, that's actually, yeah. That is the entire point of Paladins, you right. As... <laughs> Long as I got my song and flute, I'm gonna give some healing to you. Love and magic in the air tonight. Gonna give you some hit points. Gonna give you some hit points. Gonna give you some hit points. Of balance. <laughs> 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 okay. So I, I roll uh, n so nine, nine hits. Okay, okay. So, so the, the fresher wounds seal up, the blood flow comes to a stop. 
Um, and you see her muscles tense for a moment, or, or her tension in her muscles lax for a minute. She kind of looks to you for a second and goes, oh, It's been a while since I've heard a song. Thank you. Mrs. Slogan, please, please be careful for a moment. Can someone cover her ears for just a second? Yeah, I got it. Ear muffs. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be totally shot. I'm going to, I'm going to just put my gun against the lock somewhere where it will not harm her and just Ah, okay. Cool. Sure. So, uh, go ahead and roll damage. Oh, you don't have to roll the hit. It's right there. Yeah. Um, 15. How many? Is, is it two locks? Uh, well, there's one chain uh, One chain for legs, one chain for the arms. Okay, so oh. 15 for the legs. Yeah. Uh, 10 for the arms. Okay, so <laughs> the legs get free. <laughs> the chain mostly snaps on the top part, but not quite enough. It's enough for you, Grog. I just got it. Reach over. <laughs> I bring it down with a brief moment of extreme tension as the whole room watch Grog walk up with his axe and swing it down towards <laughs> this halfling. Before we have a moment to stop, everyone's heart just skips a beat. The chain is bisected, at which point the halfling woman immediately jumps to her feet with almost like a key up stand. It is now standing on top of the, uh, of the table. <sighs> she, her arms are still bound and she... You can now see where the metal was weakened from the axe blow. She tsh, pulls herself free from the metal binding. As there's there's a, a blister across her wrist you can see from just the, the how long she's been pulling against these restraints, but she bore through it. With a little bit of blood that trickles from that wound, she has freed herself, and she looks around the rest of the group. So I take it you're not... Okay, maybe she's like a paladin warlock multi-class? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no warlock doing that shit. No way. Free yourself. And she looks around the rest of the group. <sighs> so I take it you're not from around here. <laughs> no. Would you like some water? <laughs> she grabs it from me, pulls off the cork, and just starts chugging. I mean, like yeah, she probably. Hasn't had anything to drink nice. in a long time. Lady Kima, we need to get you out of here. Uh, Allura has sent us. <laughs> she caps it off after a moment and takes a deep breath. I'd hope she would. It was foolish of me to come down here so unprepared. I just knew there wasn't much time. <sighs> time till what? <clears throat> she kind of looks around and says, look. Oh, it, well, I, what? <laughs> that was a cavard laugh if I've ever heard it. We don't, it's a story. I have no, she kind of points to her pretty much unclothed, unarmored form and says, I need to find my implements. We need to get out of here. Could I offer you this black studded leather dwarven armor? Um, it's not leather, actually. It's magical. Yeah. Oh, would you care for this robe? Maybe. <laughs> yes. what, what armor are you offering? The, the armor that I gave, I found, gave to Grog. It's magical. Oh, oh the leather. Yes. Okay. It's in the bag. Sure, it works for now. And she takes it from me and starts putting it on. And she likes her well, yeah, because Grog doesn't need armor. I, I think we've talked about this before, but like they're using some weird bastardized armor calc for Grog where it's like part of his unarmored defense, but then also he's like getting benefits from armor, we think. Uh, it was very confusing. I don't remember the details, but I remember thinking like, oh, that's not right. Seeing <laughs> as she puts it on as it kind of covers some of the wounds. Her whole body is just sore, but she still pushes through it. I'm going to heal her a little bit more. Okay. I'll put my, my hands on I'm sorry, you're not fully healed. Let me help you out. Oh, I, 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 as you do, she kind of takes a moment and says, <laughs> you, you heal her. She goes, can I, can I, she sees your mace and goes, can I borrow that for a second? Uh, please? Ooh. My mace? Your mace, please. What do you need it for? <laughs> Fair question. You I can have mine. Do you trust me? I no. don't know. <laughs> yeah, this God. Is all I have to protect myself. You've come this far. Grog has something for you. Give it, give it. No, I don't trust her as far as I can fucking throw her. I mean, obviously, I think she's Kavard. If I'm one of them, I don't trust her. Who? Yeah, if we're getting paid to rescue you. That doesn't mean that they haven't implanted some weird shit in your head. Like, yeah, you're still a strong, principled paladin, but who knows what sort of magical parasites they put in there. You need to be taken to, like, a fucking temple. Ah, uh, mm, mm, no, 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 no. Say yes no, to life. thank you. All right, well, I also have a morning star, but this is... <laughs> <laughs> you, are you going to give it back? She, as you hand it out, she grabs it from your hand. That was rude. Walks to the edge of the table. I don't like her. Stares at the dwarf that is currently hooked onto the wall. <laughs> 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 
Oh! And with an RGL, just slams it right into his face, causing his head to explode against the back of the wall. Slams it again, and again, and again, oh. and it's just making like hamburger of his entire body. Oh, the arm slaws off, and she's just going nuts. You can see her just bludgeoning over and over again with like just spray of gore on her, and there's this look of, of anger, frustration, and, and, and a sick sense of joy a little bit in her eyes, and how she's just tearing this dwarf apart. Eventually... So not... So like an oath of vengeance, maybe? <laughs> hmm... <laughs> After this, this, this frenzy, Probably you all take vengeance. it back, and she takes a moment. There is very little left recognizable of once was was I, a Duragar. I notice a uh, bulge in Grog's pants. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I use my I use my mage hand to slowly pick up my bottle of water. <laughs> okay. She takes the the uh, the mage she borrowed from you. I'm sorry, I questioned. As she be begins to hand it back to you, there's a slight flash of radiant energy that emanates from her hand, and it burns all of the blood that currently encapsulates the mace off. And hands it back to you. Thank you. I needed that. Very welcome. She could be a celestial warlock? Uh, no! The theory is falling apart before my very eyes. Sorry. There's something wrong. Let her use it one of your things. That was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, give her one of your things, Grog. Could I, um, yeah. would you like to touch my axe? <laughs> if you want to part with it, certainly. Oh. <clears throat> Maybe we should get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we collect your things? I yeah, where are they? The you know? I have no idea. <laughs> they're either in the vault or they're in the armory. The vault or the arm armory? Those are places There's that we a can vault. go. <laughs> <laughs> and on on this on the stairs in, this, in the room. As far as I can tell, my Lady Kima. Also, why the fuck do we need her implements? You, you need your life. We just saved you from. Whatever the fuck was going on, you you could get armor and a sword anywhere. Unless you're telling me you have like Holy Avenger in your scabbard, we do not need to go to the armory or the treasury. No shot. Are these things absolutely necessary? We have a secret entrance to this place. We could leave now. Are they of vital importance, the things you've lost? She kind of thinks for a second and, for a second and goes, Go! They are divine implements gifted to me from an avatar of Bahamut. Directly, I feel to leave them behind would be a partial failure to my quest. Not to mention that what we may face beyond this, we'll need every bit of help we can get. Oh shit! That's that. I mean, look, brother. Um, I'm I'm thinking about how I'm acting as my uh, as my character in in my campaign right now, and I'm saying, well. Yeah, it would be a partial failure of your quest. You know, it would be a, 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 a less partial failure, more of just like a normal failure would be if you died uh, on this table right here if we never showed up. So let's, let's get. <laughs> Come on. Let's find the freaking vault. Let's go to the vault. As you show the back of that card, she gives you a look and smiles and says, oh, it's good to see that your scale of color does not belie your intent. That is a face I've not seen for some time. I thank you. She leaps off the, uh, the table. So, shall we? I, I go up to her. Yeah, do you know where the vault is? I can show you. Yes. I, I go way. up to her, still in my minxy form, and I just kind of... You yeah, sure she knows where the treasury is. I'm sure she also knows where the fucking death pits are that they'll all fall into. Come on. Come on. Use your heads, Vox Machina. Yeah, I'm, I get right up behind them, too, and, like, competing for space. No, I dropped the body. I will not drop No, I, while she was talking, I mm. took the body, and I kind of drug it back, and I buried my shame. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. first, I buried my shame. Okay, your shame has been sufficiently buried. Buried the shame. So good. And then I go, oh. And I, I purr. Okay. I, I, oh, she kind of pats, she doesn't look at you, but she pats you absentmindedly as she passes you her direct intent on heading back up those stairs herself. Right. Okay, let's go, but let's go. shall we unlock all the other- Shut up, Richard! I'm right. I just have to figure out how to bend the reality and the truth into me being right. The dwarves. Yes, yeah, so let's let all the other dwarves out and maybe give them some food. 
to try okay. to help him out if in you the, can. In the meantime, I have a, a great sword or a morning star lace that you can have until we find your items. Great sword. Great sword it is. Boop. She takes it from you, and the sword is great. a little over a foot taller than she is. Maybe a little more than oh, that. Like but, really but as you hand it to her, she still She's takes it. You can halfling. see yeah. she is That's a bad. built halfling female. She yeah. has seen some war, <laughs> and she has survived some shit. She's the Tyler she, Durden of halfling. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> as I see her grab the sword. She's also, am I crazy? Is there a way to not uh, have the heavy penalty that comes with a uh, that comes with a heavy weapon? Right? I mean, I guess when we're talking about NPC stat blocks, there's always a way. You can just say, oh, it doesn't suffer the penalty from wielding heavy weapons. Hooray! Bing, bang, boom. So, <laughs> I don't know. Would I ask, would you care for some ale? <laughs> <laughs> she got a and that is something that I'll note. DMs, if you want to make a NPC, a monster, a character, whatever, and you want them to break a rule, just put in a feature that says they can. It's kind of that simple. There are already monsters uh, and certain NPCs that have that. Uh, most notably, the uh, I, I, I think this is so funny because it's so instructive. Uh, for the D&D movie, the classes, or not the classes, the, uh, the NPC stat blocks that they put out for all of the main characters in the D&D movie uh, <laughs> are literally like the druid, she can wild shape like normal, and also into an owl bear. <laughs> because owl bears are cool, and they wanted her to shapeshift into an owl bear in the movie, but druids can't do that in D and D five E. So they just put in an exception. They're like, yeah, druids can't, but like she can. So if you have like a like a fun idea for a monster or an NPC and you like want them to break an established rule, just put in that they can. Oh, Lady Kima of of Vorn. I think I uh that was close at least. Uh she has, you know, all these features, her to hit whatever, and then it's like solidly built, ignores the heavy property on on all weapons. Ah, boom, bing bing boom, done. That's over her shoulder at you. Or she's a dirty warlock scoundrel. She's not even a dwarf. It's just later. We have nothing. So just moles and great swords without penalty despite her small race. Yeah, she yeah. Which I don't think there's any like player character way to get that. Right? I, I don't think there's anything that like a s like a PC or um straight from the wiki. Ah, there you go. Um <laughs> I I don't think there's a PC way to do that, so it must just be written in our stat block. Um But yeah, I mean which is fine. Totally fine. You want to make a badass NPC that has that ability? Fucking go for it, dude. And to celebrate for yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Time. And one that's secretly a warlock traitor. <laughs> <laughs> she like comes to your knee. <laughs> can I can I run in the little prison and just tell the dwarves if they are conscious to say, don't exit from where you came, there's a secret entrance up and in a storeroom. Go that way and stealth out. Okay, uh, one of the ones that's no, semi-conscious, kind of... Right. All of that, of, I say all of it. Yeah. He oh. sits up and looks at... <laughs> it's fucked up. Um, sits up and looks back at you and... Thank you. Thank you kindly. Here's some cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Takes it hungrily through the bars and starts st like eating it just incessantly okay. as you leave. Um, Government. All right. Government all you've got. <laughs> Alright, so uh, Lady Kim is already up the stairs. Oh, we're oh, all the way up the stairs. Yeah. Uh -huh. Alright. <laughs> so, turn this off here. Is it oh, button? goodness, oh, goodness. I'm right with Mixie. Uh, I place a hand on Lady Kima's shoulder. Perfection. <laughs> place a hand on Kima's shoulder and say, please allow me and move several feet ahead of her and start. Sneaking along. As you move up to her, you notice she's standing at the top of the, at the bottom of the stairs mm -hmm. with attention, <gasps> staring up at the top of the stairway, where Clarota is looking down at her oh. and backing away. And oh, she goes, yes. wait, 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 still no, 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 I put my mage hand in front of her. Wait, 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 hold on. It's, it's fine. Uh, this mind flare. Oh, so many, so much of it works for my theory, because yes. Obviously, she has been being tortured by the Mind Flayers, the Derugar, 
totally makes sense why she would have a terrible reaction. Or if she's Kavarn, she notices, oh my god, an Illithid that I don't directly control through my elder brain connection. And so then she's like, ah, fuck you. Also, he has the fucking arcane scar that all of his other brethren hate. And she's now tapped into the elder brain. She probably has some of their biases. I'm telling you, it fucking works. He's with us. Not we saved his. him, or he—he's our ally now. He's fine. Until I find, until I find out who Kavarn actually is, I'm gonna—I think it's still her. I don't know why I default no screen. I was so fine. mad. He—she's fine. <laughs> he's fine. She, He's his name is Clarota. Clarota. Without taking her eyes off of Clarota, this is Kiva. She's, Kima. She looks Kima. back Kima. over. <laughs> uh, we are allies, oh. Yes? Uh, are you to tell me that you've come down here and allied yourself with an entity that is the anathema of the mountain? Uh, well, yes. I'm right at her yeah, shoulder, for sure. so I say, mountain. we understand he's dangerous. But he's gotten us this far. And for what purpose do you think they- Again, she could be talking about the race of Illithids in general, or she could be talking about Clarota in specific, given that he has the arcane mark and he's like an outcast. They don't have plots lined out for- God, I feel like MatPat on Game Theory just stretching the facts. <laughs> stretching the- Shut up, Richard! They're not mental gymnastics. <laughs> This is gonna be my audition tape to like film theory. This is what I'm gonna send in. No, no, no. Weeks and months. No, listen, listen. There is no he, trust he to be had been, with these creatures. He has been shit out by these creatures. They do not want him or trust him. He is an outcast. And we are working together in this moment. I don't think Clarota is gonna want to Without him, we would not have gotten here. We see a single tear And with him, you will never get Clarota's out. Eye. No, he. <laughs> We, we have we have his his his, his alliance. Uh, his, uh, there's a greater entity controlling his people, which he has been. Uh, 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 it's her. Uh, outcast from like what you're saying. And have you not thought for a second that perhaps all of you are being manipulated by this creature? We... You can see the great sword now. Flare. I, I feel like I'm in Secret Hitler, dude. I feel. Like, I feel like this is a social manipulation game and. Fucking Kiva is is Hitler, and I cannot convince any of the other liberals that she she is manipulating all of us. Oh. Yes. With divine energy, and she goes, "I will not stand here and let us ally ourselves with this filth." Oh, Lady Kiva, and I blow fire breath, and I use control flames to create a bunch of swords around me with fire. Don't threaten Kima. Scott, I don't like the wording play along. I'm serious. <laughs> uh, plus, I don't trust them not to spoil shit. I want to sit in my delusions until they're actively proven wrong. And and I'll be, and you know what? When, uh, when Kavarn finally is shown on screen, I'll probably be like, yeah, but Kima could be. <laughs> that could be like a, that could be like a simulacrum <laughs> of Kima's. <laughs> I give you my word. Uh, Her attention divided from Clarota now tends towards you. Don't act me a fool and don't treat me like one. Thank you, Angus. Thank you. Neither. None of us are half wits as you're claiming. We would not be fooled by such a creature like this. The words he speaks is true, and we believe him. You go ahead and make a uh, diplomacy check. All right, persuasion, on. persuasion. Get it on, Tiberius. Get it on. Let's get it on, uh, get it oh. on. Get it off. Uh, not good. Not good. Not good. Twelve. Twelve. Okay. She walks towards you. With each step, you can see the color of her eyes begins to vanish, giving way to an extremely bright, burning silver light. And she Shit. says, "Listen. You come with me. Without this creature, or you continue with it and without me." I have to be like that. <laughs> I will not walk aside. I, I, who is doing the gaslighting, Richard or Angus? Both of them are gaslighting me. That's the, that's the, dude, okay, okay. Side story. Um, 
Side story, if any of you have played Secret Hitler, uh, you know, it's a secret roles uh, social deduction game. And um, one of the bad guys in the game uh, is Hitler, and then there are two fascists. The fascists know who each other are and who Hitler is. Uh, the liberals know nothing, and Hitler knows that he's a fascist, but does not know who the other fascists are, who his teammates are. And one time I was playing in college, and I went to the bathroom while they were dealing out the roles, and they gave me Hitler, and all of the rest of them were liberal. <laughs> And, the, and so I got back and they played the entire game and they let me, con they, they convinced me that I was like really slick and I was manipulating shit. And then one of the people who had been like sweet talking me the whole game got the gun and he stood up and shot me and I've never been more shocked in my entire life. <laughs> And that's what I feel like is happening right now. I feel like Angus and Rich and even you, Scott. I feel like everyone's against me. I'm looking at windows. Are you guys delivering me chicken? I can't tell. I have had its people devour mine since I stepped foot in here. This creature, whatever its reasoning is, is not in your best interest. It also, that creature can read my surface thoughts at all times, so if he's in the party while I'm in the party, you're going to discover that I'm covered! ...will lead you into a web of your own destruction. I've seen their kind work. Clarota! Ah. Yeah, they're mostly buttholes, but he's not a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do a super cut after this of all of the convincing that I've done that Kirba <laughs> is covered. Uh, maybe they'll find the horn in the vault? Maybe. Also, again, Mask of Many Faces. Mask of Many Faces just s solves everything. It, it solves her eyes going white or whatever. It solves the, the fucking, the horn not being there. It's all... Bah! I understand that. Clarosa. We had to kill a couple, and he actually helps a lot. Speak your mind, convince her. Clarota, this. Clarota at the top of the stairs, you can see like his tendrils in his mouth kind of curled back with a sneer. His hands kind of crossed before, thing. Clarota just says, uh, Listen, I am not going to walk where I am not welcome. Oh, I will not wake up with this giving us a woman's yeah. blade in my back. I, uh, Fair we made a deal. People with kids. I walk between them. But I mean, okay, okay, okay. Putting all of my crackpot, lunatic, Charlie Day pointing at the board theories aside, this is this is a very good setup by Matt. Introducing two allies, one that you uh, met along the way and has proven their usefulness and that and their help, and you now have some manner of trust with versus uh, this other ally who is an ally in name only. You are coming here to save her. She is supposed to be your ally, but clearly things have happened to her that, you know, you could not have predicted and the people that hired you could not have predicted. She's an unknown. She's a wild card. You don't have any trust, even though she's supposed to be your ally. This is a fantastic setup to pit them against each other and make the party choose or come to some manner of compromise, even though it doesn't seem like there's going to be a compromise. Um, so I think masterful character drama on Matt's part. Very, very good setup. Hands out. <laughs> and say, so we all want the same thing. Kima, tell us, what is it that you've come here for? What is your purpose here? Speak your mind if you are true. Kima turns back towards you, the same kind of glowing flare in her eyes. I've come here to rid this mountain and this continent of the darkness that resides deep within the battles of this thing's city. Clarota, why have you come here? What is it you seek? Clarota kind of settles into itself for a second. This is clever. This is clever, Liam. Very nice. Very nice. Coming, bringing the allies together. Um... I mean, she could either be lying. I'm going back to the crackpot theories. She could be lying. She could also consider, like, the elder brain to be the darkness, like the sentience behind the elder brain. Um... Uh, I've come to destroy this creature, Kaval, and free my people. Then the two of you, get over your fucking shit! <laughs> you want the same thing here? 
Get over yourselves, both of you. We share a common purpose. We are going to end this fucking bullshit. Kima, we have come here for you. Pay us the respect that we have earned. We have come a long way for you. He is an unlikely ally, but he has gotten us to this point. And together, for this moment and this moment only, we can work together. We don't have to be school chums of buddies in a week from now, but right now, right here, we will work together and achieve the same thing. What say you, Kima? She looks towards okay, the Okay, Liam. Free his people, he says. What do you think will happen once his people are free? Should they let us walk out on our own? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kima is spitting facts. I've I've been saying the same shit. Like, you guys really think that the other mind flayers are just gonna be chill with you? I still don't trust Kima, but she's saying some good shit. <laughs> you said so, and mm, then there'll be buttholes when we leave. You know so very little of these dark caverns, my dragon friend. Yeah, it's our first time These yeah. entities I watched steal the very life essence of the men and women I hired and traveled with for weeks down here. I watched them capture them and devour their very minds before me and laugh and cackle as I fled into the shadows. But they were under control of Kavan at the point. I mean, to be fair, uh, Vex, you also watched Clarota do that shit. <laughs> you can't even pretend like, oh, it's just Kavard. Like, uh, Clarota. Clarota ate a dude's mind. Let, let's call a spade a spade really quick. PC morality. Oh, understand. Whether or not Kavard controls them to give them direction, they are of that type of mindset at all points. Clarota was. They do not hope society will thrive. They do not want I us free peoples to walk the surface. They want us for food. Lady Kima, if I may, if you are intending us to choose between you and our ally, Clarota, and we can't get you to see eye to eye with us, then I'm afraid you leave us no choice. <gasps> But to choose our own friend, Clarota, over you. What? We're giving you one last chance. Either Butt you are with us, or Action you are man. against us. Ah. This is a threat. Scared man! So you walk in here, save me from my binds, under the words of my dear lifelong friend, Arcanus Delora. I mean, to me, you just described a nice thing that they did for you, and then you set up this antagonistic relationship and you're like, well, you freed me. <laughs> I should get to do whatever I want. That's villain shit right there. We mean you no ill will. It is you who are aggravating the situation. You could be sitting in a cell by yourself doing fuck all or ending this problem now. Make a persuasion check. Just everyone is taking I'm so nervous. Oh, Scanlan, come on. <laughs> well, I rolled a three. <laughs> this is why I give inspiration for fun stuff. Because, like, because, like, right here, I'll, I'll be real. Both Liam and Scanlan at my table, they're, they're getting inspiration for that performance. I won't throw out uh advantage randomly but i will throw an inspiration and then they can choose to make something advantage if they want and so right now i would be like scam or sam that was beautiful here's some advantage <laughs> now roll me persuasion <laughs> and then he gets to choose whether or not <laughs> whether or not he gets advantage on that Girl of 13. But I have a plus 13. Okay. Uh, so that's a 16. A 16? Oh. Plus 13. 3 plus 13? Okay. Um, plus, plus, uh, hold on. <laughs> because you didn't. Retcon, no. <laughs> <laughs> war, war God's blessing. Clerk Flail. No, I can't do that because that's what a Christian makes an attack. <laughs> Get him, Scanlan. Uh. <laughs> Can I assist? 
He assisted because he was talking. Unfortunately, too late. Was, was... I would also rule like Liam didn't have to roll anything on his whole speech. I'd, I, I, if if someone brings it up, like, oh, but Liam assisted. Yeah, yeah Liam assisted. Once you the roll. Assist? Right, right, and because of that, the DC has been considered. Um, she Fair. takes a moment and steps forward. She's uh, she's a few inches taller than you. Of course she is. Um, <laughs> <and> she kind <laughs> of looks at you and says, "He has a pretty voice. I'm grateful that all of you have come and traversed all this danger in my name." to free me from the binds that have held me. And I do wish very much to walk alongside you to this end. And I understand it may be very well possible that this thing has taken your minds without your knowledge. However, and her eyes close for a second and she opens them again and that kind of radiant spark of silver fades her normal eye color returns. We see ourselves of little choices. And I have very little allies at this point to achieve my goal. If we are to travel together, this one must walk in step the entire time. One single misstep. And I will not hesitate to carve that head from your body in the name of Bahamut. So you like dancing. Oh I, I, I will help, I help you do that if he missed it. Oh my gosh. Clarota, our hands still crossed, kind of takes a step down the stairs towards her. It's tendrils in its mouth kind of... And Scott, I'm saying, dude. And now she has an excuse. If Clarota gets a little touchy with his mind, she has an excuse to just whoop. And she says to everyone else, look, he was touching my mind. What the, what are you gonna do? Or even if Clarota starts mouthing off about her being Kavarn, which she is, she can just say, oh, he's just saying that shit. <laughs> the social deduction continues. Understand if you ever intend Try and cut my life short. I will also not hesitate to bore that beautiful mind from your skull. Bad choice of words. Once we murder this Kavan, you guys are going to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so hard. So friends then? <laughs> allies, allies. Uh, allies. 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 That Clarence yes. doesn't like friends. The enemy of my enemy is... Has mind sucking tentacles. <laughs> she, look, she looks back at the rest of you and kind of gives you all an understanding look and a nod, and she says, I pray that you're all right. I pray that you're honest. And I pray that through some strange. Also, note that she did not back down until Scanlan straight up threatened to attack her. None of the convincing bullshit helped, it was a threat. Seems like villain shit to me. Drill of the Hidden gods. villain shit. This entity is telling the truth. Because if it's not, none of us are making it out of your life. We are playing the game of chess here, King. And we will win. I whisper in her ear, I would have chosen you. <laughs> <laughs> and I start the humming Kumbaya. <laughs> I take the dagger and I make a happy face. <laughs> okay. She doesn't notice this as she steps up the stairs towards Clarota. Oh God. Okay. Clarota kind of steps back, hands out in front, this little spark of arcane energy, forming in his hands. Clarota, bringing the sword up in front of her, pushes Clarota aside and continues ascending back up the stairs oh. to the first level. <laughs> to the first level. <laughs> Clarota puts the hands folded back together. Shall we? <gasps> and walks oh up gosh. the stairs after her. And you all begin to ascend back with them to the first floor, and that's where we'll end the oh game. My oh my god! Oh. I thought we were going to have to pick. Oh we got like 10 more minutes. Yeah, we have 10 more minutes. No, no, no. That's, no, that's, that's, a, good yeah, that's a good place. Depending on where you guys are going out. next, it could be a little bit of a lengthy encounter. So. Oh my gosh. 
So, we're so the building's empty. It's totally, it's totally empty. empty. Yeah. There's nobody. It's it's just an empty hold. There was there was no challenge. You walk down some stairs. That's it. <laughs> Oh, I'm tired. That was... Oh, wait, whoops. There we go. That was a lot. That was fun. I had fun. Um, Very cool. Very... Uh, I like this section of the cave a lot more than the previous, so that's sick. Uh, I'm, I'm already digging it. I'm digging kind of the things that are getting set up, foreshadowed. Uh, it should... It should be very interesting. Um... And and uh and I'm excited to know Kavarn and Clarota have officially <laughs> shut up, Richard. <laughs> you fucking prick. Oh, I know it. Oh man. Either way, either because okay, here's the thing if I'm if I'm right. And I'm just banking this from a thousand miles away because I think I called it in like episode two. Uh, or no, maybe episode three. I don't even think we knew about Kavarn in episode two. Uh, if I just bink it, I can't tell anyone. Any, everyone, like any, all of the people on the like Critical Role subreddit are going to be like, cheater, fake. He looked it up. <laughs> so I can only really tell people about it if I'm wrong. So I'm kind of good either way. Right, if I'm wrong, I put together a super cut and I put it on the subreddit for everyone to laugh with me. I mean, at me. I mean, with me. Uh, so, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited to find out. I don't know. I know that there is an episode called Kavarn Revealed. Uh, only because I was looking at videos that were suggesting my content and that episode was one of them. <laughs> so I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it. I just know that it exists at some point. So I'll know going into the episode. I'll be like, okay, this is the moment of fucking truth. Um, but <laughs> um, I'm psyched. I'm pumped to, to do it. It's going to be really, really fun. Oh, man. That was, that was a good one. We laughed. We cried. I would have handed out more inspiration. We did it all. And all in the name of Kavarn. I mean, Kima. Now, I do have one question to pose to all of you. It was a question. This is totally unrelated from, uh, from do, you, do you see Kavard in this chat right now? Are they here? Are they here with us? They're all around. Uh, <laughs> I have a, a non-critical role question. Uh, it's a rules question that I was thinking about because uh, I was making a character build where it might have been relevant. Okay. If I were... If I were an archer, say I'm Vexalia, right? I use a bow, but I also get in some close quarters combat sometimes. If I were to smack a guy with a bow, Legolas style, <laughs> and I have the sharpshooter feat... Would I be able to use the sharpshooter feat to give myself minus five to the attack roll plus 10 to the damage if I hit on that melee attack with the bow? Everyone, I'll put in a little little game show waiting music. The answer is yes. Uh, the answer is a resounding yes, uh, because, very uh, fun fact, I should have told people to pause it while they were thinking about it, because uh, I was going to say the answer. Um, here, let me, let, me, let me show you guys. Sharp shooter. Uh, sharp shooter, just before you make an attack with a, an attack, not a ranged weapon attack, just an attack, with a ranged weapon that you are proficient with. You're proficient with the bow. Uh-huh. And then you can choose to take that to the attack roll. Not the ranged weapon attack roll, just the attack roll. So that's a fun fact, is you can take that minus five penalty to add plus 10 to the hit 
if it's if you're just fucking pistol whipping someone, you <laughs> it does not actually need to be a ranged weapon attack. Just has to be an attack with a ranged weapon. Rule quest, my favorite D and D game. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I thought about it. I came to this conclusion because I was making a strength based rogue that uses darts. <laughs> And I was looking at uh, at some fun uh, feet options for that because uh, darts are the only ranged weapon that you can use strength with because they're the only ranged weapon that has finesse. Um, so you can theoretically use strength on a on a dart attack on a throw. Um, anyways, that's all for weird <laughs> character building questions that you never knew you had nor wanted i've been jack megaphone man himself and i will see you next time for episode seven on tuesday thank you everybody for joining and i'll see you then